Där är vi klar. Fem sekunder. E4 D4 D4 Springer C3 Springer för E4 Dronning D8 chack Löper G5 chack Kong C7 Löper D8 man Och var det Time, precision, and raw will. That's what drives me. Fourth on the grid, Marius Nack and the Norwegian driver. 5,000 hours a year. In my line of work, milliseconds separates the best from the next best. In a constant battle against time. That's why time is so important, especially when I'm home in Odessa. In many ways, this is where I get my inspiration. This is where it started. Therefore, it's always good to come home. I have an amazing team behind me. They are very important. Allow me to focus on what's my job. Millisecond for millisecond. In August 1904, Mr. Ole Brude, a 24-year-old Norwegian man set sail from Ålesund, Norway, headed for New York, USA, in a small 18-feet lifeboat. Brude named his vessel Urad, which means fearless in Norwegian. An incredible long journey at the time, even with large ships. The lifeboat was highly unusual for his time, designed as the shape of an egg. Ole Brude and his crew overcame storms and hurricanes in the tiny vessel. After five tough months at sea, in a heavy storm, they were thrown ashore on the rocky coast of Gloucester, north of Boston. All men survived. Urad proved to be precisely as safe and solid as Mr. Brude had envisioned. They were celebrated as heroes. Ole Brude later said he visited President Roosevelt at the White House. Brude's concept with a closed lifeboat was not applied until the 70s. Today, closed lifeboats are common on all ships. This watch is a tribute to Ole Brude, whose ideas have saved thousands of lives and are still doing so today. The watch is powered by a Swiss-made automatic movement, encapsulated in a brushed and polished stainless steel case protected by a beautiful sapphire crystal. 
The exquisite dial is available with Norwegian or English weekdays. The rotating 12-hour bezel lets you keep track of another time zone, and the unique hands, indexes and bezel numerals are equipped with Super Lumi Nova for unbeatable readability at every hour. It is delivered with both a bracelet and rubber strap. And good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Stavanger, where we've had a beautiful sunny day and where we are in anticipation of round seven of Norway Chess. My name is Dirk Anton Geusenem. I'm the editor of New in Chess, and I'm here in the very pleasant uh, company of Judith Polgar and David Howell. Wonderful to be here with you. We have, a, well, we've had a very interesting tournament so far with a clear leader, your countryman, Judith. Uh, we might have a, a look at the uh, uh, standings. Um, after six rounds, it's Richard Rapport from uh, Hungary, who is in the lead with 12 and a half points, ahead of Jan Nepomniacci with nine and a half points, 
Magnus Carlsen, the world champion, who uh, won a spectacular ga or a brilliant game yesterday, is now in third place. Sega Kayakin is in fourth place at eight and a half points. Then Ali Reza Firuja at six points in fifth place, and in sixth place, Aryan Tari with uh, three points. Um, Judith, is there a particular game that you're looking forward to today? I mean, there's, there's something to all of them, but... Um. Uh, well, I'm looking forward to Rapport's game, what yeah. uh, he can uh, bring out of, uh, with the white pieces against Sergei Karyakin. Mm -hmm. As uh, we've seen Sergei winning two games in a row, right? Yeah, against and Magnus. He, and after so. his uh, three-day game against Nepomniachtchi, he was just like... <laughs> It's yeah. like letting out a lion from a cage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, so this is going to be extremely interesting because when you win two games in a row and uh, in, in the style the way he beat Magnus, yeah. uh, and also he won yesterday, so it means that uh, he's really in a, in a shape that he wants, to, he wants to perform well. I think he's yeah. just uh, climbing up in the cross table. And yeah. uh, at the same time, of course, he knows that he's playing with the leader. Rapport is in extremely stable uh, form right now, so it's going to be not easy at all. Yeah. But uh, for me, that's the most excitement, what I'm expectation, what to expect from that game. Yeah, yeah, if I well, have to pick, but of course, all three is, uh, is amazingly interesting. Yeah, Sergei Kayakin, he said that last night that he was going to watch a movie, so we'll, we're curious if he watched The Sound of Music or Terminator, <laughs> and in what <laughs> mood he is in. And of course, we very um, much want to know if Richard Rapport can keep the, the great shape that he, uh, he had. So then there is, well, there's the, the local derby yeah. between uh, Magnus Carlsen and uh, Ayan Tari. What, what are you expecting there, David? I'm expecting quite a fierce fight in mm. the reverse fixture earlier in the tournament. Ayan Tari actually had Magnus on the ropes um, and with the black pieces, mm. so he got very, very close to winning against the world champion. And he's had a difficult tournament, Tari, but mm. I expect anyone who's playing Magnus yeah. to be fully motivated and um, if he can get out of the opening in great shape with White then who knows what can happen. Yeah. Uh, Magnus definitely hasn't been at his best so far despite the brilliant end game we saw from him yesterday. Yeah. So interesting local derby, a lot of pride at stake and yeah. uh, I don't think the world champion will be too happy to let this one go to Armageddon just mm -hmm. in light of the tournament standings. Yeah. Um, yeah. And well, for, for Iron it's, it's important to get to that point where he really can fight with Magnus, where he can yeah. forget about the huge gap that there is between the two of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, he lost 2-0 to him last year here, also in the World Cup. Yeah. But then there were these moments like, like here, where he had a fantastic position, he, he could even have dealt a winning blow. And yeah. also in Vikings, they are, uh, he, Played very he, well in Vikings, he defended Vikings. very well. Yeah. So it's, it's not... Uh, an easy game for Magnus, for sure. No. I think not at all. No. I mean, looking at the, their first game here, it was that was a very tough and sweating game for yeah. Magnus. Yeah. That was very close, I must say. Yeah. And uh, and I think for uh, Tari, I mean, he really plays some of his games and some parts of the mm. games very well. Yeah. So if he gets a good opening and where he feels mm. comfortable and uh, that kind of position, what he feels yeah. well, then uh, he can have a really good, great game. But is there something like a flow of the tournament? I mean, Magnus, it's clear that he's, he's getting going and Arjan, he, he has suffered some blows. Um, yeah, but for example, after the first game, which was, uh, was not a very high level game, I must say, after that he started to warm up and played much yeah. better. Yeah. Uh, especially with Black, actually, the, nice. against the, the Italian also, he played well. Mm -hmm. But I think he's okay. Mm -hmm. He's uh, he's looking forward to. He's yeah. very very much challenged, of course, every day because all the other players are significantly yeah. better in principle. Yeah. But of course, in one game, anything can happen. Yeah. And of course, that's the good thing about chess. You always start from scratch again and uh, equal chances. And then the uh, the third game we have uh, between well, two very enterprising and creative uh, players. Well, what do you expect there? Yeah, I think again it's going to be a big fight for Ruzia. He'll be itching for revenge after losing an Armageddon in the King's Gambit against Yana Pomiechi in the first half of the tournament. And um, again, yesterday, difficult one for Ferruzia, so he's going to be throwing everything at Napomiachi, I think. Um, I expect him to be quite aggressive from the opening, but Napomiachi's been relatively solid with the black pieces, showing some great preparation. So 
again, it a lot depends on the opening, whether Ferruzzi can get his style of position. If, he's, if it becomes a bit dry, then okay, we might see him just shut things down and take it to that Armageddon. Well, for um, me, it's a either way, it's gonna be Yeah, either way, it's going to be enti entertaining, I think. Mm. Yeah, for me, it's interesting how he got over with uh, from yesterday because it was one of the most painful way to lose a game uh, what Firuja. happened F yeah. for Firuja yesterday mm. against Magnus. First of all against Magnus you don't want to lose because yeah. he's a world champion so uh, yeah. you're challenged. So he was I think simply thought in the middle game that it's okay maybe he has little unpleasant one mm. or two moves but after that it shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. And then he got really surprised in uh, several points mm. of the game in the yeah. end game V2 yeah, and yeah. it was uh, spectacular the idea what Magnus created. But it's, I think it's very hard to get over on mm -hmm. such a loss what uh, For sure. he received yeah. yesterday. At the same time, that's why you're great and that's why you're on the top, because you can recover fast <laughs> in principle. Yes. Well, <laughs> what, what should we say about a game like that? I mean, the, it's, uh, I mean, we still, it isn't that long ago that at, at a top level that many games they would just be to a draw even before move 30. And uh, I mean, the grandmaster draw. Well, you can see there's nothing to, to play for. And now we have a player, well, it's Magnus is not the only one, but he, he is, he's leading the movement, you might mm -hmm. say, who, um, as you put it yesterday, David, I mean, he's trying to squeeze water from a stone. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure that there were people at home who thought, why are you doing that? I mean, there's just nothing. There is absolutely nothing. And then he does it anyway. Uh, it, it was... It was really very, very creative, wasn't it? I think when you see Magnus mm. playing a drawish, equalish game, yeah. you don't say things like this. <laughs> <No>? <laughs> I think he, he performed so many times. This was that, sacrilege. Uh, we so yeah. much water from this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's his habit, right? Yeah. <laughs> and he yeah, definitely this if I haven't got it by now, then when am I finally going to see it? <laughs> Yeah. It's like uh, I mean, he has a new sport, you know, he plays yeah. chess and then there are the games where it's <laughs> equalish, <Yeah. laughs> whether he can convert it and somehow to make For me mm. it was always such an amazing thing to see Magnus, mm. the way he sits in this very equalish position, he sits there and, and I was like envying him that, that how he's able to sit there with such a full concentration and dedication and and you can see that he's like mm. looking what kind of opportunities he can create and with this mm. I mean I can even say that with excitement that he's he's looking at that position like most of the people looking at some attacking position calculating <laughs> looking things are really happening and in this mm. position it's nothing like that it's yeah. like you have to think like strategically if this move happens like mm. maybe after 20 moves i'm going to be around <laughs> the king and, and all these yeah. nuances I these mean, not details five moves, but 20 no. moves, yeah. it, being it, inside the opponent's head yeah. as well seeing what they might do wrong or what they might make assumptions uh, kind of relax, relax too early yeah, Magnus, he's well, a long time ago it was Valery Salov who was True. doing this. <laughs> and he was really enjoying it. I don't see it with Magnus that he's looking forward to such an end games. Mm. But if it uh, happens on the board, mm. he's okay with it. So he has the time, he has the patience. I'm here, move 100. If it's a draw, fine, but I will try. Yeah. I think <laughs> the last three or four years we've forgotten about this skill slightly because Magnus, he's tried to sharpen up his play with the black pieces especially being more aggressive and with white his opening repertoire is a bit better, a bit more direct. Um, so he hasn't been grinding out as many endgames as he used to when he first burst onto the scene but yeah, he showed yesterday he's still in his locker and yeah, you maybe mean that's there what were we those need to do. Uh, moments in his career that, uh, well, yeah. first he was more spectacular and yeah. then suddenly he switched his attention to the end game. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to win. And, uh, I mean, everyone is prepared so well, let's go into the end game. Mm -hmm. But if I just think of the number of uh, games, well, the so-called dead equal games that he won, you can almost fill a book with that by yeah. now. <laughs> I'm sure he can write <laughs> a book. Three volumes. Of yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I think in his course, I think his chessable course mm, has, yeah. once I bumped into it, his end game mm. things and they were talking about it. Okay, yeah. this draw is rook end game, show yeah. us, how do you win them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and again, some of the nicest, yeah. uh, some of the top players in the world. Yeah, my 16 Roish. most memorable, uh, memorable <laughs> dead equal wins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, he's reaching there with time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing Tari has to avoid today, actually, their classical uh, matches the reason Tari's gone to defeat, I think, in four of those classical matches is every time it goes down to a quite a strategic maneuvering battle in an endgame. And 
uh, he eventually gets tricked or outwitted and, and that's one thing he probably needs to avoid today, Tari. A bit well, more direct, a bit more tactical if he can. Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, Tari's position of understanding and play on, on that area of the mm -hmm. game, he should be improving a lot, especially if you look at it between him and Magnus. Yeah, for sure. But... Uh, um, that's why he lost in the World Cup, actually, losing with the white pieces in some position that I think maybe he relaxed too soon, but mm -hmm. slowly Magnus just got a domination and slowly improved. And, um, so, but yeah, what, for sure. Uh, what should the advice be? I mean... <laughs> No respect. Uh, yeah, <laughs> don't yeah. get into an equal end game. Uh, with <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> equal is fine, but try and yeah. get as much life out of it as possible yeah. first. Maybe J just get a plus uh, advantage and then yeah. sit on it. And right? even just if use you use the king's gambit and yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the game <laughs> And we have, and we have a move. And ah. we have a move. We have a move. E4. It, it still could be the king's gambit. <laughs> Not very likely. No, because Magnus will be avoiding Have it. Don't you chances, think so? Uh, what about some? You think it's Sicilian? I don't know, C5 or E5? Mm -hmm. Would you say these days to see King's Gambit in classical chess in the, at the highest level? Chances are not very Very good. slim. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In classical chess, no. But I think Blitz and Rapid, it might make a comeback yeah. as uh, a every surprise. now and again. Yeah, yeah. as a surprise. Um, Psychological weapon. Yeah, and there's no clear way for Black <laughs> hmm. uh, to completely refute it. So. Um, okay, moment so proof. important moment, what Magnus, which pawn he will push, <laughs> okay. what do you expect? Maybe I E5. E5, yeah. Okay, first he'll tease us, just by adjusting zero. his pieces. This is move zero. <laughs> Counting move zero. the pieces, they're all there. Yes. And, ah. and Magnus famously likes to turn his knights inwards, looks like both players do this. Yes, really? some <laughs> players like it to forward to the enemy. Yeah, I do this. Opponent. Yeah, you yeah. too? F for forward, <laughs> always forward. This inwards, is that what Kasparov did? I don't know. I think nobody turns them outwards, that's the only thing that yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. is yes. a bit taboo. It looks weird, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so he's just uh, getting ready and then he's going to push his king's pawn. No. <laughs> okay, Magnus keeping us in suspense. There we and go. And five. Five yes. points for Judith. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and no king's gambit. So Tari here, he's been playing the Italian a lot. Um, some scotch opening. I remember mm -hmm. he knocked me out of the 2017 World Cup using the scotch. <laughs> scotch. Um, I played the scotch myself. Okay, no scotch today though. No. The Roy Lopez. So what is it going to be? Roy Lopez mm. or Knight F6? Oof. What about Sam Berlin? Yeah, I have a feeling Magnus wants to win this in classical though. And if you but play the Berlin... But that is two words to draw an hand yeah, game. <laughs> you do give White the option of going into these slightly drier lines with yeah. less risk. I would also expect him to play a6. Mm -hmm. So a6, maybe g6. Oh. Depending on his mood. Um, I don't think we'll see anything else. Okay, it is a6. And... Uh, Goes okay. for the classical Which, way. The classical way. Which variation is he going to go for there? Still lots of choice for black. Few people um, take on c6 these days. Yeah. Very few people yeah. go for the exchange variation, I think. Why is that? I mean, it used to be popular at some time. Very, it's yeah. not fashionable nowadays, no? Yeah, it's just yeah. a trend, I think. There's yeah. nothing wrong with it. Could make a comeback any time. Yeah. 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 I think the only grandmaster that plays it constantly is Solak, uh, Dragon Solak. Um, he seems to win every time with the Spanish exchange, but nobody seems to follow <laughs> uh, follow his lead. We're going to see a complete classical way. Very Chigurin. classical. <laughs> I haven't no seen for a long time. Chigurin. Yeah. Chigurin line. No Marshall, you think? I don't know, Marshall. Anti Marshall, maybe. Actually, doesn't, I haven't seen Ben Magnus playing Marshall. Um, he's tried from time to time. But um, there is no point to play Marshall in this situation. I true. Think. Uh, because again, white has ways to. Uh, yeah, I mean, practically out, right? mm. you're starting out with. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be a big surprise. So. Definitely, it would be a surprise for me. Yeah, but I mean, in 2016 mm. against Karyakin, it was his main repertoire as black, the Marshal uh, Magnus. And I noticed this last year in the Champions Chess Tour, in the bigger games, he yeah. plays it. But yeah, against Tarry, it feels like. Uh, yeah, I think well, right. he wants to have just a long game, yeah. not having a theoretical battle. So, moment of truth, d6 or castles. Uh, <laughs> I guess you could start with castles and not necessarily commit to the martial gambit yet. But I think might play, I think, many different lines, the classical, like d6, mm -hmm. castle, 9, bishop, e6, 9, mm -hmm. e7, 
Brea, whatever. Brea, Keres, lots yeah. of things. Yeah. I mean, there are so many openings, opening lines in the in the Ryan Lopez that it goes to complicated, mm. very complicated middle mm. game. Mm -hmm. And if you understand the position better, then yeah. you can turn it with black. If you studied it more recently than Tari, maybe um, that was the one reason that I was a bit uh, reluctant to play the Roy Lopez as white when I was young because there was too much to remember, too many different lines and. That black can mm. specialize in. Oh yeah, I do remember. Yeah, <laughs> Played remember. it with white. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how, how would we define a moment like this? That he sits there, he's uh, looking into the audience. I mean, I mean, there's nothing surprising on the board. So what is he? What is he doing? Is, is he? Just well, the good old days of Kochner. He used to sit there for. Well, I heard at least that he used to sit mm. there before move one. Sit there for a few minutes, just look into yeah. his opponent's eyes. <laughs> just to yeah. get into the game. Is that it? Possibly. Uh, Possibly making a choice. Maybe he's thought of a few lines that he wants to play, mm -hmm. but didn't quite expect the uh, Spanish in this opening. Mm -hmm. uh, well, in this in this game today. Sounds a bit Maybe like he's uh, trying to hide some prep. He's deciding what to. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was but, reading about Lionel Messi that uh, yeah. some a journalist he suddenly noticed that at the start of the match, Messi he would just he, he wouldn't touch the ball, but he would just walk. <laughs> around, have a look at the defenders, just see what, how, how they were standing, and then after five minutes, his match would start. Then he would know, okay, now I know how, how well, how they are looking, mm -hmm. where they are standing. Mm -hmm. Let's play. But <laughs> no, it, it is Deep very psychology. Yeah, it mm -hmm. is interesting that, mm -hmm. that when I was still in competition, I mm -hmm. remember that simply you have this atmosphere at the board that you are. You're you're trying to sense the vibes of vibes of your opponent, how, what he mood is, possibly what uh, what uh, uh, he's expecting. Oh. Is he playing fast because he's prepared for all this, mm -hmm. or uh, is he feeling nervous at all? Okay, and eventually Magnus looks like he does castle, so getting ready to. Possibly play the Marshal Gambit if he pushes with d5 next turn. So will <laughs> Harry allow this yeah, anti Marshal? I, 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 these days. I remember also how many times I was wondering does my opponent really want to go for the Marshal? Should I dare to play c3? <laughs> Do I really have to? <laughs> because okay. sometimes, well, and now the big question. Yeah. But how do, do you get any winning chances with the Marshal? I mean, that's black these days. Yeah. I don't difficult. think he can go d5. Yeah, unless you catch your opponent unawares in some line or hmm. um, with some novelty. No, but, but it's impossible. Simply, he cannot go d5. Mm -hmm. Especially from if Harry plays, plays d3, uh, c3, sorry, so quickly. Uh, <laughs> he's asking for Magnus to play it. Did you enjoy? Well, did you have much experience in the Marshal, uh, Judith, or were you always trying to avoid? No, I played. I was fighting against the marshal, and I okay. won some uh, some good games in that. Also, I was analyzing quite a lot, and uh, well, of course, when Mickey Adams was there, <laughs> I was playing with him many okay. many games. And uh, look at that. Of course, not d five. You see? Wow. No knight, way. Knight a five. Knight a five. Pawn Still sacrifice. Pawn sacrifice. <laughs> it seems like in every game he's trying to give up a pawn. Yeah, maybe influenced by Dubov. Uh, Dubov played some variations on this kind of d5 pawn sacrifice throughout the last couple of years. Yeah, and basically what is Marshall? The main problem is of mm. Marshall that the theory is so huge on that and everything mm. is worked out so yeah. much that if you're prepared, I think there is practically no chance for white to get advantage. I mean, if for, you're stably yeah. playing with black, I just, mm -hmm. uh, with an expert, I mm. think it's just... Yeah, I've studied Jan Gustafsson's uh, course on chess 24 about the uh, martial gambit there's no chance for white if black knows his stuff but the problem is there's mm. too much stuff to know yeah. and uh, I just don't see the point to play it with black I think I, maybe I played it once or twice long long time ago it was so fashionable mm -hmm. but uh, but it is like trying really to equalize yeah. right and uh, it seems that Tari wants to provoke Magnus that okay show me how you want to play <laughs> for a win and he has provoked him right with this knight a5 move so what, what, what is the idea? I mean, I think probably many viewers think I just take that pawn and I'm a pawn up. Yeah, yeah mm. after take, I think mm. black takes on b3, a b3, bishop b7, and whatever way white is defending his pawn on e4, 
it's going to be d5 next move. Yes. I think this I is, this is the way of doing it, and mm. it's it, this is also I think there are quite a lot of theory, but at least there are much more alternatives White can choose off, and mm. it's it's not so much worked out as the marshal itself. No. But and you're still a pawn up. So where is the compensation for Black? How how, how good is it? I think it lies mostly in the bishop pair. Uh, she mm. will most likely arise. Uh, mm. Well, you will uh, achieve the same pawn structure later on as the marshal, for example, after mm. d3 here to protect the e4 pawn, mm. d5, as Judith mentions. And if these pawns get exchanged, the bishops come to life, especially this b7 mm. bishop, which is unrivaled now. Black has very active pieces. Mm. Bl white lags behind in development with the queen side pieces. Mm -hmm. Some small things, but they might add up to sufficient compensation for black. Yeah. I doubt it will be more than that, but. Um, yeah, this must be what Magnus is aiming for. Well, David, you say that maybe, let's say, Dubov may, well, he was a very creative player, mm -hmm. that he might be an inspiration. Um, but is, is it also, is, is this an example of Alpha Zero or modern computer chess, where the, the, the ultimate uh, conclusion is drawn, let's say, 20 moves down the line, when it turns out that some piece constellation is bad or some squares are weak. Is, 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 is it that kind of chess as well? Yeah, certainly. Um, you might get stro very strong pieces. Uh, you might be able to target your opponent's uh, kind of paralyzed pieces, weak squares. But um, I mean, there will be a phase as well where it is quite concrete and you will be able to test your opponent along the way. And yeah. even if your opponent's able to navigate those kind of tricky waters, maybe then you do that, get that type of long-term yeah. compensation. But you have to know both sides of the, uh, what you're doing. For yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what a lot of the top players are aiming for nowadays. Okay. Mm. And meanwhile, white doesn't take the bait, <laughs> doesn't take the e5 pawn. But for Magnus, this might be uh, quite a positive sign because here, for example, black can play d5, I think. And um, this is going to transpose to um, how do I explain this? Yeah, it takes, and you can even play e4 here. And this is going to transpose to a line where actually I think white normally has an extra tempo with h3. I remember when I was mm -hmm. this going back 12, 13 years, there was this really trendy line that Gudjevsky played with d6, because h3, knight a5, and now d5. Yeah. But this shouldn't mm -hmm. be good for black. Um, it's not great for black, but it yeah. was trendy for a while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. maybe the inclusion or the lack of inclusion of h3 mm -hmm. will persuade Magnus that okay uh, though I'm, I'm not sure do you think he version. will put, go d5 not d6 and not d7 let's say I would play d6 but <laughs> who knows if he's <laughs> if he's sacrificed a pawn once <laughs> maybe he'll want to do that again maybe he'll insist actually it's interesting knight d5 is not considered good um well, I, I looked and it has been analyzed it's uh, both moves actually bishop c2 and knight Take C5. Yeah, bishop c2 looks like kind of a safer solution, right? Mm -hmm. And still inviting black to go to the close position after d6. Yeah, but d6, is it more tempting for white to push with d4 now and try and save on the move h3? Oh, uh, yeah, possibly. actually, true. And okay, he does push d5, maybe in light of this. Uh, yeah. So we're going to get some <laughs> fireworks potentially. This is quite a rare variation actually. Um, just looking, not that many strong players have played this. Okay, d5 now. And okay, Raga seems to be the guy with a couple of games. Marcus Raga, but this, oh yeah, not since 2015 though. No games from two th uh, un uh, after 2015? Apparently not. Wow. Um, let me check. Uh, <laughs> let's double check. But yeah, very, very rare line. It has been analyzed thousands of times. So <laughs> it is on the radar, maybe, of some top players. But <laughs> so what, are, what is the move? E takes d5, knight d5, or d4? Uh, all of them possible. All of them, so yeah. I guess Well, e d5 is the most straightforward. Yeah, grabbing this pawn. So what's the idea of e4? If bishop takes e4, knight takes e4, takes bishop's f5, I guess. Mm -hmm. Oh, actually, let me, I've just found one game from 2001 where, okay, Magnus in a rapid game has played this line. So, okay, some. Okay. Um, well, some if pedigree. for Tari it's completely new from here, mm -hmm. then that's very difficult for him. Yeah. Because sure. then it, it is very difficult to make the right choices from here on in the next 10 moves, let's say. Yeah. You have yeah. to make so many decisions kind of philosophical decisions, right? Do you want to be a pawn up and maybe facing some short-term initiative or? 
Well, I guess you, you don't really have an option. I mean, you have yeah. to accept it. So Vashil Grav has played d4 here against Magnus, which I guess doesn't grab the pawn. And now d takes e4, knight takes e5. And yeah, Where did bishop you go? f5. Bishop uh, he played bishop b7. And after knight d2, c5, it looks like black solved most of his problems with some tactics. Maybe this would be a safer option. White can take on e4 and just try and eliminate as much <laughs> material as possible. And take everything on e4 and in that game, Carlson Maybe c takes d4? d4? Um, c or takes, takes d4. everything and bishop uh, d5? Yeah, I mean, in this game, Magnus um, took everything on e4, played queen d5. And later on, after... Queen f3? Uh, queen f3, maybe. He, MVL played queen e1, which looks mysterious to me. <laughs> Why not queen e2? But queen f3, maybe as well. We might be heading in this direction because white did play d4. Yeah, d4. d4. Okay. But nice pawn center. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. I once managed to this achieve the four pawns of, of uh, my own color in the center. Those yeah? four pawns. Wow. Uh, on D5, well, D5, this you D5, can D5. see only for one move. <laughs> <laughs> True, unless Magnus <laughs> plays C5 or something, just to <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> just it's a, a, it's a value. momentum of the game where you see four pawns in the center. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the fact that he played it quickly also shows that he's not really on his mm. on his own now. I mean, he, yeah. he, he knows what he's doing. True. True. D takes E4, Knight E5. So actually, it's a follow up to mm -hmm. that game, right, between uh, Vasile Grav and Magnus, which was played? Yes. which was played in February um, in ah, okay. one of the Champions Chess Tour events ah, in a okay, rapid game. Okay. And C5. Yeah. yeah, C5. Okay, so the first deviation on that game. Magnus previously playing Bishop D7. Yeah. Okay, so C5. I guess, again, he's just asking white to take on e4, but that will come at the cost of the bishop pair. Yeah, this is something probably white does not want to do, because otherwise he would have taken the pawn earlier, I guess. Mm -hmm. Bishop b7, queen d5. I mean, it looks such a huge counter chance, counter yeah. play for black. So... White's piece is still fast asleep. Well, what about d takes e5 here? Probably after d c five, queen c seven. And black, uh, what does he play after bishop f four? Yeah, maybe bishop f four is a bit annoying here. Rook d eight. Yeah, rook d eight and. Uh, just, just knight I don't know, maybe knight d two. Knight d two. Knight d five. You had in mind or something else? That was else? my original plan, but I'm not sure how that helps after bishop, bishop g three, right? Unless black can flick in like. E3, nah, E3, no, E3, bishop h7, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> walking into some checkmates, maybe. Yeah, yeah those, those things can be different. Feels a bit too risky for black. Um, okay, so after D takes C5. Unless in that position maybe after... just black takes back. Ah, okay, and... Because after B4, B4 bishop D6. Yeah. Bishop F4, bishop Bishop e5 and knight c4, right? Mm -hmm. But white can grab a pawn and on e4. No, but maybe here points. anyway, knight c4 just. Okay, much safer. And yeah. Probably so we, for black. we have uh, players playing extremely fast. Bishop e3. Okay, so this very rare line that's only been played once by Magnus in his career. And Tari's prepared. So bishop e3. Preparing knight d2 development. Yeah. Or also possibly to take mm. on c5. Mm -hmm. And again, it looks like this is the most studied move, so I'm assuming it's the top <laughs> computer suggestion. Uh, <laughs> if people, you're people are looking, then... You're looking in the study corner. In the study corner, yeah. It has been studied more than a thousand times. A thousand times. <laughs> but That's yeah. just on the clouds, so probably yeah. more in private. Um, so bishop e3 and bishop b7 is... Again, if, but if you say that it's studied a thousand times, that's a thousand people, or that may be... That's a thousand visits, it could be. That um, could be the same people. Could be. Yeah. Actually, after bishop e3, it's gone down slightly, but um, mm -hmm. still a well-known position, mm. at least according to <laughs> um, the online database. So it's in this position, black has choices, maybe. I'm not sure whether you want to rush with taking on d4. Or just queen, queen c7. Queen c7, yeah. 
Bishop d6 also possible. Bishop d6 I also would consider. Okay, yeah, true. Knight d2, bishop d7. Okay. So maybe... Knight g4. Ah, okay. Though maybe, no, after knight g4 takes and f5. So it's not mm -hmm. a nice thing to do. What about well, bishop have g5? Look at the leader or s yeah. see if they are making a lot of moves as well. Yeah, it's an Imzo Indian. I think we have it for the first time, Imzo in the tournament. Mm, Imzo. Yeah, I can't recall this being played so far. <laughs> Nowadays, nobody allows Yeah, I haven't seen this. I mean, we should, we should be mm. for hours playing it for so many times. <laughs> Everyone goes to this, uh, <laughs> what they call the main position, or what Grishuk called yeah. the main position after knight f3, d5, knight, and knight c3. Castle, queen c2. Okay. Okay, and they play d5, d5. bishop g5, h6. Takes, takes, a3, bishop c3, queen c3. So this is heavy theory, right? Relatively, as far as I know, but uh, I thought it was meant to be a bit sedate if you take on f6, uh, less challenging than keeping the pin with the bishop on g5, h4. Um, yeah, but it's interesting uh, how to play in his situation, right, for Rapport. Mm -hmm. And he's leading with the four point, which is, we all know that with this special system, what uh, the trademark of Norway chess to have three points for a win, zero for the loss. But if it's Armageddon, then you can, if you score with, uh, uh, in the Armageddon, then you get one and a half. So two Armageddon wins equals one classical win. Yeah. But still, when you are a leader, it's, uh, sometimes it can be too much on your head. Mm -hmm. You know that if you lose one game, someone wins classically, then the lead's gone. So I think that's why he's also, he's not looking for sharp things. Mm -hmm. Rapport. He wants to go slow, solid, and then we'll see. Yeah, and that's served him well so far. He's won Which a few games in this kind of slow, solid style. Though I'm looking at the position, I wouldn't be surprised still. One <laughs> <True> <laughs> once some, some G4 would come in the position, yeah. but I think uh, generally speaking, it's not Rapport's mood in no. this tournament to make this kind of... No, true. Actions. If, if it was Mamad Yarov, we'd for sure see G4 yeah. next move, no matter what <coughs> black plays, pretty much. I guess if black plays a slow move like C6 here, maybe it's more tempting to play either H4 or G4, I'm not sure what. Yeah, yeah I mean, nowadays it's very normal, right? Yeah. Ten years ago, if people would go G4 in this position, they would just say, yeah. well, maybe you shouldn't be in this tournament, right? <laughs> They'd laugh at your chess, <laughs> chess culture and chess education, they'll be like... Nowadays, awesome. it's like trendy. Yeah. Nowadays, if you don't play it, they'll laugh at your chess culture. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but probably it's not c6. Isn't um, black going to play b6 or something and develop his bishop? I guess the question after b6 is can white get greedy ah. and take the c7 Takes, point? takes, and queen c7. Because in some... No, I think you're right. Yeah, in some situations, black can play like bishop f5, rook c8 very quickly and get some compensation. But it seems but like uh, black is behind in one or two tempo missing. Yeah. White can always gain time as well with queen e5 to yeah. offer a queen trade. And I guess black can't allow this. So uh, also knight c6. Okay, knight c6. You want to play for e5 eventually? Yeah, somehow to take on c4 and e5 kind mm -hmm. of moves. Yeah, I guess the knight doesn't always belong in c6 though. Yes, it can be coming that's true. Um, that's absolutely true. Yeah. So, I mean, c6 would come to mind just to play knight d7 and rook e8 and get ready for e5 later on maybe. Well, that I doubt he will have the option to play e5. I'd go e3. Okay, so knight e7. Trying to go knight e5 and f4 later. So okay. probably bishop d3 or bishop e2. Okay, and rook e8. And once you go rook e8, I go knight e5. Oh, that's mean. <laughs> no e5 mean. in this game, sorry. Yeah, knight e5. You take it? Probably. Um, in takes, this situation, takes, queen. Queen e7, so. It's never clear whether this pawn on e5, I mean, I don't know if too much if risk for white, but... It well, it shouldn't be imagine. risky. Yeah. I can just castle later on, I can go f4. Mm -hmm. I guess black plays c5, b6, bishop b7 at some point, and hopes that there's no kingside attack, but maybe there is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this type of thing could well happen. Um, okay. I reckon play slowly with c6. I According to the database, d takes c4 is the other main move. Yeah. Which one is there? And Which, after queen c4? Yeah. And after queen c4, 
now you're moving like C6. Mm -hmm. So maybe just, again, aiming for E5 without allowing any CD5 change of pawn structure Yeah. earlier on. So, and if, I guess, E3, <coughs> then black immediately can strike out with E5, I guess. Um, maybe due to D5, D5? E4. And <laughs> oh. Yeah. A bit of a mess, but it wouldn't surprise me if black's completely fine here just because the white king's still in the center. And yeah, queen takes b2 coming. Yeah. So this is. So, okay, these are the things what uh, Sergei is thinking about. Yeah. So, again, the more solid approach with c6, but maybe a bit slow, or d takes c4, aiming to equalize immediately. But if he doesn't know his stuff, then could rebound to be so direct. What do you think, Judith? Is he <coughs> going to play a slow, solid approach? Or? Um, I don't like c6. Somehow mm -hmm. I consider it's too passive. Yeah. I like dc knight c6, mm -hmm. looking for some activity with e5. Yeah. No, I like it too, but if I didn't know this position, <laughs> I'd, I'd be slightly worried that I'm not in time, and then the knight on c6 looks a bit <laughs> silly. So. Yeah, but I think after c6, there is barely mm -hmm. idea for black to play for a win. True. It's sure. more of uh, trying to equalize. How can you... Yeah. <coughs> Do people really play these kind of... Okay, I know it started as a Nimzo, but it's a Queen's Gambit decline yes. type of thing. Do they play yes. that for a win anyway? I don't know. Yeah, okay. Uh, but yeah, you're right. C6 is definitely not the mm. most yeah, ambitious the move. The information I get is that uh, indeed taking on C4 and Knight C6 mm -hmm. seems to be the recipe. It was tried first by Ding Liren against Veselin to Palov and Okay. Apparently that is a good way to go. But it's clear that Sergei is in deep think. Mm -hmm. Which leaves yeah. one other game. The uh, clash between Alireza Ferruccia and uh, Janne Pumiacci. It was again an Italian. Yep. Bishop c5, d6, castle, castle, rook e1, a5. It's so funny, this is only their second classical game that they play. I mean, the, the first one was in the first wow. round, yeah. or the first half. I guess that just shows as well how, I mean, Nepo, he's been established as a strong, a strong player for a long time, but he wasn't always getting those invites to the top tournaments. He wasn't always yeah. as kind of fixed in that top ten. And Alireza is very years, young. So, and of course, then mm. uh, Alireza is very young. But Alireza has been, a, I mean, the last two, three years, he's been playing all the tournaments. So. Yeah, surprising it's their first encounter. Well, this tournament's this been tournament. their first encounter. Yeah. But meanwhile, okay, quite a trendy line. Um, okay, the, everyone's playing the Italian these days with white and yeah. black. <laughs> but uh, also this A5, H3, this is all very well known. And is that also a part of modern chess? That we, would you say that, I mean, that so many players play many systems with both colors? I mean, just not one, or, but mm -hmm. just so many. That, uh, which would be unthinkable, let's say, 20 years ago. Um, yeah. some, some people played with both colors, let's say Sicilian, mm. and some lines. And uh, I remember I was using this as a weapon mm. against Kasparov, when mm. he was, of course, the, the developer of the new way of thinking about knight or six, bishop e3, knight g4 line. Yeah. And then I thought, okay, He's so good with black in this. <laughs> I'm going to play Turn with black <laughs> against him. And then he couldn't handle it because he, yeah. he was always looking at it from the b black perspective. And most of the people, they don't dare to play something against an opponent if it's his yeah. bat line because, oh, he knows all the ins and outs. Yeah. But OK, there is an objectivity uh, factor as yeah, well. Sure. The position is maybe equal or whatever. So, and that works for me. But that was a psychological ploy on your side. Yeah, absolutely. But these days it's such a normal thing to, to do that in many openings, uh, as if it doesn't matter anymore. It's, it's like I'm f in football matches that mm -hmm. the home advantage, I mean, many yeah. people, they just laugh at that, say, okay, that <laughs> doesn't play any role in, unless you have 100,000 people <laughs> cheering you on. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's a mindset change as well. People realize that if yeah. they've studied it, then they'll understand the positions deeper, they'll know the middle game plan, so they're happy to take on the other color. Yeah. They have less bias and less kind of prejudice towards... Maybe mm. it's um, also the engines which uh, and engines, yeah. led people to this direction. In the end, it's all the yeah. engines. It's all the <laughs> engines. <those. laughs> it's depressing. They've shown everything's playable, so <laughs> they can get away with anything, these players yeah. nowadays. Uh, yeah. 
but the Italian game, I mean, it, until I think around 2015, 16, it, that wasn't that trendy. And mm. Kramnik started playing it all the time, all these Russian players, Karyakin. And yeah. I remember when I was young, I was, it was pretty much my main repertoire. And mm. I used to get criticised so much in the English chess circle because oh, they were really? saying, oh, he only plays the Italian. It's a terrible opening. It's boring. You know, it requires no work. It's a lazy opening. And now, look, here it is. <laughs> it's, everyone's at it. So. So, so, so why did they think that it was a lazy opening there? I think it's because you just put your pieces on the same squares, just develop and... But they still you don't do know. that. I know. <laughs> it's because you didn't need to know any theory back then, yeah. but I think that's why the top players are attracted to it now, because mm. yes, they need to know theory and move orders, but there's still mm. so much room for manoeuvre and you can put your own yeah. spin on things. Well, this used to be one of the openings that players, well, that, that you learned chess with. Is, is, is that yeah. still good advice or...? I think so. Um, mm. I mean, obviously, it's good to learn lots of different openings when you're starting, mm. but this one is, this plan's at least a simple, and it teaches you a lot about controlling the center and developing your pieces, maneuvering, that type of thing. Mm. So, I never played time. it only once or twice, but ah, okay. only just as a surprise. Oh, really? My point. No, I was a Ryle Lopez 3 Bishop B5 player. Yeah. Yeah. I played Scotch, I played the Four Knights, but uh, Italian was out of my. Three decades girl. was not enough yeah. for <laughs> If you're still going to it, it would be your main, uh, <laughs> your main thing, I reckon. Well, you yeah. never know. Yeah. <laughs> Even when you were a little girl and had trouble reaching the other side of the board, put it yeah. on, on yeah. B5. Yeah, it was still a longer <laughs> move to B5, yeah. 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 So actually, bishop E6 takes, takes. These pawn structures always uh, yeah. interested me that is it good, is it not good? Mm -hmm. It's it's always challenging, but it seems like black has absolutely no problem with this pawn structure. Yeah, has the open file on uh, f, though it's extremely extremely solid. Yeah, and I guess that's why white's going for this bishop exchange. That's what they tend to do nowadays in this pawn structure because there's too much pressure against the f2 pawn mm -hmm. um, if you allow black's a7 bishop to survive. And um, yeah, bishop e3. And nowadays they've realized as well, it's for, from the white side, it's, it's fine to allow black's knight to f4. Um, as long well, as you have enough peace, well, fine-ish <laughs> <laughs> for now. <laughs> um, you can't really do anything against it, can you? True, true. But um, sometimes they try and kind of break with d4 so, uh, as early as possible before black gets knight h5, mm -hmm. knight f4. Um, also, okay, the Italian is such a complicated opening. I've wasted too much of my life studying. But one thing I have learned is in this pawn structure, it's quite nice for black to actually have a pawn on a5 because if white does ever break with d4 in the center mm -hmm. um, after an exchange of pawns um, then black will get the b4 square for a knight mm. later on um, often if white gets the pawn to a yeah, if white gets the pawn to a5 before mm -hmm. black does then uh, yeah you can get cramped on that side yeah it's uh, at first it seems uh, for some people probably it's a small detail no mm. big deal but it can in the long run yeah. it's definitely like 15 20 30 moves later it uh, it can show the difference. So now knight f4 or bishop e3 or queen f6? Mm. They Many alternatives. <laughs> yeah, I guess knight f4, let's say. I mean, it's not ideal if white takes on What about d4? Ah, uh, okay. I guess I'll take it on d4. And yeah. D5, D5 so it's double-edged because white gets the E5 square for a knight. Maybe knight B4, maybe queen F6, maybe. <laughs> I mean, so much choice. I've just realized I'm hanging the A5 pawn, but <laughs> let's pretend yes, that this is part this of the Yes, but this knight, knight D3 kind of stuff. Yeah. Can be quite unpleasant. Mm -hmm. Maybe white can just ignore it and somehow <laughs> rook A3 or... Yeah, <coughs> yeah, I like rook e3 very much, defending against knight d3. Yeah. Just in case you want to swing over later. Sometimes it's nice to protect f3 indirectly <laughs> with your rook. Yeah, that can be extremely useful. Mm -hmm. I mean, this position would be super tense. Black still needs a few moves with queen e8, queen g6, that type of thing to get any semblance of an attack going. What do you think this, okay, he actually takes the bishops off first, so mm -hmm. this makes some sense because in that position we were looking at the bishop on a7 was Yeah, yeah, but now great. my question is whether rook takes e3 or, or knight, because yeah. both has uh, its sense. 
rook takes, you keep more influence over some key squares, maybe? Like well, three. and you want to go d4, right? Yeah. Then it's more powerful because you have your knight attacking towards the e5 pawn. At the same time, black just goes queen f6. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, somehow I have a feeling that it's easier to play it with black. Black. Because okay. you have to move knight f4, you go queen g6, you play rook f7, you play rook f8. Yeah, simple plan. I don't know why I, I feel that it's easier for black. With to white, play. you need a lot of. Because, uh, I mean, it, it looks so nice for. for I mean, yeah. if, you, if you're an Italian rook player, David, mm -hmm. and you're sitting here and you, you think this is not what I was looking for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I guess. I've had worse positions than this with white oh, really? and Italian. <laughs> <laughs> I think I actually had, I had basically the same position against mm. Beliavsky, but maybe the A pawns were slightly different, uh, differently mm. placed. Um. And eventually, I managed to break with D4 at the right moment when mm. he wasn't mm. when he was going for some kind of attack, and it, mm. he wasn't quite quick enough. And um, I managed to force him back slowly. But yeah, as you mentioned, it's <laughs> but it's hard look, to imagine that Black has right any now. problems. It's true, right. true. And so he's played Knight F4. Mm -hmm. I think maybe Judith, if Queen F6, maybe he was slightly worried about G3, just trying to keep that knight out. Uh -huh. Not, I mean, it looks scary. Maybe D5 yeah. is possible, but um, or G3 at some point, just keeping that. We knight are still, outside. yeah. No, yeah. I completely. Un I mean, it's so tempting anyway to put your knight on F4. Why not? Yeah, yeah. I mean, now probably White has to go King H2 in order to try to push G3 at some point. Mm -hmm. And. Yeah, Black still struggles to break with d5, so... You know, I'm looking a crazy move. <laughs> and I, I just want to show... that crazy move yeah, piece. Yeah, it's <laughs> G3 like now. g3, and I had in mind knight d5. Wow. But I think it's, it's okay. not good, because so you have a, take, a square take. on d2. Okay. Otherwise, if you would go to a3, then e4 and uh, e4 something. E4 or d4, and, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> still a nice pawn center, but yeah, yeah, enough. but uh, somehow nice bones, but not enough pieces. That's not can a good trade. No, can you maybe put a spin on that idea with d5 first? Yeah, yeah, I and think we can. E d5 now, not d5 is very annoying for white. Yeah, that would be when. Yeah, we have three knight falls. But then probably the f3 is not, which g3 is not possible yeah. to d5. But it, you start to feel uncomfortable the longer you need, uh, you kind of leave the knight on f4, right? I don't have a good feeling for white. Yeah. I mean, maybe he can go back, but. Okay. It's, uh... <laughs> yeah, as soon as you play knight g1, you're definitely. <laughs> yeah, not so maybe probably for an this whole king h2 plan is not good. Hmm. <coughs> so what do you think? Maybe strike in the center first before black Also, gets h4. Sometimes I think it's possible okay, with the yeah. same idea to play g3. I really don't like knights on f4 when, I'm, <laughs> when I have my king on g1. Yeah. yeah, you're definitely the type of player who you want your knights on f4 and f5, right? Yeah, Depending yeah, on the color I, I like to be on the other side of the board in these cases. Yeah. Okay, so say queen f6 again. Uh, yes, and so after g3 anyway, you go d5, I guess. That's the right? plan. And g takes that's f4, I guess we flick in e takes f4. Or yeah. Yeah. And lots, lots of pieces attacked for oh, white. Actually, I like black's position a lot. Mm -hmm. And after I would even say if I have to put my money on someone, I would put my money on Apple. Okay, already. Wow. Yeah, and there's only been one game in this position before, so definitely out of prep by now. And how did that? Game go. Um, so this game was between a couple of uh, 2200 players. White did play queen, uh, well, king h2, sorry. Uh, ah, so. King h2, <laughs> and <laughs> black just played b6, which feels very slow. I just don't see the point. Yeah, it's kind of a luxury <laughs> so, move if you Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is it doing? I mean, b6, uh, I don't know, you play when you have your queen on g6, yeah. you have your rooks you have on f8, perfect. and then yeah. you want to bring your other knight to d8, right? And mm -hmm. then you just protect the a5 pawn with mm. b6. Yeah, so queen f6 would make sense. Or yeah. 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 yeah so okay, looking decent. I see a very tree. strange move, very interesting mm. move, which in the rapport game. After uh, d takes c4, queen c4, black went c6. OK. 
Okay. And after g3, knight d7, bishop h3. Okay, it's not completely uh, strange, I understand. The main idea is really he starts to play against this move e5. Mm -hmm. So doing everything. I guess that's black's against. only plan, right? E5. Yeah, but right now e5 you cannot move, right? Yeah, because yeah. of takes, takes, and knight e5. For sure. So black sure. has to look for something. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I just meant that it makes sense to play yes. bishop h3 to stop yeah, Black's... Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's shown his hand, I reckon. I don't know if c5 is an option. Okay. Probably it looks slow. What is this position if Castle. we look the evaluation of no. this? That c8 bishop is not a happy camper. No? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look too good. Yeah, white's rooks are coming quickly. Black can play knight e5, get the knights off, but I doubt that will help. But uh, it looks like a very nice position for White. I think uh, yeah. Rapport uh, is very happy, and also looking the time that he was spent. Uh, he spent nearly 15 minutes, while Sergei spent 26. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great deal what he got. Yeah. And this, yeah, surprise, surprise. This has been analysed before, but <laughs> very, very rarely. So only yeah, 500 people. <laughs> only 100. <laughs> 120. <laughs> so. So we have a rarity we, here. We have a rarity and yeah. no games in the mm. database, so as far as I can tell at least. Mm. Yeah, so bishop h3. Now, I was going to suggest actually an idea based on queen c3 trying to stop e5, but this looks mm -hmm. like it's an even mm. quicker version, an even better version. It's um, an incredible powerful move. Yeah, I think there's a similar idea in the Lasker variation. Um, no, I, I also thought, I just caught my eyes at bishop h3, and I know it's a, it's a common move, it yeah. happens. But it's just uh, also at the same time very unpleasant for black, I think. It's not so easy to develop for black. No. And I think he can forget about e5 for quite a long time. Yeah, Don't but you if think you, so? Yeah, if you can't play e5, and I mean, if you're not tempted to play c5, then. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> in the next few moves, it's a, it's a huge question for black if he can get uh, anything. Uh, reasonable because if white castles plays even b4 brings the rooks plays e4 yep. it's like a full it's very huge well. advantage right yeah. this is everything you hope for when you play 1d4 essentially when black can't break out and challenge the center black can't even play b6 bishop b7 anytime soon yeah Probably yeah never, it's actually. like it seems like that black is so tied up Yeah, he's going to be regretting maybe not going for this idea you had with knight c6 quickly. Is, uh, just save time on the c6 move, just that one tempo seems to have... Well, or your around. idea, what you said, to play c6 instead of d takes c4. Uh, and but he was then, mixing these yeah. two ideas, <laughs> and maybe it was not so good, because if he would have played c6 and then g3, mm -hmm. still knight d7, yeah. well, probably anyway, bishop h3. Maybe bishop h3 anyway. And if... Okay, maybe here at least you could play b6 and pretend that you're yeah, <laughs> getting some Yeah, getting yeah but so, somehow it looks like a bad mix of uh, moves. Mm -hmm. Bishop h3, very powerful. Yeah. And Rapport doing what he's done with many of his whites so far in the classical games, just kind of clamping down, just establishing a nice solid yeah. uh, position where he can kind of press with no risk. Can we go back a bit to the Norwegian battle? Tari and uh, Carlsen, because in this position after bishop e3, black went bishop b7, uh, Tari developed with his knight, knight d2, rook c8, and he went h3. So... Wow, h3. Well, it's like h3, like in these positions. <laughs> in, the, in the Ryan Lopez, do you see games without yeah, h3? We joked about it yesterday, right? We <laughs> yeah, it's just there. H3. But yeah, well, it's not that necessarily you have the time for it, right? Yeah. You would think that there is a more useful move than that. But uh, yeah, if you don't find something better, then you can go h3. And so why do you say, wow, David? I don't know, it's just, it looks like things are heating up in the center and then mm. suddenly h3. <laughs> <laughs> it's as if White's played this whole opening in order to save a tempo on h3 and yeah. this whole line and then... Uh, I like, guess the like he's taking a time out from a short <laughs> battle. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Can I do something <laughs> different for a moment? Yeah. Take a time out, have a snack, and just <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> look at your opponent. And yeah, I guess firstly giving the king some lift for later, but also maybe knight g4 now is more tempting um, because you can take with the h pawn. 
Uh, for yeah, but this uh, this is what I was wondering also whether if knight g4 is the idea that behind must be, it. I think. So if black plays, for example, rook e8 or something, or, um, maybe knight g4. Okay, maybe rook e8 wasn't the best suggestion. I was going to say after knight takes g4, queen takes. Then black always had this f5, so maybe he just wanted uh, to take. He wanted to take with the pawn. Okay, so. So if black just <laughs> queen c7 or something. Then yeah, queen c7 and rook d8, right? Yeah, something along these lines. Then maybe now knight g4 is the idea. And then take takes. and h takes. Because after queen g4, you're afraid of f5. Mm -hmm. Very afraid. <laughs> So I completely <laughs> understand that. H takes, and at least now there's. You're trying to round up e4. Still doesn't look entirely convincing somehow for white, but. At least okay, but e4 is uh, under attack. Yeah. I was wondering if you could maybe go cd4, bishop d4, bishop and c6 or something, and try and get the bishop pair at the cost of a pawn again. I'm not sure it's the right bishop pair, but. I'm not sure it's Though I'm not sufficient. sure if not bishop e4 is also possible. Bishop e4 as well, yeah. I mean, black's fighting for a draw, right, after knight takes d4, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay, h3. Interesting. And what else could Magnus consider here? c takes d4, bishop takes always looks mm -hmm. good. That's also interesting that Magnus has been thinking for more than eight minutes already on mm -hmm. his reply. Yeah, he's behind on the clock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Can he go b4? Okay. Just undermining pawns, or is there a threat? Sorry? Are you just undermining the pawns? Yeah, uh, somehow I, I want to exchange on c3, then exchange on d4, mm -hmm. and then possibly bring my bishop to b4. Okay. Okay. I guess white always wants to take on d4 with a bishop, though, right? Or yeah, but still the c3 pawn uh, can yeah, be, be vulnerable. Isolated and weak, yeah. Yeah, b4 makes sense. You don't really want to touch any of those pawns, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, it's like you don't want to take anything. <laughs> okay, say knight g4, just knight g4, to be yeah. consistent. Yeah, b takes c3. Uh, b takes c3, maybe just knight d5 for black. Sorry? If white recaptures now, ah. maybe knight d5 for black. Maybe. F5 coming. Yeah. This is hanging, and yeah. that is an option. Yeah, so knight e4, f5, and... Unless white has something piece sack there, it looks good for black. Yeah, looks looks pretty decent. So b4, unless after b takes, oh no. Knight no. f6. Yeah, but, but that's everything will just get exchanged. Yeah, then on d4 you have problems. Yeah, and if anything, black's going to be better. Hmm, no, I like it, b4. Don't see any downsides immediately. Knight, no, knight B3. Knight B3? Yeah. I guess you can. Actually, C4 is possible. Ah, okay. Maybe quite clever as well. Just maybe now white goes. Knight C5? In, yeah. What about takes, takes, or takes? Uh, takes on b3, yeah. you go queen takes d8. Um, maybe, but then... Though, what about knight d5? Mm -hmm. Takes. Now can black just take on c3? Am I walking to c6? Or I don't know, but <laughs> so it's, many it's, pieces it's getting uh, complicated, it's that's for really sure. really complicated. Always got to keep an eye on this h7. Well, okay, bishop d5 well. is possible, <coughs> right? Uh, Unless you go c takes <laughs> cb2. <laughs> oh, so much calculation already. <laughs> <laughs> you should warm up first. Okay, cb2 looks like it might work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although maybe white can come out a pawn up, bishop takes. Maybe? No, because takes. And then queen d8. Rook oh, d8. You're playing c3 immediately. Aye, aye, aye. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. Quite Too interesting much in the um, rapport Kayakin game. Okay. Kayakin has played c5, which 
Yeah, he thought probably that if he doesn't play c5, he is just... He'll uh, never play c5. And, and it's kind of a similar scen scenario, mm -hmm. a little bit, I, I think, mm -hmm. as he played against uh, uh, Magnus, okay. that he had a bad position out of the opening. Mm -hmm. And in, in his desperation, he went rook c6, sacrificing yeah. the exchange. Because what else, right? Yeah. Because otherwise he felt that he's going to be drowning, slowly, slowly, slowly. And here, again in this position, I feel that if he wouldn't play c5, breaking out in some way in, with the, in the center, mm -hmm. then it would be just, he felt that, okay, I don't allow b4 castle because that's going to be just a torture forever. Yeah. So I have to go c5, I have to break out. Mm -hmm. But it seems like it's a very dangerous position for him, don't you think so? What yeah. we were discussing. Fully agreed. Yeah. Takes, Black has to take it, right? Yeah. On b2, castle. So maybe his idea is knight e5. Maybe, I don't know, b6, uh, b6 and knight c5. It looks scary, isn't it? Looks it looks super scary. <laughs> I mean, knight c5. Yeah. Okay, bishop a6 is coming. You see, he has yeah, certain... He has some ideas, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> After b6, um, yeah, it doesn't really help to flick in rook b1. Probably you just queen b3. Queen <laughs> e4 also doesn't seem to be so special. Queen e4, bishop a6. So bishop a6, rook yeah. b8, mm, probably both. Yeah. Okay, so this might well be his idea. Can white be a bit clever about things after dc5, no, DC queen b2, castles forced b6, yeah. Okay. Can black sacrifice a pawn after taking on c5 b6 or? Ah, b6 immediately. Okay. And Maybe as well. So instead of queen takes b2. So maybe a similar idea. c6, knight c5. Well, or, or c6 now, now queen b2. Or now, ah, okay, yeah, yeah. Knight c5, maybe white has time to go queen c2. Just defend everything. So yeah, now queen b2. Yeah, interesting idea. Okay. So in that case, if white doesn't take on c5, if white just plays... Well, C1 okay, you can castles. rook c1 or castle, yeah? Okay. Okay, rook c1, but after rook c1, b6. Ah, uh, yeah. I think black is not even taking on d4, but he wants to place his bishop to yeah. b7. If black had taken on d4, it looks pretty nice for white, so... Okay, now it looks just like a Alaska variation of the uh, Queen's Gambit declined. Mm. But a pretty good, a pretty good version half for black with this bishop on h3 suddenly mm -hmm. looking, looking misplaced. So let's see after c5. Bishop g2. <laughs> Is that too, <laughs> too out No, <laughs> probably. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if it's the ne the best move to be honest. After c5, so white would be going back to. So now b6 can be met by knight e5. To do something on the long diagonal, right? Okay. But definitely c5 is the practically yeah. the only move, I guess. It's all about this b6 move, right? We just... Uh, yeah, very nice learn, immediately. Yeah. So immediately or maybe even after queen takes b2, but either way. Yeah, it's the idea it's that the idea. Uh, black is uh, forcing white to go c6 or to exchange, but after the exchange there is nothing absolutely for white. Yeah, and... Don't see anything here other than maybe mm. queen d4 will never give an advantage. Yeah, if you give the c5 pawn back, it's just going to be equal at best for white, maybe. I wouldn't take. Can I? Can we not take on c5? And what you suggested, rook c1, b6. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so if castle, castle b6, b6. Again. I mean, as soon as the bishop gets to b7, it's just everything solved unless you can take on c5 and b4 uh, takes maybe, takes you can even take on b2 and transpose back to that variation we were <laughs> discussing true yeah but the, even this i mean here bishop a6, bishop a6 yeah. it looks nothing spectacular queen i'm trying to find a way to <laughs> make your pieces awkward but yeah queen c2 knight d7 knight d7 yeah got enough squares it's pretty good for black now, this position, so... Okay, so c5... Equalizing. Yeah, maybe. Should we check out bishop g2, just for the... <laughs> <laughs> just for completeness? Uh, bishop g2... So... b6 now looks... 
unappealing? Well, after B695, right? Yeah. And, uh, well, it's not over, but it, it gives a very suspicious position for black. Yeah, white has wasted quite a bit of time there. Yeah, but white just castles. Okay. Um, <coughs> Rook C7, I guess. It seems like this rook can only clumsy. move one, <laughs> one move at a time. <laughs> it's forgotten its rights. Yeah, rook well, B4. Yeah. yeah. CD4, I guess. Oh, 97. What am I talking about? Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, but I think we should look uh, when uh, black is not forced to. Mm -hmm. Allow this. What about just it takes c takes d4? Okay. Even queen With takes d4. Knight or queen? Yeah. Queen. I mean, knight takes is more ambitious, but say at minimum queen takes d4. If black can't play b6. It's going to be slightly tricky at least. Well, yeah, b6 is tricky. Yeah. Though I'm it's not sure. Mm -hmm. It's anything spectacular no. because it's it only matters on by one tempo, right? Yeah. So knight d4 or knight e5, rook b8. Okay, knight. Do we jump in? Do we play well, rook c1? Knight c6, rook b7, mm -hmm. and let's say rook c1. Rook well, c1. it's nicer with white. White can go also b4, b5, right? Yeah. Uh, there are similar endgames to this in Catalans and um, in some Retis as well, where. Yeah. Okay, it doesn't look like much, but you have the c6. Squirt. But it means that uh, it seems like it, that bishop g2 is the best move. That's the best we've come across so far, maybe. Well, uh, yeah, what, <coughs> what it, it seems now. Mm. Yeah, I mean, d takes c5 is critical, but if there's nothing there, then bishop g2 looks like yeah. it poses more problems than just a quieter move, castling. Okay. A bit of a key moment as well, because if Rapport doesn't find anything now, then Black's immediately equal, right? Mm. I don't understand something... Oh no, in the other game, Ali Reza now played Knight H2. Mm -hmm. So Knight G2 is not possible for the moment because of Knight G4. Yeah, and luckily, Knight takes F6 comes with check after Knight takes But I'm not sure how good is this. If Black goes King G5, takes H5, who does it favor? Um, yeah, white can make a draw with knight, knight f3, f3. Maybe. Queen g6, knight h4. No, it's still not. Uh, yeah, maybe it's a draw. Yeah. And if after knight g4, black goes queen g6, mm -hmm. <coughs> takes and h5. Yeah, I guess maybe white has to try and bail out somehow. Rook g3, takes and queen takes. Black yeah, must be slightly better, but yeah, it's uh, it's it looks like a shaky position. Yeah. I mean, but okay, white yeah. is just getting away. Yeah, black c6 knight. If you could reroute that to <laughs> the f4 circuit. Okay, so knight. So maybe just knight e7. Ah, but knight takes g2. Is that also rook f3? Knight f4. Oh, oh I was thinking going g5. Rook yeah, that's yeah, what I thought first as well. But yeah. knight g4 is the problem. So that's why knight. Okay. It's very G4. tempting though, knight g2, right? Yeah, it's like you want to play that, right? d5 is possible, mm -hmm. knight e7 is possible. There are so many options for black. Yeah. So d5, what's white's next move? Well, I guess knight, knight g4, g4, right? Queen. Queen g5. Queen g5. Knight f3. Knight f3, yeah. So knight and knight how about knight. queen g6? Also knight f3, I think. Yeah, and e5 is. Under fire, h5. Do h5, knight h4. <laughs> this drawing mechanism again, somehow. Yes, but you can just go queen f7. Yeah, and knight g2 is still in the air, right? And knight g2 is very much in the air, ah, but, but maybe knight, knight takes, d3. Yeah. Right? Um, to take and take on h4. Yeah, but even, yeah. Even there, it's not 100% clear. Maybe after queen takes d3 and take on d5 at the end. And but yeah, okay. Um, feels like white needs to avoid this. So I d5. mean, it doesn't look good. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I mean, it's hanging together by a thread already, the tactics. 
Russia. I mean, <laughs> I think here all of us would be taking black. <laughs> Am I right? Or yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is this type of pawn structure we mentioned. It's quite normal. It's quite classical, but mm. it feels like Black's got a kind of accelerated version. So many extra tempi with a knight already on f4, queen already on f6. Okay, Rapport in the other games taken on c5. Did he? Yeah. Oh, just judging by the camera up there. <laughs> ah, okay. Um, okay, so acid test of Karyakin's last move. Magnus has been thinking for 22 minutes already and still not taken a decision. Wow. Is there a limit to the amount of time that you should invest in a move? Or? Um, if you ask Magnus, he would normally say yes. <laughs> um, that's why it's so surprising. We, we're mm. rarely used to seeing him invest so much time at this early stage. Normally he's quite practical. He'll just play a move that's good enough for... Mm -hmm. um, I but mean, is this, a, is this a position where there's a major crucial decision to be taken? Uh, not personally that I can see. I mm. mean, Judith was mentioning b4, quite a direct try. Black can play rookie 8, queen c7, just slowly improving. I mean, normally when Magnus is thinking so deeply, he is calculating something. So it might well be to do with deep, uh, this b4 move. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, I've very rarely seen Magnus invest 20, 30 minutes and then just play rookie eight or just a slower, mm -hmm. um, a slower move that still gives the opponent five or six options. Normally, when he does, uh, when he does think so long, it's because the opponents don't have too many replies, so he can kind of flash out the next five or six moves quite quickly. Yeah. But okay. Yeah, you think he's That's considering something that is forcing or semi-forcing or? It feels, what? it feels that way. Or, Maybe if not forcing, then at least where the opponent has a, lo a longer line that they, yeah. can, um, they can initiate. And yeah, yesterday I had a talk with Magnus about his game with Ferruzia and he was running through these deep variations even in this very simplified endgame, which mm. he said he was calculating during Ferruzia's time. So clearly he's able to <laughs> kind of uh, see these deep variations even when it looks like nothing is forced. Yeah. Even when it looks like, uh, especially after a move like h3, it's just a bit of a maneuvering battle for the next two or three moves. So, okay, Tari gaining in confidence, most likely, while Magnus continues to think. At the same what? time, it may make you more nervous well. because <laughs> you think, okay, I'm doing fine, I'm doing fine, yeah. am I? If Magnus <laughs> plays something unexpected, then maybe the nerves will come. But yeah. <laughs> if he spends half an hour and then plays like rookie eight, then you'll think, oh, mm. okay, then <laughs> my position can't be too bad with white. Yeah, I, the more I look at it, the more I like this H3 move by Tari, just keeping options open. We never found a refutation of this or kind of anything too no, tempting but still, against B4 for After Black, B4, but what is your idea to do? Um, I mean, Knight B3 seemed the most challenging yeah. from what yeah, we looked at. And, uh, yeah, we looked C4, C4, right? Yeah. But what about uh, B takes C3, okay. takes, and let's say Knight D5? Knight D5. If I okay, Bishop D two feels a bit slow, but let's try it maybe. Oh, <laughs> you go I'm, such a slow. I just want to slowly keep just my bishop pair. Protect keep, your attack, C three attack pawn. E <laughs> attack E four. Slow but powerful. I'm not so sure. Even if Black gives up E four in some situations. I also think that Black should be just quite taking okay. Taking D four. Maybe. For example. Yeah. And I wanted to see d4, but maybe there'll be some knight c3 at some point. Well, maybe just take some b3. Okay. Um, now bishop takes. bishop takes, so you're not going to take bishop e4 anymore. True. <laughs> and then I'm thinking to play simply f6 um, and f5. The maybe. kickback starts, yeah. And black has a beautiful position. Yeah, d5 knight. Looking good. I don't know yeah, if I could have gained a tempo. Blockade. Could I have gained a tempo by taking on a5 maybe a bit earlier on? Um, so after cd4. After cd. Four. Takes, takes. Cd4 now. Cd4. This might be smart. I mean, okay, I'll, I might win e4, but there's going to be tactics. There's going to be some. I mean, the knight on d5 will give always some good compensation. So it doesn't feel amazing for white. But then again, maybe this is something. What about Bishop B4? Okay. And Bishop take. B4, Queen B4. 
Okay, and look B1. You just Don't forget back. this knight C3 is yeah, coming. I, I, know. <laughs> I, know, I know. I'm still trying to work out whether I can take on E4 though. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I was, I was sure about that, that you will try that out. <laughs> so after rook, rook B7. Rook B7, right? Yeah. Yeah, somehow still it works out for you. Yeah. But the thing is, maybe Magnus, he sees B4. Probably black is fine somehow, but maybe he just wants to keep more tension, more life. If white can simplify. Yeah, I don't think he's uh, worried way. about the position, really. He's yeah. worried about or he's looking for the alternatives, how to keep the tension. Yeah, yeah. That's Just the main issue. To make Tari nervous, to pose some questions. Maybe we should stop uh, placing bets if he's going to think for half an hour. I mean, it's getting close, right? Does he often think half an hour on a move? Magnus? Yeah. But he's only mm -hmm. thought for 22 seconds all the game so far. Um, I think this clock time oh is slightly no. wrong, actually. Um, ah, OK. Looks like he has been spending 28 minutes. Um, 28 minutes on this one move. Wow. So we'll get those sorted soon. But yeah, meanwhile, Magnus, big, big question. How to maintain the tension? And uh, yeah, there we go. We see the clock times. Half an hour down on the clock. We nearly never see that from Magnus at uh, this early stage, even mm. when he's mm. freestyling the opening, which he occasionally does. Yeah, but maybe the moral of the story is always play h3 in the Spanish. <laughs> 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 Better late than never. You force yes, your opponent to Yes, but usually you do it before move 10. <laughs> True, <laughs> around move 10 maybe, yeah. Well, you need not be afraid of being left with a dead drawn position because he wins them anyway. Yeah. I don't know what yeah. you think, David, about it. That uh, I know you were a guy, or you is you you are who likes to think. Y yeah, too much. You like to think, and you <laughs> end up in time travel time yeah. to time, right? Uh, so, what was the longest the time. time you were thinking on one move? Oh, Do you remember gosh. any spectacular? Um, I'm not sure whether it was the longest, but I once spent an hour and 20 minutes on this. <laughs> oh my. And it was a blunder, so, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Long think, wrong think, right? But um, yeah, it was um. a must-win situation, and I saw that I had two or three ways to pretty much mm. equalize, force a draw, but I wanted to somehow create something. Uh -huh. So I spent, uh, I spent a lot of time looking for something that wasn't there, and in the end, I convinced myself that there was a genius move, and of course, it backfired for him. <laughs> but I think it's, it's not yeah. a, uh, ran, not uh, mm -hmm. seldomly that this happens. It happens so often. Yeah. I think around half an hour, which can be still the maximum mm -hmm. that you really use your time Where efficiently. It's objective thinking. But after that, whatever mm -hmm. you spend, yeah. most likely you can it's not, it can happen that you don't go to the best direction. Definitely. You have Happens this, so many times, no? Yeah, no, for sure. You have this inner monologue and <laughs> somehow you talk yourself out of the best decisions or yeah. against <laughs> your first instincts and it's... Yes. It's uh, but I think there, there, I don't know if there was a book or no about it, but mm. it would be so interesting to see the psychology mm -hmm. that why people think so long and why is that that I think it's like 80% at least mm. that if you long, think longer than half an hour, it's like 80% you make not the best move and the best yeah. decision. Well, probably when you were thinking one hour and 20 minutes, you repeated yeah. certain lines 100 times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I sat there for 20 minutes just yeah. thinking about life. <laughs> about <laughs> just, <laughs> just regretting yeah. my opening decisions, <laughs> regretting yeah. everything. Yeah, so. How about yourself, Judith? You were quite practical mm -hmm. with the clock in general? I was, I was actually not a time travel player at all for yeah. a mm -hmm. long time. And uh, when I felt that mm. when I was not playing, competing enough, okay. that's when uh, uh, it happened. And also when I started to get rusty sometimes, mm -hmm. then, uh, then, then somehow it means that you're just repeating it. You don't believe in yourself. You're not, yeah. You don't have the self-confidence. And then you're repeatingly, you're calculating a line. You say, OK, I have to double check this. <laughs> and then I have to triple check this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then I also ended up sometimes in time trouble. Okay. But I knew and understood that, that hmm. that's the main problem for me. And I think for many of the players, not for hmm. Magnus, I think, in this case. But when you don't play enough and, and somehow you have to be in training hmm. so much that uh, you, you start spending, uh, repeating the lines again and again. And that's how hmm. you waste time. Yeah, for sure. Did you also find that uh, even when you did have these occasional long things for 20 minutes, half an hour, say, most of the time, would you play the, your first intention? Would you 
go Which back to. happened many times, of yeah. course. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the thing with chess players, right? It is, it is yeah. so strange. Yeah. Hmm. Yes, because if you play it instantly and then it's wrong, mm -hmm. you are going to blame yourself that, okay, come on, you had time. I mean, why didn't you think <laughs> and you spend the time, right? True. True. So you have to make already this decision also hmm. that uh, then are you thinking that it is a crucial moment of a game. So in this position, I have to spend hmm. the time because yeah. It is crucial. When, when did you begin to play slower, let's say? I mean, as, as a young girl, you played very fast, and this is obviously a mix of talent and impatience. So, so, uh, so when, do you, when did that become...? That I didn't th play so fast? Yeah. Uh, well, when I was a kid, I was playing like really fast. My yeah. coaches were telling me, sit on your hand, <laughs> <laughs> not to play so fast. <laughs> that was the old crass classical saying. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I think when I became a 2500 player, like when I was 13, mm -hmm. 88, 89, that's where I started to understand. But of course, it depends against who you play. Mm -hmm. Because when you're stronger than your opponent and it works that you play mm -hmm. fast or something, then you're not going to change your habits. Mm -hmm. You're going to change your habits if <laughs> you're, not, you're not going to win the game, you're, yeah. you're making mistakes again and again, and then you understand that you have to switch your, uh, mm -hmm. your mindset and your time management and everything. So I think by the time I was 12, 13, that's when I started to balance it out and not playing in half an hour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One game. Who, who, who do you think was the fastest player? Was it Anand? Oh, for long it was no question. Yeah. He was like a speed. <laughs> I remember seeing videos like and he would just blitz incredible. the whole game. And yeah, yeah. I remember back <laughs> in 90 or something. I think, yeah, 90 back in and he was like, playing whole game in 16 minutes, 20 minutes, and stuff like that against the top yeah. guys. 30 minutes or something, that was already something. 40 minutes spent the whole game, wow! <laughs> and it was so slow. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the games as well that you did play, they were great. Yeah, right. and nobody <laughs> was even close to him in, the, in his speed <laughs> that I know of. When did he slow down slightly? Was it also maybe a bit later in his career? Um, so I remember the, watching the world again a few years later but watching the world championship matches against Kasparov and already then he sometimes ah, he would have these long trips and time trouble and <laughs> yeah. maybe it was psychological already by that point yeah and maybe you had a coach who said to sit on your hands <laughs> and then he did that you have some moves in the Ali Reza game yeah some action there and yeah uh, so this is what we were talking about kind of right before that Black should be bringing his rooks mm -hmm. and that's it. So after King H, uh, Knight H2, simply King H8 was played. Queen F1, Rook F7, Knight D F3, Rook A F8. Mm -hmm. I like very much how Black is playing. It's just, it's so easy to play with yeah. Black, right? Yeah. It's easier. It's so frightening to look at this King side for White. I don't know whether he can go G3, by the way. Maybe uh, it's time to play G3? I think just as you say, he's played it. Ah, okay. Uh, again, just judging by the camera. <laughs> yeah. Um, it looks like he did push a pawn on the king side, so. Uh, okay, asking a question of the Black Knight. White has kind of created this compact arrangement with his pieces. It does look a bit clumsy, but maybe um, it means that Black is forced to retreat. And that Black Knight expected to step back maybe to G6, H5. G6 doesn't look like the best square, controlled by the G3 uh, pawn. What about knight, yeah, maybe knight H5? Yeah. Also on G6, it would have been on the same circuit potentially as the other black knight. Maybe the other black knight wants to use the G6 square later. So H5 looks like the safer square. Now white has to decide how to unravel. Feruza spent the last five or six moves just preparing G3. And now that he's achieved it, the big question is what next? And... Uh, yeah, the current position. I expect to see Nepo think for a few minutes and then decide where to put that black knight. Yeah, I mean, it looks still no problems for black. He's still, he's achieved great squares for his pieces, but big what next question for both sides, actually. Looks like a maneuvering battle will start now. Okay, I go back knight g6. Okay. I go knight g6. Say I play h4 just because it 
looks H4. like the type of move that, <laughs> because everyone plays h4 essentially. Um, it should be about time to play d5 or knight g4 is going to be a problem for me. Uh, my plan is to go queen h3, rook f1, knight g5. And <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, okay. You have your <laughs> dream, dream world. dreams, <laughs> dreams. No. It um, makes a lot of sense, of course. I was slightly surprised by King H8 earlier. It felt like that was a luxury move, but okay, maybe Black didn't have anything better. So. Well, uh, maybe he played King H8 in order that if he sacrifices something, the knight, mm -hmm. then after Knight G4, it's not going to be it's with a check. Yeah, true. So probably true. that could be Just the idea. Reason. Yeah. So. so it looks like he's okay. So if Knight H5? Yeah, I think he's played it. Um, he's retreated with his Knight to H5. Okay, and again, the question for white, how to improve that rook on a1 feels like it wants to be somewhere, but I'm not sure where. The white queen not looking great, so h4, creating the h3 square for the white queen looks nice, or just queen e2, actually queen e2, <laughs> maybe black can think about knight back to f4. That would be a funny repetition of moves. <laughs> <laughs> But can Black improve his position? I mean, yeah, or has he achieved everything? I guess one question for Black is whether to push g5 later, yeah. and slowly rearrange, kind of <laughs> move the Black Queen, move the Black Knight, and then eight, g5, h5. And comes with some risk, though. I mean, that, that would be the way to attack. I mean, you have to start pushing the g pawn. You know? So we have so. actually Knight h5 on the board. That was the move. Mm -hmm. I mean, Black can aim for d5 at some point, but. Again, that also comes with its own risks of the e pawn suddenly become yeah. becoming yeah. vulnerable. Yeah. Uh, then you're suddenly giving white chances that he doesn't have yet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think if black plays d5, if you don't get time to also push to d4, then... Um, then e5 then can be in trouble. Yeah, I mean, white always has an g4 in his pocket to come mm. after the e5 pawn, so... It looks like d5 is going to be very mm. hard to achieve. Maybe we'll have to go back later on to that b6 idea you mentioned, b6, just defend all the pawns <laughs> no, no, over no. there, then relocate the c6 knight. Long, <laughs> long-winded. Well, white, look at this, with these knights on h2 and f3, they are like... Like a rock. Yeah, they defend each other so well. But what, are you going to play h4? I kind of want to, I don't know, I don't even know why. Why not? But, well, yeah. you said queen h3, right? Yeah. Why not? Gaining space, it's... Maybe less attractive now for Queen Black. F6, Queen H G6. Queen G6, yeah. Queen G2. Or but now I think D5 is possible. Now maybe D5. D5. Okay, because now you will achieve D4 if I don't touch that pawn. What do you play? <laughs> I'm wondering whether I can play E takes D5, E and? takes D5, and Rook E5. <laughs> oh. But, but. But Rook F3. Rook F3. Uh, twice. Twice and a really imbalanced position now, suddenly. Well. Queen d5. You really, really <laughs> want to do this. <laughs> I mean... You really I, want to do this. It's not my pieces, right? It's not my... Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, if you... If I can somehow get the queens off, Nine I'm very happy three? with white. But, yeah, I mean, it could lead to some big attack against the white king with these two knights. I don't know. Queen b7. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a long variation. And Instead, Feruza plays rook d1, so he's preparing d4. Maybe again in light of the fact that he thought black would eventually get d5. So just trying to get uh, his central pawn push first. Rook d1. Rook d1, yeah. I mean, it's not clear that white even wants to play d4, but at least he's hinting at it. And black still can't play d5 in the meantime. And there we see Magnus not looking too happy. Still. Is it? Is it? Is it true thought? that he's still thinking? Yeah, well, uh, I was just wondering I mean, if there's a transmission error or, he, uh, or if he's really yeah. still on strike. Mm. We can see the clock there. He's down to one hour now. He spent 41 minutes on this move. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow. Having a nap. Or maybe meditating. <laughs> just. Yeah. Does he do that? Uh, I don't think so. He's been encouraged lately, as far as I know. I mean, he well, works out a lot. He's now. <laughs> yeah. He just picked it up. No. Actually, it's interesting that I, I didn't get to know that how many players are using these techniques mm -hmm, yeah. of meditation, breathing, and stuff like that. 
Do you know any of the players who are um, publicly talking about it, <laughs> sharing this? <laughs> Timur Gureyev meditates a lot uh -huh. and does yoga, but at the very top level, the elite players, I'm not so sure actually. I, I never heard of it and I'm actually curious why not. Yeah, because Gureyev is doing many things many that others things. don't do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's, he's yeah that's the, not a big surprise. He's the trendsetter, the others eventually <laughs> catch on. Yeah. <laughs> The rest watches. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They watch the trend they, watches. Yeah. They admire his genius and they think, oh, actually, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, a lot of the players, they talk about their fitness regimes. Their, um, mm. I mean, a lot of them have very strict diets nowadays, and Magnus included, just this last month or so, he's really started to get, mm. um, trying to get in shape mm. for the World Championship match. But meditation, I'm not sure whether that's quite part of it. Um, well, as it's a general trend, you'd be surprised if no one's doing it. Yeah. I mean, so many people are doing it in yeah. let's say, ordinary life. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Vichy, for example, um, mm. had been doing this for a while. I vaguely remember some stories, but I'm not 100% sure it was him. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, when he started to play slower. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Deep breath before every move for, for five minutes. Yeah, yeah it is quite uh, surprising, I must say. Yeah. Very. It's Especially in this time format, right, where there's uh, hmm. no added time. If there was a time limit at mid 40, then you'd think, okay, at least hmm. I'll have a long think now, I'll speed up, and I'll get more time later for the end game. But it's going to be hard to weave that end game magic if he's in time trouble for <laughs> the next 30 moves. I think it would be fascinating to, to know what he has been thinking the past 40 minutes. Well, mm. which we never going to know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> As you mentioned, Judith, by now he's probably just recycling the variations, right? He's going yeah, probably he's frustrated them. that, okay, I want to have some position which is hmm. going to be some unusual ideas, no? Yeah, yeah. Or going somewhere which is not, no simplification. Hmm. White's best moves Something to keep the tension, yeah. yeah. And also it's it's hard thing to, to decide, I think, also that how much should be he forcing matters, or how much he wants to simplify and go into the equalish yeah. uh, position. Yeah. Because he can go B4, which after uh, we saw that it can be simplified pretty fast. Mm -hmm. He can try to play maybe CD4 generally. It's a pity for him. Maybe knight D5. What do you think about knight D5? Can we go knight D5? Yeah, so knight D5. I guess you're asking me to take on e4, so I should well, oblige. Well, if we should be e4, let's say, then no. f5. Ah, okay, so, so in martial style now. Martial style. Of course, I'm not happy with <laughs> the knight on e5. But if, if I'm forced to take on d5, which... But I'm actually, it would be even possible to play f6 first, and only after that, f5. Ah, okay. So if you go with the knight takes, then... Uh, it's still tempting to <laughs> suggest f6 or f5. Yeah, point. what happens, let's say, f6, knight f3, and even you can go c4 sometimes, can't you? Okay. Or well, that's too much. It's ambitious, but uh, you do have this amazing knight on d5. What about back. knight c4 kind of moves? Yeah. Knight c4 looks like maybe the way. So I think that there are different ways how to sacrifice the pawn, mm -hmm. and that's what he's, uh, he must be hesitating. Yeah, maybe just weighing up the risk as well after, for example, yes. knight d5. Yeah, yeah. A big winning attempt, giving up this pawn for kind of again that alpha zero type compensation squares. Uh, but okay, but you can also go c4. What about playing c4? Yeah, if I go I guess bishop, g5. bishop g5. At least white has this kind of solid structure now, so um, even if flat gets a good square, no, c4 pieces. is not good. So, what about h6? Can he go h6? Due to this reason, or you just want to take on c5 in this case? Uh, I was thinking maybe knight g4 still. Um, knight g4. Just this. Oh, but now knight, knight d5. d5. And questions will soon arise about whether white can take on h6 <laughs> in some way. Uh, you want to do things like this, Probably but then f5. f5. Yeah. Now knight takes e4 and just <laughs> let's go. <laughs> no, this is there were not, not enough pieces hanging, right? Yeah. <laughs> you should be doing it with some more. Yeah. Probably black just takes the e4 knight rather than the other two and just uh, yeah, it doesn't feel like it should be enough somehow. Oh, so he has played, right? So he's made a move after yeah. what was it, forty five minutes or so? What yeah. was his move? 
It looks like Rook E8 mm. was played. Um, mm -hmm. Again, just judging by the camera there. Rook E8. Rook E8. Yeah. So, turns out to yeah, just he does want to keep the tension, but yeah, I mean, 45 minute think, and then Rook E8. Uh, he won't be too happy with that, Magnus. Just knowing him, he's a perfectionist as well. Mm. And okay, so. Giving Tarry so a lot of about, choice, at least. Okay, so what about knight g4, mm -hmm. right? This is, th actually, this was your first move. Yeah, rook e8. <laughs> <laughs> this was I, your first move, and then yeah. you said, no, 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 not rook e8, because after this, queen g4, and you want to keep f5, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> this is where we started out. See, that's the thing, you know, I, I would have done the same. I would have spent 45 yeah. minutes and then gone back to my first intention. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so knight g4, yeah, taking doesn't look too appealing. What else? Because that's also difficult for Tari. I mean, he's mm. gained all these minutes, but at the same time, he has to restart again. Yeah. yeah. I mean what about now, B4? Yeah. Ah, OK. Because knight is moving away from the yeah. center, right? And this OK, E5, knight was the most active piece. Yeah, and this makes a lot of sense now of rook E8, right? Because you're indirect, indirectly defending E4. Yeah, I like it. Uh, again, white doesn't necessarily want to touch any pawns on that side. Either way, white's going to be left with... Well, a bishop a4 pawn. is an option, for example. Okay, bishop a4. Unexpected new opportunity for white. <laughs> I don't know whether I flick in b takes c3 or not. Takes, takes... Well, you can go back also. True. Even this is an option, because yeah, the bishop true. went away, so the e4 pawn is not hanging anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I doubt it will end in, end in repetition, but if white plays bishop c2 here... <laughs> <laughs> he will not play he will, rook he won't he'll play rook go eight. knight d5. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, knight d5 comes with a lot of power. Yeah, no, that's, what, that's why I like b4, because after bc, bc, knight d5, d5. Uh, can be extremely unpleasant. Yeah, I, I like it as well, because even if things go wrong, even if you lose a, the e4 pawn with black, you've left white with an isolated pawn, and probably you're sufficiently active. So what should I do? What about knight b3? Mm -hmm. well, if I take, you'll take with the a pawn, I guess. Maybe knight c4. No. If a knight takes, yeah, I think b yeah. a takes Because if bishop takes, then your yeah. clear idea, just c4, lock things down, get it square on d5 for black. Yeah, that seems to be pretty good for black. Something on d5. Probably knight d5, why not? Uh, but bishop takes e4. Knight c3? Bishop h7. Bishop h7, aye, aye, aye. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. A strong intermezzo, queen h5 check coming as well. So Yeah, this this is a full yeah. misunderstanding yeah. from Black's yeah. perspective. The whole house falls, so bishop, I mean if worst comes to worst you just play h six or something. Bishop d six. Or bishop d six, yeah, exactly. Black will never be worse here, it feels like. I don't think white can ever round up the e four pawn, so So what should he do after rook yeah. e eight? Unless knight b3, but then taking with the a pawn. Um, if knight takes yeah, b3. Yeah, takes, 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 a takes b. Because yeah. at least now, in the end game, white won't be too unhappy if, um, if the queen's ever come off. Knight d5 still, this bishop takes d4. Yeah. So what about bishop, bishop b6 yeah. anyway? Bishop d6. Knight g4? Knight g4, and maybe knight now knight d5. Yeah. d5, I guess, bishop knight takes e3. Knight takes e3. And, yeah, happy days for black. Mm -hmm. black. Black is great. Yeah, bishop power. And black is really g6 great. g6 f5 later. So yeah. let's say rook e8 and Tari is thinking, right? Mm -hmm. So that, yeah, that rules out a couple of moves for Tari. Yeah, if the direct ways to go for the e4 pawn don't work, then rook e8 probably just a very sensible move. But clock situation, we'll see if that comes back to bite Magnus later on. Yeah. Let's go 
for a moment to rap board games, what yes. do you think? Yeah, if you change it there. Uh, uh, there's not much of a change as yeah. far as I understand, but still, White played C6. Yeah, at least he's committed to this. Uh, yes, he yeah. went absolutely to this direction and played Knight D4. Okay, so Knight D4. Yeah, so he's planning to answer Bishop A6 with Queen B4. Yeah, so actually, the queen is kind of trapped. Yeah, he's boxed in the black queen. Yeah. And actually, this just. This is a funny look. trap, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the black queen this has to take white's queen, yeah. and, and we should maybe show, yeah, he takes b4. And <laughs> whoops. Yeah. Yeah, this, this would be very annoying, so knight d4. That's a very nice move, knight d4. Yeah, yeah. Because also you're threatening rook a2 in the current position, right? Yeah. So, what about. Black can go e5, right? So this is one alternative, mm -hmm. and the other one is queen d2. Yeah. Maybe rook d8. Or well. rook d8. If rook but d8. Just e3, maybe. Um, but after e3, already bishop a6. Because the rook is hanging, ah, maybe. Okay. I mean, maybe white can also sacrifice that. But. But it's not the first thing <laughs> comes to mind. Actually, maybe. Uh, no? Yeah, I mean. This is like the last resort. You calculate this and maybe it's strong. Bishop A6. <laughs> I That's mean, White for minutes. sure has enough compensation at least. Yeah, yeah. But this would be not the first uh, move to check for me. Okay, so Rook D8. After Rook D8. What about just Rook D1? Mm -hmm. And then still Rook A2 is a threat. Though it's yeah. not a threat to win because Bishop A6. This is true, so maybe no direct threat, but how can black profit from this? E5 now is a big question. E5? Maybe. Oh. I mean, it looks <laughs> super looks shaky scary. on the back rank, but... <laughs> looks scary. Yeah. I mean, it, will, it might solve black's problems if there's no tactical reputation there. So what about knight, C, knight f5? f5 yeah. That's what I'm going to do. I guess. Bishop. Threatening with knight e7. Yeah. Bishop e6. After bishop e6, uh, I think queen h4. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Using the whole board, but creating some really scary threats now. I guess rook d1. Rook takes, rook, rook takes. <laughs> Do I want to grab on e2? Is that too? You like <laughs> you like to grab my. I just pawns. want to test. <laughs> you always want to. I grab want to see my your pawns. beautiful reputation of my. Uh, yeah. <laughs> of my yeah, greed. you're challenging me there. I don't maybe, see. I'm going. How I'm going to punish you for that? Maybe you have rook d8. Yeah, but takes takes Call and knight d7. Ah, but then maybe black gives a check. On e1. Bishop f1. And then f5. Oh. And then c7 and <laughs> bishop c4. <laughs> and game over. And, yeah. White can fight with queen g8. Queen g8, yeah. <laughs> and then make a new <laughs> yeah. queen. Yeah, but the bishop e6, <laughs> queen, and queen f8. f8 and, okay, this <laughs> okay. has gone wrong for white. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is not the way uh, I want to go. So, rook d8, you say? Maybe. I mean, we still rook have to consider uh, e5 possibly as well, but... It feels like rook d8 and e5 are the first moves you calculate, right? <coughs> and then if those don't work, then Absolutely. you look for queen d2 or trying to Absolutely. escape with the queen. Unless... Yeah. <coughs> I'm trying to find a way to give up material, but I mean, maybe the c3 variation mm. is... But is it a type of position that uh, Richard Robert should be happy with? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it suits his strengths in a way. Um, some calculation, but also um, some positional factors. When to go into the end game, mm. when not to. That type of thing, to me at least, seems to uh, be something that Richard sells at. Yeah. But then again, it is quite concrete, so. 
it became very concrete. What about yeah. rook d1 and after e5, instead of knight f5, take there first? Okay. This will be good, and I think. Takes and then knight f5. Uh, what about rook takes d4, though? Ah. Because after ah. rook takes d4, this queen takes a1. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so I probably will go rook a d1. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. Maybe this after is rook d8. It's not that I want to, because mm. I wanted to leave my rook there to sure. play rook a2, right? But at mm -hmm. least now, after e5, bishop c8. Yeah, so should we see how that goes? e5. e5 takes. Uh, I guess I take rook a takes well, c8. Well, knight at 5. Yeah, and I hope that I can. And now queen g4, knight e7. Yeah, I have several too many threats, it looks unpleasant like. threats. Yeah. I mean, I'm playing with fire here. For black, I think this is definitely something to avoid. No, I agree. So and after rook c8, if you go rook d4, takes, queen takes d4. Kay. Queen takes d4, e d4. Find somewhere good for the bishop. G6. Bishop h3. Yeah, just root d1 and mm -hmm. white's fastest. Yeah. Yep, looks good as well. So, so rook a d1 in that case. Maybe now bishop a6. a6. Queen b4. b4. Okay, I don't lose a piece after queen takes b4, but <laughs> still pretty good for white. Queen a2. Feels I like don't know, I'm afraid that rook on d8 somehow it does not stand well. Mm -hmm. But I mean, even here, just rook d2 at some point, it looks like it should cash in on some. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what uh, is this, queen, queen c4 or queen d5. Uh, okay. Bishop g2. Mm. Queen g5. Okay, c7. c7. Oh. Yeah. Probably c7 seven comes anyway. Unless knight e4 works, but that, again, it looks very shaky. Wow. <laughs> but, um, I mean, it looks like it's asking for trouble. Well, it, it, it does look like that. Mm. I don't know, probably I would go C7 oh, first and then look around. Maybe also Knight B3. Just attacking the Black Queen. Attacking the Knight in E4. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay, these lines look slightly scary for Black at least. Definitely. So what, what else do we have instead of Rook D8? Uh, you also mentioned e5 uh, immediately. Let's say e5, because that's mm -hmm. extremely concrete, right? Yeah. Okay, How but about anyway. This, yeah, this idea you mentioned with knight f5. Anyway, but maybe what about queen d4, queen d4, e d4? Ah, okay. So we have an extra rook. Okay, and black can play f5. And yes, but bishop g2 will yeah. be there, right? So anyway, rook d1. Okay, say rook, rook c8. d8. Rook c8? Uh, or maybe rook d8, I'm not sure. On rook c8, I think. No, rook d4, knight b3, I understand. <laughs> yeah, you saw my trap. So what about bishop, bishop g2? g2? Yeah, knight e4 is always just too slow. You can just grab a pawn for white. Yeah, so rook d8. Something like rook c1. Mm -hmm. I guess king f7, bring the black king. And rook c4. And rook c4. Yeah, I mean, black's got an uphill struggle to defend this, knight e6. But White's having all the fun. Maybe this is a Richard position similar to yesterday. He'll just play like a4, he'll play f4, mm. king f2, and just sit on black, and black is a bit stuck. Yeah. <coughs> so e5 generally is an, an uh, alternative. What about bishop a6, queen b4? That's losing, right? Looks, it, uh, looks that way. You did mention, though, that there is no immediate threat with rook a2 because of bishop a6, so can black do anything? Yes. Mm. It feels like queen d2 running away with the queen is not going to be... It looks somehow slow, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It feels like white should be able to build up some initiative now. Just rook f2. Well, queen b4 <coughs> is also a move. Pushing, pushing the queen back. Rook f d1 simply as well. I think also knight b3 is an advantage. Ah, okay. Probably to eliminate the knight on c5. Yeah, once that knight disappears. 
the yeah, Angel Knight D4 actually is a very interesting choice. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, it shifts the game to a completely different direction. Yeah, we were expecting some kind of strategic, just mm -hmm. sit on black yeah. type of position. But and I no, entirely he has played Knight G4, as you <coughs> suggested. OK. And now we quite liked this B4 move. So, oh, so Magnus is thinking again. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Less than a minute so far. OK. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah, I doubt we'll see another 40 minute think from him. Oh, that would be something. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I can understand H3 not being on his radar, maybe surprising him slightly, but Knight G4 will not have. <laughs> yeah, Knight G4 <laughs> must have been, absolutely. Um, That's the key move, right? Mm -hmm. But now I think he has several options, which okay. he's thinking of. So we mentioned B4, what else? We mentioned uh, B4, but also what about C4? Ah, okay. Because he's ready that after knight f6, bishop f6, and he just mm -hmm. def defended the pawn, right? And if, okay, and if bishop f4 in that position, you defend it with? Bishop f4? Uh, sorry, after taking on f6, and then bishop uh, f4. How are you defending the uh, b4 pawn? Uh, just like that. I want to get those knights off so you can't play knight d5 and then round up. Mm -hmm. mm. Because if you had one tempo as black, then yeah. I think you'd be very happy to just put a yeah. bit ah, okay, and but this Yeah, this means that uh, <coughs> this move is not an option. Definitely doesn't look too appealing to take on g4 right now while the white queen can take what back. about bishop f8 okay bishop g5 right yeah pin and maybe win no, I, don't I don't know cd4 cd4 yeah it's gonna sharpen up for really now bishop takes f6 but i i hardly believe that this can be good for black. no way no way <coughs> What, what about knight d5? This we also talked a bit, but then bishop e4, right? Bishop e4. Um, yeah, if only that rook was back on f8 now. Yeah. <laughs> <For f5. laughs> yeah, I'm struggling to see any concrete. What is this knight c3? Wow, <laughs> okay. Take, Takes take. and f5. Maybe knight h6 check at the very least. And knight g3. Knight g3 is just to ruin it. Yeah, ruin that king's yep. side. Mm. Yeah, how about. No, knight d5, knight takes e4, knight takes e3 doesn't. Uh, it's not that ambitious. Maybe knight c4. Or yeah, knight c4 is always yeah. there. But after knight d3, knight e3, I yeah. think. And this. I love when the knight can reach to f5. Yeah, reaching f5 but also stopping black playing f5, right? That's, yes. That's the key. Unless well, cd4 here. Do I have some bishop b4 Knight discovered? Ah. <laughs> I would not waste my time. Going for that king, Judah. Yeah. Oh gosh, do I want to try and defend this against you? Oh, probably not. Uh, bishop f8. Well, maybe you can even take these, take c3, I don't ah, know. Okay. Take and queen <coughs> g4, g6. g6. No knock up blow. Look at D one. Though maybe it doesn't I mean, look so good, yeah? I mean it looks scary for black, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe you can walk a tightrope and survive somehow. That's a lot of attacking pieces now for white. Okay, so where where are we? If knight D five, yeah. knight D four, knight D three, right? Three. So, yeah, if rook e3 or f3, then f5 looks like it should at least scare white. I yeah, I think this is good. Here. Looks like this picks up, picks up a piece. So knight e3. Knight e3, <laughs> and now c takes d4. And this is where we went, this yeah. one. Because if c takes d4, bishop b4 looks uh, a bit annoying. Hitting yeah. e1 and hitting e4. at the same time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so knight yeah. f5. Knight f5. 
I mean, this could be a key variation if if he wants to keep tension by playing knight d5, Magnus. Okay, should we say... Actually, if we say bishop f8, then white can just take a pawn, so... Yeah, yeah knight d4, just, right. At the very least, yeah. And, okay, two bishops, but it <laughs> doesn't feel... Okay, sufficient. so knight g4, how, this was knight d5. Yeah, so about what about, yeah? Oh, sorry, I was going to say knight d5, knight takes e4, then knight c4. And, okay, he has played knight d5 actually, so. Oh. Um, yeah, big. So real excitement starts. Yeah, committal move, but an exciting one for us <laughs> here in the studio. Okay, knight c4, at least he's attacking b2. Okay, what happens if. Uh, if white just simplifies, knight to c5. Mm -hmm. Just a question. So, what was happening after f5 instead of knight c4? Did we just skip over this uh, mm. option? I mean, maybe white can get some compensation in some some lines, but. Hmm. Do you see a way to save the knights or to open up the black king? But now I'm confused. What happened on bishop e4? Yeah, bishop e4. Um, <laughs> I think this is what we actually suggested earlier, and then we just got caught up in knight takes e4 just now. When knight c3 we, we were looking. Ah, okay. That's right, yeah. But then you said knight h6 and knight g3. Yeah, this looks pretty nice for white. Maybe that's other But okay, well. after bishop e4, what else do you do? How about knight... Knight takes e3 now? Knight takes e3, knight e3. And then cd4 and just try and equalize. I mean, I don't know if Magnus invested all that time to try and get all the But, uh, c takes d4. Queen knight f5. Six, yeah, and then queen d7. <laughs> Definitely not queen d7. <laughs> well, Oops. I mean, this is not going to be. Yeah. Well, maybe it's a draw. Queen f6. Yeah. Queen e3, knight d6. Okay, this can't be what Magnus is playing this line for, though. Yeah. Fighting for equality. So, okay, bishop takes e4. So, yeah, let's see bishop e4 because it's becoming so concrete, right? Mm -hmm. Bishop e4, what does he have in mind? h5, knight e5. Ah, could he be heading for something very similar to what we showed in the other line? So knight takes e3 first, uh, knight takes e3, knight e3, <coughs> take on e4, mm -hmm. knight e4, and then cd4. Okay, cd4. And, uh, bishop bishop b4. b4. So again, double attack on e4 and e1. If white has to play knight c3, then black's very happy. Well, well relatively happy. <laughs> uh, happy that you're not going to be a pawn down anymore, but maybe not happy about But I don't know how happy actually black is yeah. if it takes. Maybe rook takes c3 as well, I'm not sure. Yeah, probably you can go with that. Yeah, I just want to get pieces off the board as many as possible because of the queen's Yeah, because majority. if you would take the bishop, my plan was to go takes, takes, and knight d5. Oh, nice. Okay. I don't know how big a deal it is, it's just... Uh, oh, scary to face that. I was thinking that it's... Yeah, you have to go back somehow, queen h5 maybe. Yeah. But rook c3 I like. Mm -hmm. I like rook c3. Ah, so probably this is uh, oh. the idea and if... Unless white can try something along the lines of what we mentioned earlier, but with the bishops off the board, so after... Um, so either in this position or after bishop takes e4 first, then just knight f5. There. Ah, so we're playing c takes d4 here, right. Ah, okay. So this is a more precise move order maybe than bishop takes e4 first. Yeah, knight f5 here feels too speculative. Yeah, after knight c5, d c3, yeah. right? Yeah. I was hoping to achieve this with uh, the white knight already on e4 after yeah. the bishop trade. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so if bishop takes e4, not leaving anywhere too exciting for Tari, what other options are there? 
Okay, let's see after knight d5 what options, right? Mm -hmm. But it seems like uh, after bishop e4, knight e3 is the move. Yeah, and it looks like we don't have to consider too many other options for white because Tari has just taken off that pawn. Um, ah, okay. So it's getting uh, some simplification soon. Yeah, I'm just a, getting rid of some dust from the board there, Tari. Okay, so bishop takes e4. Yeah, knight takes e3 mm -hmm. seems to solve the, most of the problems for black, but nothing more than that, right? Knight e3. Knight takes e3. So after knight e3, we decided that c takes d4 is the best? Uh, most likely. And after knight f5? Mm -hmm. Here, just takes. dc3, yeah. And queen g4, I guess we can just meet in a couple of ways. g6. g6, yeah. Definitely not bishop f8, that's the only one we don't want to play. No. Because <laughs> <laughs> of knight h6 check, but yeah, g6 no, no. looks. And it's quite nice to have this white knight still on d2, so there's no rook Yeah, that it's uh, hanging, right? So yeah. white has no time to take <coughs> back the pawn. Okay, and if c takes d, then... Uh, mm -hmm. Then a choice between queen takes d4, but probably just bishop takes e4. Here there's knight f5 to worry about. So. Yeah, which probably also does not lead anything special for white. Mm -hmm. Going bishop, uh, queen f6, right? But this one white can completely kill the game, right? By taking yeah. on b7, taking on e7. So if you go bishop e4, takes bishop yeah. b4. At least here it will lead to some imbalance, maybe. I don't think white wants to play knight d2, because of queen d4. I think I would go knight c3, mm -hmm. or... Yeah, there is no other move, I guess, because white does not want to sacrifice. Yeah, I don't see So knight c3, you, you take with the rook, right? Um, yeah, let's try this. Takes, takes, bishop takes. And, yeah, I mean, it's, it should be equal with... Oh, I black is play, not worse, I think, at all. That's it, yeah. I mean, d5, I would consider, and then yeah. you go... Here, Do takes and knight c4. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, here, black's definitely not worse. So we have knight e3 on the board. Mm -hmm. So we're heading straight for this type of position, this variation. But I think during this 40 minutes, mm -hmm. what uh, Magnus was spending... He seems to have seen quite deeply. Yeah, he was calculating all the way. Yeah. That's the thing, yeah. 40 minute things. <laughs> they could look they could look disastrous, but they could work out really well, right? Yeah. If you spend that time wisely, which Magnus seems to do. In the meantime it looks like uh, Firuja has gotten the um, play in the center that he was hoping for. So what mm. kind of moves we have over there? Okay, so we have had a change of pawn structure in the Firuja game. Mm -hmm. um, so after Knight G six. After knight G six. D four, right? White played d4, and a trade of pawns on d4, ed4, cd4, and knight back to f6. Well, yeah, it seems like Firuza improved his position significantly. Enormously, Let's yeah. say five moves ago, if you just go back to this position, how passive he was, yeah. right? Especially and before he got g3, it looked <laughs> yeah. like white was cramped. It's like here, in this position, look how passive white was. Yeah. And uh, practically seven moves later, just white stepped a <laughs> little bit, two, two rows forward, right? Yeah. And he's kicked back both of the black knights, mm -hmm. the black queen's gone back. Yeah, the e5 pawn disappeared. Yeah. And if we look, I mean, Very pawn, surprising. Yeah, the should pawn structure now been, is... <coughs> sorry, should black have been more active? I mean, did he just let this happen? Uh, sometimes it's difficult if you've missed the moment to stay active or to keep control, then... Actually, sometimes it happens in these lines, back. no? That yeah. you, you're very active, but actually mm. then white can be pushing your pieces back yeah. and then uh, you can recover or even get better this way. It's as if white has the potential, but black's already maxed out his position and then it's like, what next, right? And then, Though um, I'm not sure he had to one. go back here to queen e7. Yeah, that feels... For example, knight e7 was a... Knight e7... Completely reasonable move. I, I guess d4 anyway. Also d4, yeah. Also, maybe 
knight e7, you have to calculate knight g4. Queen g6 and, then knight and knight, e5. Uh, knight d5. And it might be good for white, it yeah. might not be, but um, maybe Nepo didn't want to take the okay, risk. Okay, so he went back all the way to e8. Probably he wanted to attack the a4 pawn a <laughs> little Sneaky. bit and then go knight g6. White played queen d1. I like the queen on d1 a lot. Yep. Defends the a4 at the same time, looking a little bit on the other side. To yeah, the hinting at knight e5. Yeah, like knight e5 can be a next move. And after knight g6. d4 takes, takes, knight f6. And it looks like this is the current position. So uh, Farisa just thinking here. Now the question is for him <coughs> whether he's maxed out his potential. What <laughs> again? What the next step is? Well, now I think knights. Black's mm. Black's move is d5 in the next move. He wants to okay, create his yeah. uh, the square for the knight on e4. This is true. I mean, if White could achieve that pawn structure d5 and e5 without l allowing the Black Knight in, then I think White's very happy. But so what if he goes d5? D5 himself. Okay, makes sense. And Black has a big life choice to make. Push, take, or leave it. Um, yeah, I'm scared if Black leaves the pawn here, then White's going to reroute the knight in via d4, get to the e6 square. If Black blocks it up with e5, then the c7 pawn is a backward pawn for a long time. So what if he goes e5? Yeah, so I guess wrong. maybe White can switch the attention to c7 slowly. You mean takes rook a while. Uh, c, uh, it's not so easy. Queen yeah, a4. queen a4, <laughs> rook c3, knight on e4. Yeah. I comes. guess Black's, again, maybe there's no rush, Black's not threatening anything yet. Maybe just b3, or do I want to save that square for a piece? Okay, say b3, just rook c2 coming next. Eventually I'll try and triple up on the c file. Also interesting developments in Rapport's uh, game. What do we have over there? We stopped after knight d4. Wow, okay, so there's some big developments. So after knight d4, rook, rook d8. d8. And after all, he went e3, right? Yeah, so again, our first suggestion, but that was a bit of a. We were talking about rook a d1. Me, but, uh, yeah, yeah <laughs> we were looking this, and bishop a6, queen b4, and black is not capturing it, but mm -hmm. played knight d3. Knight d3, yeah. I mean, maybe we should just check out what would have happened after queen takes b4, because. That was quite sharp. Yeah, this is what we were thinking, that after takes, takes, bishop f1, bishop f1. Mm -hmm. And after the knight moves away, bishop white a6. goes bishop a6. Oh, what a bishop. And this is with full compensation, threatening all kind of moves like c7. Though knight can go back to d6, and uh, yeah. it can be a good defense, but probably rook c1. And uh, white is aiming to play c7, and maybe after that even to exchange the knight on b5. Yeah, and even if black can defend, it's difficult. Yeah, those black rooks completely dominated, so okay. Um, okay no matter what so the evaluation of this is. He uh, did not take, Kariakin. but played knight d3, right? Yeah, so Karyakin didn't like that one. Knight d3 instead, and the queens have come off. Queen takes. Mm-hmm. Takes. Knight takes and okay, big moment now. Does White move the rook or does he try and continue sacrificing? I don't see any other use. No, move. he's not <laughs> going to sacrifice. No, no. You rook. can play a4 and hope that Black takes on f1. <laughs> <laughs> I've trapped your knight in b2, but no. But He'll you're not trapping rook. because takes and e5. E5, yeah. <coughs> so the question is where to take the rook to c1 or b1. At first, okay. maybe. Do you want to help the black knight get back to d3? Yeah, it's a question because after knight rook b1, probably knight c4 or knight d3 is not so good because of bishop f1. Mm -hmm. Seems to be an unpleasant pin. Yeah, and f5 always met, uh, e5 always met by knight f5. Or maybe knight c2, knight b4 would be my plan. Ah, okay. That then is another idea. Yeah, this configuration with the bishop mm -hmm. a6 and knight c4 feels yeah, wrong. Yeah, it can be dangerous. So what about knight a4? Yeah. But then c7 and bishop g2. Rook goes rook. f8. Yeah, so rook d7, there was knight takes e6, right? Uh, yeah. Rook d7, I thought bishop g2 and bishop c6. Ah, okay. Both but actually, I'm not sure that these things will work for white. Black will definitely, even here, just, just for the idea to show, mm -hmm. 
that in this position black would be taking, ah, taking knight c3. c3, rook takes c7, and I think Kariakin is just extremely happy. Yeah, worst comes to worst, he'll build a fortress and defend some, but yeah. he probably has knight e2, yeah. knight takes d4 as well at some point. So, yeah, but okay, what you said, I think knight e6 is correct. That would give a hard time for black. Mm -hmm. That would be the most difficult. And then instead of rook d7, let's say black goes to e8, but then knight c6 can be. Maybe black can, uh, yeah, yeah. Brought into play. C6. Mm. Maybe, yeah, knight C3 check I wanted to go and knight back to D5, but you can flick in knight E7 check maybe. Um, maybe knight E7 check and rook B3. Knight E7, here, rook B3. Knight b5, you can make a new queen. <laughs> well, still again. Or just rook c1. The Maybe rook c1 to keep the. Yeah, threat. it's uh, it's quite a funny position. Yeah, funny position, and it's definitely move by move right now. It's whether white can create sufficient action or whether black is just in time to hold things together. Okay, let's so, see again. Okay, so, so the there we are standing. Knight rook g uh, knight b2, so yep. rook b1 is on the board. Okay, rook b1 just okay. played right now by report. Okay, so there is not much of an option for black, right? What about playing knight d3 with the idea after bishop f1, knight c5? So mm -hmm. just to, would like to simplify and, and uh, sure. take in any form, exchange one pair of pieces. Yeah, and I guess if the bishops do come off, Black will be relatively happy. Put a rook on c8. And yeah, I mean, the outpost for the knight on c5 is excellent defender. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if bishop takes a6, worst comes to worst, you even just put it back on c7, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. After takes, bishop, knight c7 can be a great blockade over there. Especially yeah. if black king comes to f8, e7. Mm -hmm. Black is, to, to say the least, is, is fine. Yeah, true. No danger. C6 pass pawn will be more of a weakness than a powerful yeah. pass pawn. Yeah. So maybe after knight d3, if we check out the options, for example, c7 again. Or, um, okay, what about c7? Black cannot go here because of bishop g2, right? Yep. And rook okay. is trapped in the corner. So black has to be moving to e8 or f8. Let's see mm -hmm. what about rook e8. Okay, so now white really needs to justify having pushed c7 before that pawn drops off. What about knight c6? Okay. I'm Look at this idea. Okay. <laughs> and after a, rook c8, c8, knight b4. Knight b4, yeah. And if I'm... Okay, I definitely don't want to take. If I move my bishop... Oh, you're going bishop f1. If you go with the bishop, okay. then I... But here, maybe uh, bishop f1. Bishop, f1. bishop yeah. f1, yeah. Yeah, but on bishop c4, also bishop f1. Possibly. Although, Though here there's knight b4. And knight c6. Yeah, or, knight or knight d5. Yeah, somewhere. <laughs> yeah, knight d5, and it looks like you're eliminating that c7 pawn. Okay, point. so how does this work? So c7, rook e8. Occasionally he'll jump into c3 and back via d5 maybe. 
Yes, also this night, C3 night. Uh, and anyway, to give some unpleasant checks and, on. Yeah. I still believe that his aim is just to play knight c3 and rook d4, which we were uh, looking uh, mm. just in some in lines. Some lines, yeah. For example, after c7, and yeah, just give up the rook on a8 in yeah. some positions. Yeah. This is what we were looking, right? This was the uh, line. So, um, actually. So what happens on c7? C7. Okay, we're looking at a few different rook moves, but. Uh, yeah, there is not much of a rook move. So rook c rook. Uh, yeah. D6 is you can also maybe an make option, an right? Yeah, you can make an argument for this one. Controlling some squares and rook c8 coming next. Unless white can go knight c6, what do you think about this? <laughs> Crazy wow. move. Nice. Uh, rook takes c6, I guess. If takes, then bishop g2. Yeah. And, and on bishop b7, my plan was to go rook c1. c1. But probably you go knight c5. Ah. Uh, but can you. Take and rook d1. Yeah. Uh, what moment though? Maybe now? Uh huh. Bishop d5. e4. e4. <laughs> Look at <Yeah>. this. <laughs> Look at this. Dupons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Action time. Too strong. Too strong. I guess yeah. in that position, maybe black has to ignore the rook on d1 and take on d5 with the knight. That's a very Karyakin type of Absolutely. defense. Yeah, and rook c8. This is similar to the line you pointed yeah, out. Yeah, these things he loves, and it's a yeah. great saving opportunity for black. Uh, he'll hold this. Uh, I'm <laughs> sure when he, he went knight a4, this, this is the main, apart from having knight on c5, this is the other exceptionally important saving idea mm -hmm. to sacrifice on d4, knight c3, and uh, have some all kind of outposts for the knight. It's unfair, knight c6 is such a beautiful move, and still black's able to kind of <laughs> yeah. sacrifice and cling on. Okay, so knight a4, this is the current position. C Maybe mm. bishop f, no, bishop f1 I don't. Yeah, bishop f1 I guess. Black has a few ways, but maybe just take those bishops off. Knight c3, knight d5. How about bishop, no, bishop g2, just rook a c8. Need to see the follow up here, unless again it's just slow rook b4, a4. <laughs> Try and break through. No, I, mean, I don't you, actually, you? I don't feel that black is in danger. And if, yeah. if black is going to be uh, solving his very concrete, immediate problems, then, then I think he can mm -hmm. uh, he'll save it without too much trouble. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just the past pawn right, and if you can... So we will be heading to <laughs> Armageddon game <laughs> in this one, I think. Yeah, heard it here first. Yeah. They are going to be the first one. Mm -hmm. I mean, Richard, he'll think he'll spend a while here because if he, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. if now there's nothing concrete, then straight to that Armageddon most likely. But um, I would be surprised if he invests 20, 30 minutes just to try and figure out a way at least to put some pressure and to test Karyakin. Yeah. Okay, so, um, so let's go back maybe to, okay, the Carlson game is very much uh, as we predicted. There has been some action in Ferruzia against Nepo. The pawn structure has slightly changed. And so after... Okay, so after d4 takes takes, knight, knight f6. Six, and white played queen c2. Mm -hmm. Very sensible, also threatening e5 potentially. Yeah, some to. knight over yep. there. <laughs> Loose pieces drop off, uh, as they say. So e5 for black, so stopping this idea. And now white took on e5. Unexpectedly. Yeah, you thought d5 as well, right? Yeah, I thought d5 yes. looks kind of... Uh, but okay, he wants yeah. to open up the position. I guess maybe if, if d5 for white on the last turn, maybe the black knight at some point will get back to c5. Yeah, and then this a5 move is important because yeah. white has no b4, right? I don't know whether white can grab on c7 here. That's, I feel so greedy suggesting yeah, all these Yeah, grabs, I mean, probably yeah. for the moment it's not good, but the principle, like queen eventually, c8 or something, yeah. and eventually you can do that. So maybe black can clog up that c file. In okay, so e5. that's a committal move to take on e5. Mm -hmm. So queen c2, e5. D takes e5. Yeah. And black took with the pawn as well. Are you surprised he didn't take with the knight there with black? Was he but after 95, I think 94 might be yeah. the move. 
trying to have uh, some activity with F4, bring mm -hmm. the other knight to F3, that yeah. I would like for white. Maybe put this central knight on B5 as well, just to tie down the Yeah, B5, pawns. also maybe sometimes to F5, but oh, yeah. B5 probably is a more stable place there. Yeah. Okay, black's not losing immediately, but <laughs> maybe some small discomfort there. So take, take, and rook C3 has just been played by Ferruzia. So hitting a pawn and maybe trying to go to C5 in some lines to go after the A pawn, maybe the E pawn as well. Okay, still looks pleasant for white. Black's pieces, unless they create some threats against the white king. Yeah, it seems like well a pretty solid position for white. But with black, it's also, I'm not sure <laughs> it's so bad. Okay, so how do we defend the C7 pawn? That's the first question. Or do we need to? Because E4 might also be hanging if white ever takes it. Yeah. The problem for black is it's not clear how to improve the pieces. For white, eventually you'll try and improve the h2 knight. Maybe you'll just play b3, defend the a4 pawn, start piling up the pressure against black's queenside pawns. What about c6? Okay, c6. I was hoping for something like rook c5, but... I thought you were hoping for something like this. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you want to say. <laughs> just going after that a pawn. It's not easy to defend, actually. So, yeah, queen a8, knight takes e5, b6, there's rook takes c6. What about playing queen e7? Okay, yeah. With so the idea of queen b4. Mm -hmm. But how about rook takes a5, yeah. queen b4, knight takes e5? Knight takes e5. Yeah. And some, some small tricks, but again, it's the type of thing for Rizzi loves. So <laughs> these two or three moves yeah, tactics. Yeah, takes, takes. Takes, takes, and it's a bit loose for white, but <laughs> hanging on here to everything it looks that way. Knight d7, just rook f5. No, good. this is like two extra pawns, right? Yeah. No, actually, c6 is not something I would like to play. Mm -hmm. You could think about d6 to try and play c5. Or, or queen e7. Or queen e yeah, queen e7 is very sensible. Yeah. But let's play queen e7 and sometimes to go to b4. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> now, does white have time to reroute this knight on h2, knight f1, knight e3, knight f5? Yeah, in principle, it's a nice route for the yeah. white knight. It just depends whether there's any tactics against the e4 pawn. <laughs> and the f3 and knight, the f3 right? Knight. Yeah. So if I play knight e3 next move, there's going to be some knight. But you don't play knight e3 in the next move. Oh. <laughs> I make sure I of that. <laughs> never tell you my plans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would never discover that. <laughs> no. no. Uh, knight h5, yeah. Scary I mean, that it's only a matter of time when knight h5 appears there. Yeah. Right? Knight f4 sacrifices. Or actually, yeah, another yeah. option, another. Well, I like knight h5, but also knight h7 can be very unpleasant with okay. id and ig5. Yeah. Eliminating yeah. and then somehow activate my queen to g5. And now I regret not having my knight back on h2, just yeah. <laughs> holding everything yeah. back together. No, but actually, I like knight h5 sometimes to go something like queen e6 and knight f4 kind of tactics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Knight h5 really puts a dampener on my plans. So, okay, so queen e7 looks like maybe the most solid move from Nepomniachi, and Ferruzia still needs a bit of time before he can reroute and start creating some real threats. Yeah, queen e7. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both sides look pretty fine here. Who do you prefer if you had to take a. It's take an a interesting side? question. Because I'm hesitating, position, right? I'm hesitating here who to take. Would I be happy or with white or with black? I'll say white just because I like having a slightly more kind of, <laughs> I like the four versus three structure on the king side. I like having this isolated pawn for black in the middle, but 
dynamically, <laughs> I'd still be slightly worried. I about like this night H5. Yeah. <laughs> I can feel that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, in a blitz game, probably it's easy. Of to course, black. for yeah. black, I yeah. think it's no question. White's I would take things. black for sure. Yeah. yeah, really, really interesting position. Could definitely go either way. And are those clock times right? Okay, it does look like uh, Ferruzia does have a big disadvantage on the clock, so um, it looks like he's down more than half an hour. So okay. maybe we can have a small break. Yeah, what looks do you like think? a good moment. Things are slowly heating up. After that, things are going to speed up. <laughs> yeah, so we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Welcome to today's Kitchen Table Talks. Today I have with me Grandmaster Simon Agdesein, who newly got voted uh, as the president for the Norwegian Chess Federation. Hello, Simon. Hello. Nice to have you back in Stavanger. Nice to be here. What brings you to Stavanger, really? Everything. This is where it's happening. This is where everything is happening. I saw you on TV yesterday and I thought, oh no, I should have been there days ago. <laughs> and. Uh, this is the peak of the year for uh, for chess enthusiasts in Norway and or maybe all over the world, mm -hmm. uh, collecting all the best players like this. And there's other things happening too. I got, for instance, uh, 11 of my students at, at the Norwegian College of Elite Sports. Mm -hmm. I'm running the chess department there. And my students are taking part in the Open. And how are they doing in the Open? The, the money is good. The prices are good. So they are fighting for good money prices in the ELO group. Mm -hmm. Under 2100, I think. And talking about uh, elite sports, you used to be on the Norwegian national football team, uh, as well as you were playing chess on a very high level at the same time. How was it combining those two sports? That was wonderful, wonderful young glorious days. Uh, and then everything went my way. Um, I was flying on a uh, on this uh, on a sky, uh, but uh, it all went very well until I came on the national uh, team, the soccer team, I think. Until then, it was all just fun. I played football for fun, and I played chess for fun too. I was number sixteen in the world at in my at my peak, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I just thought football was my uh, as a, was my hobby, but then I got on the on that national team, and then I got contract, and I got uh, had expectations. Mm -hmm. It was and uh, it was very very stressful. And mm -hmm. after a couple of years, I actually got injured, and I couldn't play any longer. So it was a short career. But I wish I could have continued because that was just when Norway qualified for the World Championships in ship in uh, in the USA. Mm -hmm. And uh, kind of my gang beat Brazil in 1980, 1999 in France and so on. So uh, it was the peak year, so the national football years that I kind of feel. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't, of course, uh, it was, I, I wouldn't necessarily have been on that team, but uh, it was my club coach that had taken over the national team, Egil Orsen. Yeah. So, uh, so I kind of regret that sometimes. Very impressive, anyway. And uh, you've also been uh, one of the players in the main tournament, the uh, Norway Chess Super Tournament, a few years ago. What was that like? Um, that was kind of uh, my first uh, meeting with the chess, uh, World Chess Elite after 20 years or so. I was quite old. And uh, I started with seven draws. I should have won two of them, so I was actually quite upset. And I tried to thought that, oh, no. Uh, 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 and then I lost the last two. I was so tired, but uh, and I was actually quite uh, upset a couple of weeks after that I hadn't won the tournament. Very understandable. But uh, you've been following the tournament now, I assume. Of course, I follow the tournament. That's uh, every chess player should follow this. So uh, of course. And uh, what do you think? Who who's the chance of winning here? What do you uh, think? Magnus is, of course, the favorite, but I'm not sure he's the favorite now. Uh, he struggles playing at home, uh, which is kind of understandable. I, I might I have a feeling he feels the pressure, but I don't know. But uh, I think it's cool that Ricard Rapport is doing good because uh, he's a fun player, and I like uh, fun players, so like in entertaining chess, and uh, so that uh, I'm very happy with that. 
Well, Seaman, it was really nice to have you here in, in the HTH kitchen, and I wish wish your students all the best for the open tournament. And I have you have a hope you have a great time here. Thank you. And we'll be back tomorrow for more kitchen table talks. See you then.
Welcome back to Norway Chess Round 7, where all three games are still in progress. Um, maybe we can have a look at all the games and just do a brief summing up. I'll ask you my stupid questions and you explain what the position is, is really like. Mm -hmm. uh, at the moment, there's the uh, Norwegian clash between Ayan Tari and, and Magnus Carlsen. Um, it looks like Ayan doesn't have too many problems, but what does that say? I mean, where are we going? Well, what, what do you think? Yeah, personally, I yes, it's equal, but I would prefer Black's position purely because there's this mm. outside pawn majority. Um, I could definitely imagine a scenario where the rooks or queens come off and those pawns start marching forward. That could become a factor. White does have an isolated, well, a couple of isolated pawns. And there is sufficient life left in order for Magnus to do his usual squeezing of water from that stone. Uh, just setting maybe a few tricks, a few traps here and there, kind of strategically and tactically maybe later on. So there's life. I think white. You'd prefer white? Yeah, just for the fun of it. Okay. <laughs> but also, I, mean, I want to go d5, then mm -hmm. I go somehow with queen or rook to c6. I'm dreaming yeah. a little bit Yeah, but from the white side. Yeah. Psychologically, is it about Magnus? Uh, being able to keep the game going, just posing questions, yeah. posing small problems, and then... I think his last move, just retreating that knight, has showed that he wants to at least mm. pose some problems, keep the game going as long as possible, and I hope to coerce a mistake later but on. But I think the position is roughly equal. Yes. Mm -hmm. Even yeah. though that, uh, of course, what you said, that black has the majority of pawns, it would be very fantastic for black if he can exchange the rooks and the knights uh, rooks and the queens mm -hmm. and then bring the king right yeah. but mm -hmm. uh, until we have the rooks and queens on i would uh, i would be also not worried too much with white yeah. trying to play d5 and but occupy you keep, the c5 if you keep this psychological issue that it is i am sorry against magnus carlson and uh, yeah. Well, we'll see how this equalish kind of position with knights, rooks and queens yeah. will work out. Yeah, yeah. we've seen Taris occasionally kind of misplay these positions and uh, occasionally crack. So Magnus, he'll try for a long time. I mean, this is not a position where Magnus will crack. I mean, if, if there's mm. danger of someone... <laughs> yeah. True, yeah. yeah. I mean, Magnus knows that he can put the reverse gear on, put the brakes on at any point. Uh, and D5 anyway. actually is played. Yeah. yeah, so we'll come back to this one. Um, well, then there's the game between uh, Richard Rapport, the leader against... Oh, he went knight D5. Sorry. Wait. Ah, OK. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, sorry, which before game, we game? go... <laughs> oh, <laughs> because it was a surprise to me. Because yeah. I just wanted to say before switching that I yep. would not like to exchange the rooks. Mm -hmm. I think we both mentioned that, right? Just and now he's just exchanging rooks, which definitely helps black, yeah. I think. Don't you think so? The more pieces that come off the board, the more important yeah. black's queenside majority is going to become. That yeah. outside pass I don't like potential. this decision by White. Yeah, but we've seen King him, of Fate. Yeah, we've seen Terry do this a couple of times against reports mm. uh, in the first game, swapping off um, unnecessarily, and it's come back to haunt him. So, yeah, as you mentioned, mm. that why, why is it uh, that the let's say that the, the, the queen side pawns are a bit are look a, like a mm. bigger trump than the the, the passed pawn that yeah. White has? Yeah, I guess the white pass pawn, it is, okay, if the rooks do come off. So white's queen's pawn here on the d-file, um, mm. that's quite easy to blockade for the black knight. The black knight already doing quite a good job blockading mm. it. Um, it will never get that far up the board, whereas the black pawns, it's going to be quite hard to stop them marching forward, especially if the queens come off as well. Um, white's king will take an age to march over, and even if it does uh, come over the white king, mm. it will get distracted and maybe then black can switch and um, start going over to the white king side pawns with his knight later on. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we imagine this position with the knights and the queens off the board, if it's just a pure king and pawn end game, black is immediately just mm -hmm. winning. This outside yeah. pass pawn will, uh, for black, the outside majority will be enough of a distraction. And yeah, it's much uh, easier to control this, uh, well, single pass pawn than the, the two connected. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, and even if the rooks and queens come off as well, even if it's just knights on the board, I think that is very dangerous mm -hmm. for white. Um, Absolutely. Night end games yeah. are very similar to pawn end games in a way, in that uh, a lot of the same kind of strategic ideas remain. So, mm -hmm. yeah, knight okay. d five, risky decision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, then there was the the, the game between Richard Rapport and uh, Sergei <coughs> Kayakin that we were going to, where white has this pass pawn on uh, c six. 
um, which you weren't entirely sure about if that was a weak, well, a strength or uh, a weakness. Well, I mean, it could become a weakness, but um, if you can maintain it, it should be a big trump. Or, yeah. Or um, is it not that big? I mean, it's nice to have it. I think <laughs> <laughs> it will for tie down. Yeah, for now, it will tie down this Black Knight. Um, yeah. The Black Knight now blo acting as a blockader, uh, so that pawn will keep that uh, knight stuck on c7. But if the rooks do eventually come off, if Black can activate the king, bring it towards the center, then it's another scenario where maybe Black's mm. pawn structure is more mobile. Um, it's more fluid. Those again, mm. Black having this queenside majority, the A and B pawns might start to march forward, and if that white c6 pawn, I mean, if the pieces get tied down defending it, for example, then. Mm. Maybe report will wish it wasn't there, but while the rooks remain, it feels like white should be um, the one pushing here. But um, keep on the rooks. Keep the rooks on, I think, and keep advice. Yeah, keep this knight on d4 for white. Just make yeah. sure the black rooks don't get into the game. <clears throat> you can probe on both sides of the board with white. Maybe hint at a4, a5 later. Maybe just retreat the white bishop to g2. Maybe push g4, h4, start. Mm -hmm. um, that would be the way to expand. Yeah, yeah, you need two fronts in general in this position. And the c6 mm. pawn is nice, tying down the opponent's mm. uh, pieces, but you need something else in order to break through. Mm -hmm. So, I would think, Judith? Yeah, I, I also mm. think uh, a4 and a5 is a must as quick mm -hmm. as possible. Yeah. Because uh, things can also turn bad for white. But f4 was, mm. I think, essential that uh, he stops e5 mm. yeah, or kind of, of moves like that. And for the moment, f6, e5 is not possible because the e6 pawn is under attack. So, And this a4, a5 is just to create another weakness? Uh, yeah, but at the same time, white mm. uh, can find himself after bishop c4, a5, b5, where maybe it's not uh, mm -hmm. much of a... Mm -hmm. achievement because let's say white bishop comes here it gets exchanged just looking at the position something like this and again black uh, can try to move his rook to d5 and already come with his king and in one hand the c6 pawn is is a strong passed pawn but for a long time it will not even dream about mm -hmm. pushing it to the seventh because mm -hmm. of this knight on c7 so actually it's a it can be sometime a double-edged situation as well mm -hmm. so i think white has to be extremely precise in this position yeah yeah you, you're not yet very optimistic for um, richard report if, it feels like he maybe needs to adopt a similar approach to yesterday just patience mm. just slowly kind of keep everything protected kill the opponent's active plans yeah. just, if you can um, maybe push forward with your pawns maybe improve your own pieces in the meantime but I think this Long. is the most important, what you said, to keep him uh, not allowing to activate his pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I if the black rook gets to d5 already yeah. now, actually. Yeah. That's why he's hesitating from a4, as well as the move you showed bishop c4. Yeah, I mean, d5. rook on d5 would be standing excellent also, even if he just comes to c5. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah, maybe because of this, maybe even bishop g2 can be considered. Yeah, for sure. I think this, this is what he has been good at so far. I mean, to be objective and... Mm -hmm. uh, not forcing things. Actually, I think white should be going to a4 and after mm. bishop c4 not to play a5 but probably to exchange the white square bishop. Okay. And not to aim for too much and mm. keep it uh, as an option to play knight b5. Mm. Yeah. Um, but being mm. extremely careful. Yeah. And extremely patient. Extremely patient and mm. I think I think I would say that draw is a good result. Not that white is worse, mm. but um, mm -hmm. I don't think he has so, so much resource in yeah. this position, yeah, especially nice. not against Sergei, yeah. who is <laughs> defense, Minister of Defense <laughs> by every means. Yeah, it would be nice to take the risk out somehow, maybe with a trade of bishops. And, um, yeah, but like it's so watching. difficult to break up Black's position. No? Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. like... You need 4 or 5 10 just to <laughs> stabilize and perfect your own mm. pieces, and you need to hope that Black can't play f 65 or can't bring the king. But what, what do you think takes more energy now? The trying to have control for white or defending this as black? What is, what is more nerve wracking? I think there's more onus on white to, mm. to create something, to control things. With black, it's very simple. You've blockaded your opponent's mm. strongest uh, kind of trump card, and then now it's just <coughs> slowly improve the black king, slowly improve the black rooks, if you can. But uh, it's definitely clear what black wants to do for white. Mm. It's, Definitely not the case. Yeah, White has to make serious decisions. 
you have to ask from yourself, do you want to exchange the white bishop? Mm -hmm. You have to keep it. Do you want to go a4 and a5? Where would you place your rook? Whether it stands well mm -hmm. on a1 to support your uh, pawn play on, a, on the a file, or should it be on c1? So I think there are a lot of questions for white, and exactly also to understand that which are the key squares which has to be covered by white, like mm -hmm. the d5 square, for which would be extremely good if white could be uh, controlled that square, even playing e4 possibly. But of course, white's d4 knight is not allowing that. Mm -hmm. So it is much more difficult to play it with white, I also yeah. think so. Mm -hmm. And once you lose that pawn, are you immediately in the Lose which pawn? The, 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 the past pawn. <laughs> no, that's not an option <laughs> to give up that pawn. No, no, no not give up, but suppose you lose it. Well, then, then, it's, then, then, then fun is far, far away from yeah, white. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and this is also, I think, the type of position where computers, they might over-evaluate white's position. They might say, mm. oh, it's a big advantage for white, but... Mm. I mean, if in order to show an advantage, you need a deep 20, 30 move plan, and that yeah. requires keeping control and not allowing the wrong trades, the wrong. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, it's. Yeah, and very actually, to the problem for white that that black is really controlling all the squares. Yeah, and his so you just cannot <laughs> cannot pass the fifth mm. rank. Look at this. Yeah. I mean, practically everything is controlled, right? Literally so there is no entry to, <laughs> to, to anywhere. I think this is my main problem, that the c6 pawn is excellent, it's beautiful, but it would be so nice for the knight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you need another knight or a dark squared bishop or something here just to... Mm. Or, or if you have a c6 pawn, then you're dreaming to have some knight on d7, bishop on d7, yeah. rook on d7, right? So it, d7 square is a great outpost, but you just can't occupy it. Mm. So it's it's very challenging for white how to... I mean, it's also possible maybe to go bishop g2 and just go g4, h4, h5, yeah. somehow to gain space. I think this is definitely one of the plans. Maybe the reason he's hesitating from bishop g2 immediately as well, stopping rook d5, uh, is that now then black can play f6 and um, maybe at least hint at e5 at the right moment. Okay, even if black doesn't play e5 immediately, at least king f7, and just, again, yeah. same strategy, solid, Absolutely. Slowly, uh, slowly improving. So still many questions to be many, answered. Many, many questions. Then there Actually, he just played a4, or no? Okay. No, 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 it's only mm, on my board. Yeah. <laughs> the third yeah. game was um, the, the one between Ali Reza, Perugia, and Yanni Pumyachi, where black seemed to be doing so extremely well and mm -hmm. gradually white wriggled free and started pushing everything back and um, looks to be in really fine shape uh, how promising is it for for white yeah so the rooks have come off since we last visited this position mm -hmm. um slightly surprising maybe because black's rooks they were kind of they looked active but they weren't necessarily doing too much then again black does have weaker pawns than white mm -hmm. especially the e5 and a5 pawns White can get a knight to c4 now. That's the dream. <laughs> Just <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Takes <two> quickly <laughs> go to c4 and yeah. get back as a knight. Transform well, to a bishop and back again. Yeah. At least yeah. on its way. Yeah. 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 Knight e3, knight c4, I think is the plan from Ferruzia. I well, think he's probably knight, the okay, question he's knight is. D2. Yeah. So, yeah. But the problem for black is this knight on g6 is tied down forever. And the knight on f6 not doing too much. Here well, probably blacks. it has to go back to d7 for yeah. defense, right? And it needs to hurry up and trying to do that, I think, as well. Another question but is... But what about b5? Yeah, I was going to say, another <coughs> question is b5, trying to get the majority rolling, but also controlling c4. Is white's idea to play knight... Okay, queen c5 as well. Knight b3, potentially. So you want to go immediately knight b3? Maybe. I like your queen c5, actually, as well. Yeah, just to aim for the c5 square, reminding black that the a5 pawn now is hard to defend. Yeah, it can it can get some dangers for black for uh, for white mm -hmm. for black. But what about can black go for some counter chances to play knight h5 and knight f4? Or it's knight. out of question. <laughs> it's definitely not out of the question, right? Just I guess do I have to flick in king because h2 actually to knight c4 would be a blunder, right? Because mm. just simply takes, takes, and takes, and queen h3. There's knight e1 at the end. Maybe there's nothing more than draw for black. But at this point, I think Nepo would be very happy with. 
That's yeah. what I want. <laughs> let's, let's go to F1 <laughs> instead of H2. <laughs> yeah. Is there a difference in the, uh, let's say, the king safety of, 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 of both kings? Uh, I mean, this, yeah. this kind of sunlit and attack that you can have on the white king, is there any, anything similar for the black king? Or is that one fairly safe? I guess it's safe for now, just because there's no pieces in the vicinity to actually um, attack. I guess yeah, a king's only as weak as um, the attacking pieces around it. So maybe here white plays king h2. The white king is definitely a target, but yeah. But maybe if you find the right setup for white, you can rebuff the immediate threats, and then black's knights. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just. Uh just one move threat. One move threat. Yeah, and there we should mention as well, maybe if knight f4, then after king h2. Um, yeah, then you simply then go we'll takes and uh, take knight g1. Yeah. And everything's holding together for now. The black queen can't get to the g file in time. Extra, extra knight. Yes. Stays. OK, so knight h5 would be too straightforward. And after king h2, there would be no strat mm -hmm. left. Feels like the kind of thing you definitely want to get on the board though somehow knight h5 is just doing it at the right moment yeah but it seems like it's uh, easier now to play it with white yeah as yeah. Uh, like 10 15 moves ago we said yeah. it was easier to play it with black it's that practical chances the, at least that's uh, what we thought clear plan yeah maybe actually in that case i was surprised by all the rook exchanges but maybe for Ruzia, he's found a nice way to just mm. kill all the risk and still he's got these long-term ideas of going after the e5 pawn and is the a5 pawn is that also a liability or yeah the a5 pawn mm -hmm. definitely a weakness as well i was saying right back in the opening it's nice to have that pawn there because with, yeah. the, <laughs> with this transition <laughs> of the pawn structure in the center um, it's nice to have this kind of clamp on the queen side and stop mm -hmm. white advancing but suddenly it's <laughs> become a weakness mm -hmm. in its own right so you, you're preferring white here judith um i think so I think uh, there is not too much of a tactic for black mm -hmm. and positionally your, I agree with your idea that the a5 and the e5 pawn can, uh, both of them can get in trouble easily mm -hmm. and somehow white's knight can, can give more troubles. Yeah. And stylistically do you think Napomniachi, I mean this isn't the type of position he likes to find himself in. I don't think so. Yeah. This is exactly, I mean, there is no initiative. There's not, the biggest problem, I think, there is not much of a counterplay. Yeah. So it's white is playing uh, the cat and mouse game, kind of. Yeah. That, okay, I have knight c4, I have queen c3. I can yeah. go with the knight to e3, let's say, and to f5. So I can, I can think my own ideas, right? Yeah, and that one. is also extremely annoying that after knight h5, with one simple move playing king h2, mm -hmm. everything is just stops. Yeah, suddenly the two black knights, they look silly if there's no checkmate, <laughs> essentially. And I don't even see a better place for them. Because it's, uh, as you said, that uh, you pointed out that the g6 knight is tied down to the e5 pawn. Uh, so it's, it, it's not easy for the knight to, let's say, there would be an idea to regroup it to d4, but you cannot do it because the e5 pawn would uh, suffer too much yeah. on the way. And it takes a long time for as well for the f6 knight to reroute. So that's so. why I was asking whether b5 is a reasonable uh, idea. Mm -hmm. But you said knight b3. It's just the greedy approach. <laughs> yeah, but I think it, it uh, might be a very good approach at this point already. Mm -hmm. Immediately attacking the a5, mm -hmm. and the queen stands incredibly well on yeah, c2, stopping any protecting the e4, putting pressure on c6, just in case the a4 is also protected by yeah, the, the black queen. queen. Can't enter ever. Yeah, all these squares are just controlled. Yeah. So maybe Napomni actually he has to look for something like this, so just allow White to do what he wants, and then just find the right moment to play knight h5 and go for some attack but it doesn't feel like that's maybe he has scary. to go queen c7 what do you think just okay. a prophylactical move so after knight c4 b5 would be okay but even if black achieves this yeah i'm not sure maybe you yeah, just go knight e3 right e3 maybe okay okay then i go queen b6 or yeah queen b6 let's say maybe then or uh, is there something concrete with a takes b5 CB, Queen C8 check, and Queen F5 if you play King H7. 
now knight h4, knight takes e5. Uh, queen b7 or queen c6? Ah, uh, uh, queen c6, queen g6, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I thought about queen, yeah, b7 queen b7 to look for some counter chances. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, that, that position after b5 looked, I mean, the best that we've come up with so, so maybe, far. Maybe knight g4 simply. Yeah. No, this can be Tactics so dangerous can, for black. Mm -hmm. Wow, Suddenly, it's, it yes. can be very dangerous for black. It's that question you mentioned, Dick, and uh, with the mm -hmm. black king, it can suddenly, it does have a bit less pawn shelter, so if white's mm -hmm. pieces do suddenly find themselves entering, then that could definitely become a factor. And I think Firuza mm -hmm. generally, he's desperate that he wants to win today. He wants to show that he's yeah. beating the challenger for the World Championship yeah. title. He wants to mm -hmm. show that all these things what happened yesterday <laughs> is just a complete yeah. misunderstanding. He can be the great guy like Napo. And of course, as he stands uh, on the fifth place right now, he definitely thinks there is a misprint. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But again, he's using much more time than his opponent, just like yesterday. Yeah. And it, he's the young one. I yeah. Mean, is yeah. that remarkable? That I think maybe it, uh, he dropped a little bit from the self-confidence because of the last mm. few games, possibly, or especially yesterday's yeah. game, which was, as we talked in the beginning, how painful it was for him. Mm. But, uh, and we have knight h5, look okay. at that. <laughs> yeah, so... Definitely, definitely trying to get excited about some threats against the White King. A huge threat in the position Maybe right Maybe the now. idea Knight will F4. be to go after King H2 somehow to play Queen F7 or something. So the Knight is tied mm -hmm. to his other Knight mm. on F3. Okay. That's so the, the, the threat is to check twice on F4 and then take on H3. But in the current as position, you said, yeah. King H2 is sufficient defense against this. I mean... Mm. It looks that way. Um, mm. It rebuffs the immediate threat. Mm. So now, yeah, knight f4 we just take once and knight g1, that is the... Uh, I mean, if the black queen, if you could put her on g6 or g5 right now, it's <laughs> checkmate, but... Yeah, somehow we have our yeah. old <laughs> rules, yeah? Yeah, somehow. <laughs> Unfortunately for Nepal, actually, the queen takes just too long. And by that time, white's queen and other knight will come to the defense. And you mentioned queen f7 here, Judith, but what if white just plays... Queen b3 or queen, queen c4? Queen c3, queen c4, queen c5. I mean, lots of... So many tempting moves. Because the black knights, they're very one-dimensional right now. Mm. And white's knights are holding everything together. Um, yeah, so he's played king h2. Okay. Well, it was expected, let's put it that mm. way, right? Yeah. It's the yeah. only move, practically. Probably. I mean, Unless you can go not. knight g1, yeah. but you don't <laughs> want to go knight g1, only when you have a piece up already. <laughs> mm. Yes. Yeah. I was just thinking about this, this uh, use of time of him, that he's, he's mm. using so much time. In, in fact, he's a very, very fast player. I mean, he's yeah. an extraordinary blitz player. Yeah. And I'm thinking of Grishuk, who's an extraordinary blitz player. I mean, so there's in fact no real correlation between being fast in blitz and being fast in classical or... Um, um. Yeah. I actually noticed that I started spending a lot more time in my games the more blitz I played, uh, uh -huh. online especially. Uh, so if you, uh, when I was starting out when I was young, I used to be quite quick and then around the age of maybe 13, 14, I slowed down enormously because I was playing a lot online, I was losing a lot of games and actually, I think subconsciously, that would knock my confidence and I would start realizing there's so much to see in the position and yeah, it's just, I think it's the ghosts of those uh, those blitz games sometimes that come back to haunt you and cause you to slow down. So yeah, I've noticed there's definitely a massive, um, a massive crossover between mm. time travel addicts and the kind of blitz experts or, well, players who indulge in blitz yeah. um, a lot. Is that one of the difficult things about modern chess, that you play so many different time controls? Mm -hmm. I mean, they, well, someone like Magnus, I mean, he really tries to excel from bullet till classical. That's, and there's a big difference there. And does Magnus play bullets? Yes. Oh all my. day, all <laughs> night. <laughs> I think I once saw him play a six or seven hour marathon, um, non-stop, no breaks. Bullets? Bullet games oh. online. Uh, often against Ferruzia, uh, so <laughs> um, I think... So you can uh, count how many games that are? Yeah, I, I remember using this, uh, this Aim Chess app recently just to analyze how many hours they'd spent online playing Blitz and Bullet, and for Ferruzia it was 
what was it, 700 hours in last year alone. Really? Um, I think they played maybe a thousand times against each other online, uh, Blitz and Bullock combined, so uh, Carlson and Farouz, yes, so definitely here. Yeah. What's the <laughs> score? Um, Magnus is ahead. I think it's <laughs> roughly two to one. Um, mm. So, but still, I mean, it's a lot of chess and yeah. for Magnus, it doesn't seem to affect him too much in the classical stage. He, he's mm. quite good with the clock handling, quite practical, but with others like Farouzia. He knows um, it that it's for different purposes, right? Yeah, yeah you don't I think, think so. it affects yeah. your... Well, Though a lot of people think. I know that yeah. the Kramnik is just outraged on bullet chess. <laughs> yeah. I think he's, he's given up trying to stop his uh, these young. I mean, uh, now, now we have these challengers chess too. Yeah, yeah. And in the first meeting, he said, <laughs> "Please, everybody, until you are under my supervision, <laughs> half a year, I'm the <laughs> leading coach of you. No, no please, bullet. nobody should be playing bullet chess." That's the thing which ruins your chess. I bet they waited till he <laughs> <laughs> left the room and then bang, <laughs> back to the bullet. But, but it's apparently something that, well, is so entertaining. Uh, mm. I was doing an interview with Duda and he said, well, mm. the thing I like most in my free time is just play bullet or... Really? Uh, and he said, of course, it has nothing to do with chess, but, yeah. Yeah. but still. It's like probably giving away your stress and just yeah. switch off your mind for many of the players. I remember I played a lot of Blitz, yeah. but it's five minutes okay. without bonus, yeah. of course. When I was a kid, nobody knew what bonus timer <laughs> yeah. is. So and I played many, many, many Blitz with my sisters and we mm. had some friends coming over and coaches and so on. But even that dropped dramatically by the mm -hmm. time I was playing on better tournaments out of when I stopped playing in open tournaments. And yeah. I was not playing so much Blitz and Bullet very, very few games, I think, in my life. And with the rise of the internet, did you also play Blitz online? No. Uh, never? No. Okay. No, actually, hmm. I, I had a bad experience long, long time ago on uh, one new website when it came out. And then I said, well, people are just commenting, <laughs> giving in the chat. <laughs> and then I said, OK, it's not fun to play. So I said, OK, I'm not going to. Hmm. And I, I, I stopped somewhere there, so I'm not uh, playing online. I didn't play ever too much, only maybe several games when it was, I had to for some reason, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it's definitely not uh, something I consider fun for mm -hmm. myself. But, well, David, you must mm -hmm. see it an awful lot, this, this, this bullet. What, what yes. do you think is it that they, what, what is it? What, I mean, I don't know if you play it yourself a lot. Uh, yes, uh, I'm okay, uh, in remission. I'm, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going cold turkey right now, just oh, right. <laughs> trying to so get over is, the addiction. What is the, what is the kick? Um, I think sometimes, depending on your mood, it can be an adrenaline rush, um, mm. but it also, like Judith says, it's, it's a way to relax. Mm. Sometimes after I've had a long day, I, I don't know why, I, maybe it's just habit by now, but no. I like to turn on the computer, just play five, ten bullet games. And, mm. um, okay. But, but why course, bullet and why not three minutes? You know? It saves time. We've got a short <laughs> attention span these days. There's too much to do in the day. You know, it's only 24 hours. You've got to get as, many, as much action as possible within those 24 hours. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I mean, obviously it's a yeah. double-edged sword and uh, there's a thin line as between, you know, playing a blitz, for example, mm. a, profitable, a profitable amount where you can actually analyze the games and learn from the openings, for example, and yeah. kind of get your eye in with the tactics. But also, uh, if you play too much, it ruins the energy, ruins the mood, ruins everything. So, But do um, you occasionally use opening ideas or? Um, yeah, actually, <laughs> Nowadays, a lot of preparation occurs uh, with online games. For example, the last mm. year and a half, um, I've barely played over the board. And when opponents prepare for me, for example, with online Olympiad and things like that, they look mm. at my online accounts and they, mm. they make a tree of my games. Um, it's very simple to do now. So I always play a variety of openings to throw them off the scent. Mm -hmm. I make sure I don't play my favorite openings all the time, but um, I make sure I give them extra to think about. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the games you play online nowadays end up in the database. It pollutes the mm. database, but <laughs> um, also, that gives more to study, and that's a double-edged thing, right? So that's a nice way of saying police the database. <laughs> I like it. Never heard uh, that. I should. <laughs> With blitz <Modern> games. Strategies. <laughs> yeah, but I genuinely, I sometimes play tournaments kind of mm. just to give my opponents a uh, false trail in future, yeah. so they w waste time preparing for open Sicilians when I'll never play that as white over the board. You see how clever, <laughs> tricky guys are. Yeah. Yeah. It, is it is incredible. But I know a lot of the top guys. They do the same. Magnus yeah. plays. I mean, all sorts of openings on the board, but mm. even more online, just to give yeah. his opponents, um, yeah, a 
extra sense work. of extra work to do. Exactly. Maybe Nepomniachtchi's team now for the World mm. Championship, they'll have to spend a few extra days preparing the Scandinavian mm. or the, um, the Norwegian rat, all these different <laughs> openings. And, and uh, of course, they'll never arise yeah. in the World Championship, but he's forced his opponents yeah. to do that work. And there's always something crazier. Uh, I think two years ago at the Alpha party in Wagense, then suddenly, well, people start playing Blitz. And then I saw two, two youngsters and I thought, what are they doing? But they were playing 20 second games, <laughs> <laughs> but on the board, which <laughs> I mean, totally yes. crazy. And, uh, and well, one, one within, well, okay. The impressive thing is keeping the pieces from flying, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 we've yeah. seen Armageddon in the World Cup, for example, over the board yeah. and pieces are all over the place. So are you in, gen in general, well, let, let's say that's one of the things that, uh, that Magnus has said, that the, in, in, in classical chess there's players who in fact are, were doing as well as he was mm -hmm. uh, and that he wanted to make the difference by showing that he's better in the, in the quicker uh, mm -hmm. time controls and that, that says something about your, your mm -hmm. chess strength or your, your talent. Are you in favor of that to, to, to mix in these or the other? other yeah. time controls. I think it makes sense as a mm. tiebreaker eventually if there's no decision for example in these world championship matches um, mm. that Magnus had against Kariakin and Caruana. I mean there was no way to separate them mm. they were both equally impressive the players and then it makes sense to uh, play the rapid games and I guess that's why he's been training so hard on them mm. and I guess as well it's a badge of honor right you show you have better instincts maybe than your yeah. opponent or you can calculate slightly quicker than they can but how about you Judith? Back in your day, did you uh, have many rapid tiebreakers? Did you uh, uh, focus especially on the quicker formats? Or? Not so mm. much. It was interesting with the time controls in my career because as a kid, I had many trainings as a blitz game, but also mm. I had quite a lot of training games with my coaches and my sisters uh, working on my opening repertoire, playing it out in a, a training game. And uh, later on, uh, of course, it was interesting when we started to get, I remember back in 88, there was the first Rapid World Championship in Masatla. Mm. <laughs> then mm. after that, I think for some time they didn't mm. have it or they had in Canada once. But it was not like now. And for a long time, all the chess players, I remember the feeling that, oh, okay, it's rapid. Like, okay, it's yeah. rapid. <laughs> not to talk about the blitz, right? And then somehow 10 mm. years ago, or I don't know exactly when they started to really take it seriously, having all the top players in these World Championship Blitz and Rapid Tournament. Mm. And uh, for some time I found it strange that how is it possible that someone is really great in classical and maybe it's not so good in Rapid. Mm. And it was, it was very nice to see when it was an end once, I think, was he, three, uh, was he World Champion in all three? No. I think, but he was in rapid and, and being a world champion, I think. I think so, then yeah. Magnus mm. was in all three time controls, mm. blitz, rapid and classical. Mm. Because I think that really shows that your understanding is better, your sportive, your mm. physical preparation is better, your intuition is better. Somehow, there really you have a, a, you're skilled in so many mm. different ways. And I think he was also extremely happy, even though for him also, obviously you don't take a title of a classical uh, game control, the same as a blitz. Mm. But actually for the outsider mm. people, I think it's not a difference. No. So this is also something yeah. interesting that if somebody hears that you're a rapid world champion, wow. Mm -hmm. They don't make uh, the people who don't play chess, right? And in some ways, it is something special. I mean, it's like, let's face it, in swimming, it's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. we talk about seconds, or not even seconds, fraction of a second, right? Yeah, you have the 100 meters freestyle, yeah. that was the, the, and then these days, it's the 50 meters that they also swim. And yeah, yeah and, and, and people appreciate it, and they think mm. it's fantastic, and they pray ye uh, prepare years for that, right? Yeah. So, definitely, it's very clear that people, even mm. professional chess players, they take rapid, and well blitz a little bit but <laughs> rapid already i think people take it much more seriously especially mm. during the covid yeah, that in the last sure. year there were so many tournaments uh, played out and of course with a lot of mistakes but i think with a lot of fantastic games played as well yeah but i think also blitz is being taken fairly seri seriously right? by now yeah, yeah yeah but let's say 10 years ago people were yeah. not taking it so seriously it's I'll, like I'll, I'll extra have a question fun. For, for for david see if, if you can so okay. judith just mentioned the first uh, rapid world championship in Mat matsatlan, matsatlan. I which think was, it was won by Karpov, right? 
Right. Yes. yes. Yeah. 88. There, there was another player who uh, said, uh, we're not going to do this. Uh, he was firmly opposed against rapid chess. Okay. And in an interview in, in New in Chess, he said, I will take up arms to defend classical chess. <laughs> oh, who said that? Who said that? Kasparov. No? Very good. <laughs> no, I know that he was defending so much uh, yeah. classical. It, it, was, uh, it was amazing at the time. That, uh, I mean, there, there was, it was just, we are not going to have this. You know? And then we're talking rapid. Yeah. And now so Kasparov only plays Blitz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. After you retire, that's a, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That's a quite good thing. <laughs> Fair enough. Wow, so okay. things change. Things change. <laughs> well, okay, but the world is changing, becoming so much faster in everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, well, maybe people will not like me what I say, but uh, I'm curious what will be from the sport of chess in ten years, mm -hmm. because I have my my thoughts, my mm. worries to say that maybe the sport itself will go into direction yeah. to have less and less classical mm -hmm. games. Whether it's good or bad, whether we're sorry mm. for it or not. But if you think about it, um, like other sports, most yeah. of the other sports, it's well, difficult it's to have 10 where, days. Where the money goes. Yeah. But usually money will be going. It's much cheaper for an organizer to have a three-day mm. event, a five-day event, an online event, mm. a blitz event, right? For the audience, everybody's expecting things to be faster, mm. more exciting, more blood, more yeah. drama. <laughs> And of course, when you shorten the time control, yeah. you see much more of that, right? Mm. So it's not that I'm, mm. I'm uh, dreaming of that, that we don't have classical chess. I'm just saying that from looking at it from a sportive point yeah. of view, yeah. I can imagine that it can go in that direction. Mm. Uh, yeah. I, I don't have know one what more quiz question for you, Dave. Hit me with so, it. So there, wa there was a reaction to that, uh, what, what, what Gary Kasparov said. And there mm. was another uh, grandmaster. And he said, uh, you know, I don't mind. They may, uh, if I have to play on the moon, <laughs> five minute game, and they hang me from the ceiling, okay. I will do it as long <laughs> as they pay. <laughs> so who was that? Oh, gosh. <laughs> and he, and he, 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 was a, he was a big name, yeah. A big name? Yeah. Wow. When was it? It's important. It, it, th around that the same was time. in reaction to this. So when was it? That was 88. Yeah, yeah okay. something like that, around that time. He was colorful enough to say this. Uh, Lubo. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, you yeah. played a match against him. Karpov. No. no. Another world champion. Spassky said that. That was Boris Spassky. Wow. Okay. Okay. But it was hilarious. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. And Spassky, I remember meeting him, I think I was nine years old, just so inspirational. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think it would be the worst thing in the world if classical, blitz and rapid had kind of a level standing that we played all of them. Hmm. Um, Everyone has a different skill set, right? It's nice to kind of open things up to, uh, to people who maybe have less time, who prefer to specialize in a certain yeah. time format. And but don't yeah, you feel it's that we have sport. this shared acceptance at the moment? Right now, I think, mm. yeah, uh, definitely. It's mm. grown a lot over the last two years alone, but as, as Judah mentions, over the last decade, it's maybe led by players like Magnus who kind of put the emphasis on the sporting uh, yeah. aspect. Yeah, it's definitely. Um, we've definitely wis witnessed an evolution yeah. and uh, yeah I mean while we do see Richard Rapport on camera deep in thought not too much has changed in his position just the rooks all finding that defile and he, both players also getting low on the clock and actually lots of fighting games today uh, yeah. no Armageddon's yet no results yet and still far from results in every game um, Ferruja is he Ferruzia looks like he's still doing pretty well. We liked his position, but yeah. he's probing away. So let's go back to Ferruzia's game. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Just to, to look around what's going on in the three games again. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of small changes in this one. Black's given up any thoughts of going for the White King. <laughs> well, yeah, he went back. Mm -hmm. Then everybody went back to its place, to G2. Yeah. <laughs> on G2, simply King is standing better. Yeah, protects everything. Yeah, right? somehow it just simply stands better because it protects over there everything. But to say that not much happened, David, yeah. I think after C5 <laughs> we can reconsider that why is this move so dangerous for Black? It's and it's a desperation. Yeah. I think when you play C5, you're desperate. Was it maybe almost, oh, maybe not Zugzwang, but Black could barely move anything else, right? And the yes. reason 
but what do you think about yeah. these beautiful squares now? And also the C4 squares and outpost for the White Knight. I mean, I wouldn't personally have dreamt of C5 <laughs> ever, but... I mean, you have to you understand the position very well, England. that this is your only chance yeah. to go for, I mean, what? to make such a move, to make this... Uh, What's the idea, just to create the C6 square for the Black Queen? Or? Well, I think, first of all, he so wants to just probably B6 later on and have the opportunity to have counterattack against the E4 pawn. Okay. Wow, so... <laughs> Nepo breaking all the rules in terms of what we should aim for positionally with our pawn structure, but... And Queen d3 was played now. Okay. And Knight e7. Okay, so maybe also... Ah, no, knight his, C6, uh, his dream is after all to, to, to go to d4. Okay. Uh, but this dream wouldn't have been possible to realize if White's Queen had stayed on c3, tying down that Black Knight on g6. Yeah, at the same time, he wanted at to defend time, his yeah. e4 in order to go with his knight. So let's see. In order to take... Knight c4, knight c6. Mm -hmm. so. But what do you achieve when you get the knight? Don't you also get a lot of weaknesses? Yeah. Maybe he just wants to threat. Mm. And actually, it's not, not even threatening at the moment because the e5 mm. pawn would be taken after knight d4. So it's just like... Uh, ready to jump mm -hmm. yeah and we mentioned as well his just his personality his style he doesn't want to mm -hmm. sit passively and defend at least he has one active well semi-active idea now mm -hmm. of planting the knight on d4 now it's very interesting situation if after knight c4 knight c6 because nobody is threatening anything <laughs> but if let's say white moves away with any of the knight then already knight d4 is going to be something to to count on if uh, if white is not doing anything but plays h4 or something, black is not ready to do anything. But yeah. it, my question is that what is he really going to do? So how can white improve his position? Without allowing any... Without yeah, moving his knights from f3 and c4. But also mm. the queen is tied to, tied to the e4 pawn. Yes. But maybe white should be sacrificing this pawn? Knight how c4 you... is on the board, so mm -hmm. after knight c6... Somehow, to sacrifice I don't know, pawn? I can give him in many ways, <laughs> I think, if okay. I want. <laughs> really forcing me to take it now. Okay, so let's say Nepomni actually takes on e4. Oh, okay, let's say could knight, knight e4, but yeah, knight takes and e4. I want to go queen back, so I opened okay. up. And if I retreat? And you retreat and then somehow enter queen f5 or something, but probably it's too much, right? You go just e4. I doubt you'll ever be worse with white, but... Yeah, because this f6 knight is somehow... Yeah extremely uh, good defender yeah. right what about queen e3 okay and b6 b6 yeah i mean white can make a lot of kind of useful moves b3 h4 but as you mentioned what after that right what happens after that eventually you have to give black knight d4 most likely Hmm. Okay, so what do you think visiting other games? Because I think strategically there are very interesting things happening. Isn't yeah. Queen D6 terrible, terrible for black? Or? Sorry? Queen D6? Where? For white in the current position? No. Yeah. Ah, he's placed it. Ah, okay, so actually, yeah, this is the most direct way of playing by Ferruzia, maybe influenced by the clock situation. Uh, doesn't want to maneuver well, around. Well, probably black has to capture it, right? Yeah. It's but okay, strong. takes, takes, okay. B6. Mm -hmm. Okay, what happens? Maybe. Can knight f7 takes, takes, takes? Ah, okay. So and knight d7. Very like direct. Well, this is what we have to check first, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. It seems well like a pawn up. <laughs> Could well just be a pawn, yeah. And white's king has a clear route in. Well, to be, to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if black would drown, kind of, mm -hmm. in this position. Mm. When you play c5, it is something uh, tricky. Yeah, so. Ferruzia finding a concrete way of kind of transforming his advantage into something positional, into maybe material. Um, yeah, I mean, you're right, just knight f7, it's an immediate. It's, it's immediate getting pawn so ring, right? dangerous for Napo. And he definitely can't keep the queens on, it feels like. Well, everything is hanging, yeah, right? The c5, yeah. the e5, uh, yeah. I don't know. Okay, let's say queen c8. Let, let's try yeah. to save <laughs> the queens on the board let's say hmm, even if white plays knight fd 
knight fd2 or something. I mean, the white uh, queen's you, you queen mean now. Your, uh, I mean, okay, maybe I can take c5. But after knight d2, maybe, maybe you're already in the queen. Uh, queen c5. Yeah, queen d7, queen c5. Oof, it looks very, very, very difficult for black. I was going to suggest this earlier, but I completely missed the knight f7 check was an idea. I thought take take b6, maybe that's I thought okay, knight c8 is the, the move. Uh, then knight d7, right? But, yeah, just but about holding together exactly. black. If black gets one more tempo exactly. with the knight on d7, maybe he can dream of surviving this. But yeah, that's why the top players are so good. They spot the moment, they seize the opportunities. OK, yeah. so let's see uh, Magnus' game. Then, because things are happening not in a good way to Tari, ah, and okay. uh, we may witness another great technique. What he's doing. So this knight d5, we, none of us liked mm -hmm. because to exchange the rooks, it is a positional yeah. mistake, I would say. Even yes. king f8, knight e3. Actually, it's interesting that the knight is standing in the middle of the board, and it's supposed to be <laughs> by the chess principles that your mm. knight is in the center. It stands fantastic. But actually, it's not standing well there. Yeah, it's a bit no, loose. It's it cannot, <laughs> it just doesn't do anything. If it would be on e5 or on c5, I would rather have them there, even yeah. on c6 much more. So white went knight e3, I guess against knight f5 and possible knight c4 moves, but g6. Even, even dynamically, he's lost two tempi in order to exchange rooks, yes. which he didn't mm -hmm. even want to achieve yes. in the first place. So. Exactly. Yeah, okay, g6, nice and sensible. Queen f3, activating the queen, logical way, king g7. So black improved his king, play, king uh, placement, right? Mm -hmm. Queen d5, I would rather go to c6. Yeah, even if you just leave the queen on c6, right? For the next yeah, the c6 square, I just love in this kind of position. <laughs> because mm. after d5, it can, uh, it can press a little bit. And also maybe knight g4, knight e5. Yeah. I'm not sure. So he went queen d5, yeah. queen f6, yeah. a3. Yeah, a3, okay, you hold up the black pawns, but it's easier for the black knight to go for that pawn later on. But maybe it's a problem for white because black is already threatening with queen, queen e6. Six, yeah. So, and now, yeah, maybe though after that, queen c6 was still possible. Queen c6 here? Uh, yeah. oh, well, maybe even here, actually. Yeah. But queen c6, right. maybe black can be a bit tricky and play knight, a5. knight c4 yeah. or knight something, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, but also a5, of course, is... Yeah, but after that you go queen c5. Ah, uh, yeah, true. Queen d6? No, queen <laughs> d6 is not, because maybe knight none. c4 and the king is <laughs> far away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, like you say, a5, and at least d4 is hanging now. Actually, I like queen, also queen, queen on c5. Yeah, yeah. This feels like the trick, right? Just to keep the queens on, just to try and slow down. Or but also here, well, queen c5, queen c5, knight e4. Mm -hmm. Knight e4 can be up there. Yeah. So he played a3, I'm, I'm worried about this move. He play, played queen e6. Yeah. So black is very little by little mm. improving his position. And your feeling is that white can never exchange these queens. I mean, that would be very, very... Well... I mean, right now it looks extremely dangerous. He makes his, his life for, very dangerous. Yeah, for example, if we do take the queens off, and if white plays, for example, king f1, um, yeah, the, the black king is coming. Black can even think about knight f5 at the right moment, mm. knight c4 at the right moment later. Well, maybe um, now. Maybe even now, knight f5. Pushing back the, the knight. Yeah. So knight exchange definitely off the cards for white because mm. the black envy pawns Now black can regroup also to d5 yeah. or just to king. I mean, it's definitely white who, is, who has to worry. Yeah. So, but now actually after queen e6, it's a very serious decision to make by our mm. Tari. Yeah. To exchange the queens or to move so if you somewhere dodges, c5. Yeah, say queen c5. Knight e4 can be unpleasant maybe. Mm -hmm. Queen c2. The remarkable thing is that they're almost equal in time again. Yeah. So. At one point, Terry was 45 minutes up, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Magnus trying to get that magic. But magic. actually, Queen and Knight and games, they can be extremely tricky. Yeah. I've, <laughs> I've, I've experienced too. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm as also as saying it, from experience. Yeah. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> Not very nice Wh memories. Which one do you remember immediately? <laughs> if I remember well, I, I lost a very painful game in Ningbo, China, for the at the World uh, Team cha uh, World Team Championship. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, that was very painful in the Petrov. I think I think it was a Queen Knight against Queen Knight. And it's just like, you know, it's like English position and they just drowned and it was, I think, last round when we were playing for medals. So I really have bad memory oh, of that. Yeah. But because it, you have to sense it's really one move and things are going on a downhill and if you don't realize it, how bad it is, like the airplane, you know, it's like... <laughs> and you have to understand when to pull it up to say, okay, drop, drop, drop. <laughs> I, want to circ I want to simplify and it's drop. <laughs> But you, uh, and you have to feel it, and you don't feel it all the time that no. it's it's really much going on down here. I mean, queen endings are tricky in general, but with queen and knights, you always have to worry about oh, what happens if the queen exchange happens? What happens if the knight exchange happens? Who has the weaker king? Whose pawns are faster? Yeah, so many. He questions did. He did avoid the exchange of queens, which I okay. think it's right. Yeah. I and did. went back to c two. That definitely because feels like the safest. Can he can go ready to push a little bit d5 and eventually to occupy the c6 square. Yeah, you Things can be under control. After d5 also the diagonal can be sensitive for black. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've been wanting to push that pawn for, for an age. I right? want and to push that <laughs> pawn for a long time, yes. Yeah, I think Tari finally has stumbled across <laughs> the fact that he will have to at some point push that pawn anyway if he wants to uh, create any counter chances. So. Yes, it's true that you think that uh, you can push that pawn any time, but yeah. there are some scenarios when you cannot after yeah. some time. Especially if the queens come off, you never push that pawn. Probably, yeah, then, so. then it's uh, better it's not late. to push it. Yeah. Meanwhile, I, I just saw on the camera as well, the players that were looking off at the screen, uh, both of them at the same time looking at the big screen, maybe checking out some of the other games, but um, still no results there. Looks like Tari, difficult defense ahead, but for now, still uh, nothing we, too we serious to worry about. We have a pawn up in the rapport game. Okay. We haven't visited that for some time. Is there a way he can keep that? Oh. Yeah, so it looks like rapport. Uh, uh, sorry. Well, the Karyakin did give up a pawn in order to get those rooks off the board. So yeah, actually, it's in, yeah, finally e4 was mm -hmm. played, right? Yeah, we so left it just around here and now rapport making his move. Bishop g2, threatening with e5, winning some material. So Black had to go e5 and gave up the pawn yeah, again, and in order to defend. Yeah, that's a very Karyakin decision, right? He, he'd rather but is he right? Uh, I mean, now what about giving check and e5? Okay. It seems like I like to push pawns. <laughs> <laughs> but now the white knight is a bit stuck. But I have an extra pawn. True. <laughs> and I think in, open, I in end games it somehow counts. Yeah. Though bishop, how to win with bishop white? Bishop c4, bishop e6, maybe. Are you going to put the knight on b8 just to preserve it? I'm also wondering what happens if you leave the knight on d7, allow bishop e7, uh, bishop e6, knight take, uh, bishop takes d7, sorry. Because the knight doesn't have any escape squares. Okay, but what other option white has? I think there is not much of an option for white. Unless, what do you think about this? To play bishop h3, king d7, bishop d7. Mm -hmm. And after king d6. Uh, but now what? The king will go back to d6. Let's say goes knight f7, king e7. Knight h8. <laughs> yeah, knight h8, we can go there. But black king can go D6, here or maybe king f7 even better because threat tends to mm -hmm. go g5 and king g7. So this is not, not really an option, yeah. right? risky approach for white to say the least so okay yeah this interesting saving idea for black okay yeah Karyak and he loves to just give a pawn give the exchange but he knows uh, I mean even here despite the fact he's a pawn down it's gonna be very difficult for white to push even if he doesn't win this pawn back immediately those white pawns are a bit stuck and okay rapport has played h4 Interesting. So his idea is to play if king e7, I guess, knight g6. Knight g6, g6 yeah, or and e5. Yeah. yeah. And king f7, then h5, I guess. Is well, idea. yesterday his h4 move was strong too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it seems whenever a top player pushes h4 nowadays, it always <laughs> seems to work out. So if king, uh, let's say, moves f6, yeah, h5. h5. 
And what? Ah, c6 is not possible to take. Ah, uh, e5 track coming. And? King g5 though, yeah. Hmm. Maybe I could have tried knight f4 on the last move. And knight d5, wow. Yeah. Though I'm not so sure it's winning. I, me neither. Right? <laughs> it's probably not, but knight d5. Knight d5 might be worth a try at least. You want to take it and. Yeah, what is this? In d6. Yeah. It's hard to imagine yeah. why it will win. That's the ultimate blockade, almost. Or not. But maybe not. Maybe king c3. But let's say. Yeah. So say no, but it should be winning. But how are you going to break through? King f5, king g6. Eventually. Okay. But, but come black, I'm maybe sure. put a bishop on c8 and try and. When that happens, when you go to e4, I'll go back to c8. But maybe at some point c7 is possible and king ah, e5. Okay. That's how I can break in. Yeah. I mean, I think Rapport would take this right now if. You okay, knight g6 is on the board. Okay, so really interesting this h4 move. Trying to anchor the knight. Actually, the Nepo is drowning. Okay. Completely. He okay. gave up a pawn. If it, do we think we're going to see a result there? Maybe we should check in on that. Well, that uh, I don't know. But uh, after queen d6, black played queen d7. Mm -hmm. And after knight takes e5, knight e5, queen e5. I thought even knight e5 was but after knight e5, uh, queen a4, right? Okay, so what happens in the current position after queen takes a4? Queen c5 you can take, and knight e4 is not possible ah, to yeah. queen f8 and queen f5 check. Winning the queen, the knight. Yeah. That e pawn's running as well. Which means that. Yeah, drowning, as you say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not waving, but he's, drowning. He's trying to tread water, but right now it's. Uh, yeah, it's, it's somehow not very funny from black side, it yeah. seems. Which will definitely spoil Nepomniachi's mood. Yeah. Mm. And that c5 move you mentioned earlier, I mean, that. No, it, c5 it, was it, painful for yeah. me. I mean, it could have worked Strategically, out to play c5, mm, it yeah. means... If everything's perfect. For I black. had these kind of positions, you know. Yeah. I'm, I'm having, they press me. It's getting worse and worse, and then you make a move. And then later on, you look at it strategically. If I would have nothing, no problem. If I mm. just make this move, it's so bad that then <laughs> I will be punished for this. And actually, he was punished for that, right? Yeah. It's just a clip on now. And, and right now we have it on the board, uh, position of queen c5. Also, it's another queen and knight ending. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, bad memories for both of us. It might be a bad memory for Nepomniachtchi as well. <laughs> I mean, this yeah. is not just any queen and knight ending. Today, it's a pawn to, and <laughs> today's game, I think he would like to reset. Mm -hmm. But ever since that opening, uh, I mean, which went quite well for black, ever since he got kicked back, Firuzi's played perfectly on this. Firuzi mm -hmm. outplayed him. Yeah, completely. I mean, really practically he outplayed him. He maneuvered, outmaneuvered him with his rooks to e3, d2, queen on d1, yeah. preparing everything for d4, then opening up the line on the d5, yeah. then maneuvering, regrouping his knights. So actually, it's a, it's a beautiful play by Firuzi. Yeah. Deserved game for sure. I especially liked how he broke with d4 and then made this d takes e5 decision very yeah. quickly without. It seems like people really get angry on some loss. Like this what happened with Sergei, right? Yeah. He lost against Nepo. He was so angry yeah. after that. <laughs> I saw the interview mm. <laughs> when he was expressing that he was like, really. Mm. And also in, in the studio, he was telling us, right? That how frustrated he was and mm. upset. And then he said, okay, I want to win. Yeah. And I think something similar must have happened yesterday with Firuza. He was so yeah. frustrated that I cannot lose such a game. I to come back immediately <laughs> and punch back yeah, whoever is on the other side. Anyone, yeah. Yeah. Everyone here. Yeah. Yeah. So Everyone's getting angry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, at some point. <laughs> that's uh, Norway chess, angry birds. <laughs> that's, that's why chess is good. You channel it on the chessboard. Save the anger for the board, yes. not for anything else. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Queen C2. Okay, so trying for some last desperate tricks maybe. So if E5. Let's see. Well, there is an option also to play queen c8, for example, uh, yeah, and after king f h7, queen f5, and then knight d6. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, this must be very strong as well, to play knight d6, give up the pawn on b2, and push e5. Sorry, mm -hmm. I like to push these pawns. I, I don't blame <laughs> you. 
I so, mean, look, it, it must be... Yeah. Actually, there is no move with the knight, is it? Is maybe there? on the last turn, maybe it like, started with a4, and it still takes quite a bit of time to push e4. I mean, maybe you push e5 anyway, but... Um, By the way, okay, so what is the position? He played yeah, e5 he played immediately. E5. I don't see any downside to this either. Um, I mean, knight e4, you can... Then, then check you, and yeah. queen f5. Exactly. And, and knight d6, and it's over. Yeah, now I can use my cliché pin and win. <laughs> But yeah, right now, I mean, if the knight can't go to e4, queen e4 check doesn't seem to help or change anything. Well, again, this unpleasant move, king h2, appears on the board. Yeah. And, and knight has to be moving to where h5. Knight, where I was going to say knight d5, but then knight, knight d6 for white, and it's sort of collapsing. Well, queen f3 must be played, but e6. then probably just e6. Yeah. Yeah. Struggling to come up with tricks here for Nepom Niachi. Well, but there, there is not really tricks, right? No. What about knight d7? Simply queen d5. Mm -hmm. Would queen c8 be winning as well? Just and push just the pawn, right? Yeah. Take and push the Take pawn. Take and push the pawn. Feels like white's king should be safe enough. Check. Yeah. I mean, you just put the queen on f7 and then. Nobody can stop this. Yeah. Okay, so he's decided knight g8. Knight g8. The last resort. No. Which was probably the only move? Mm -hmm. Queen True. d5 or queen d4? Both look promising. <laughs> queen d5, I guess the only downside is that knight e7 might just derp you, well, kick you away from the center at least. But yeah, that's right. You can always give I a check with queen d8. Yeah, here it's just a matter of technique, I guess. Yep, centralize that queen and the rest should fall into place. Yeah, and after that, knight d6. Yeah, you're even threatening knight a5 if you're feeling... <laughs> yeah, but yeah. that will be probably pushed, but yeah. it's... Uh... I mean, queen d4 threatens e6, knight a5, knight d6, everything. Yeah, so it looks like Feruza. Well, actually, for uh, this round, it's extremely tense for Rapport because Nepo is the biggest rival of him. Mm -hmm. So if Nepo is losing, he's mm. uh, not gaining any point because he's losing in the classical game. And uh, he plays with Sergei. So if he plays Sergei, he's number three on the... Ah, no, he's, uh, Magnus is number three, sorry. But Sergei is uh, with eight and a half. Mm -hmm. Still important. Uh, so Rapport has so to win. Well, but this game, I, I don't know if he can win. Let's go back to mm. that game. Yeah. He might be keeping an eye uh, on Carlson's game. If Carlson can't grind anything out there, then a draw for Rapport is not the worst result. That's true. No, it's in similar. any case, it's not the worst result, yeah. but uh, something strange things happen here. Knight but g6. You, uh, don't you feel that he should have some reserve because he's still playing Magnus with black? Mm -hmm. And a couple of other tough ones. And it looks like Magnus yeah. has found the way how he should catch up and overtake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Magnus will have that one circled on his <laughs> calendar, <laughs> that game against Rapport. <laughs> okay, so Black's played King C5. You mentioned something strange, Judith. Was it this last couple of moves? By yes, Black? yes, yeah. that it's interesting that uh, Black had to be making these moves yeah. and he wants definitely to keep an eye on, the, on this pawn. Okay, so doesn't look easy to keep in track keep it intact what Other about 97 yeah I think he's just played it okay. the only move to keep that pawn alive it's black's idea to come in with king d4 at some but point. after king d4 even knight f5 yeah, or not even but knight f5, knight f5 but I thought uh, the knight's not trapped on g7 is it so that looks fine uh, yeah knight, knight f5 has to be the move and takes and takes on g7 yeah luckily you have h5 as an escape square so yeah, but this looks yeah. winning. Yeah, because outside pass pawn as well on the king side. Yeah, this this looks winning, so I think black cannot uh, do this. This was kind of a surprise to me, mm. but maybe anyway, white set up after knight on g6, e5. Yeah, yeah. Is uh, keeping the pawn. And also these knights f4, knight d5 ideas were mentioned. King d4 so. is on the board, but I don't know how uh, Sergei will uh, hold the game. Okay, maybe, I mean, he's quite low on the clock as well now, under seven minutes, so. Maybe he's just trying to get the moves down on the board, trying to get through things concretely, but 
knight f5, as you mentioned. No, that, that must be the move. That position at the end there, or after knight takes g7, can... Well, exchange the e5 for the g7 is a good yeah. exchange. Mm -hmm. For white, yeah. Yes. So black needs to hurry up and create some kind of counterplay. Maybe you move the black bishop, start pushing some pawns. There is another way, actually, for white to play, also to go mm. knight c8 instead of knight f5. Ah, so okay. probably this might be something that white is thinking about, to go knight but c8. Is the knight a bit stuck there after bishop a6? a6. But... Uh, yeah, a4, so knight a4, b5 ideas later. a4, king b4. Yeah. Well, okay, king d6. No, probably white has to go king b4 first. King d6, king b4. Mm -hmm. And then the next plan is to go a4. And the question is after that, what? Black's a bit stuck as well, if you want to keep that knight boxed in. <laughs> yeah. But I think uh, knight f5 is the strongest. Actually, you've convinced me with knight c8 somehow now. <laughs> they both <laughs> look very <laughs> tempting. So, Rapport might well spend, a, I mean, another three, four minutes trying to work things out here. Actually, he has the time, right? Exactly. And it's a great sign for him that he spends it also. Mm -hmm. In a yeah. moment like this, when uh, he's been great he, about this tournament, he can make his decision. He can spend five minutes, even if he wants, without any bad feeling about it, because he has more than double the time as uh, Karyakin on the clock. Yeah. In one way or another, he's having an incredible streak. I mean, he's. If, I think even if he draws, then he will be at something like fifteen rating point gain. Yeah. Where is the in is alive rating? Is he number eight? He's nine. He's com currently number nine. He's number nine. One and a half points behind Grishuk in number eight. So okay, so then probably... Uh, a win in this game, though, he might jump up to number seven, even. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, Do you remember him ever having a streak like this? or? I mean uh, rating point gain, 15. No, at this level. At this level, no. 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 Uh, he's been number 10 for a while before, but yeah, I mean... Yeah, he's Just in between 10 and 20, no? 10 and for 20, quite some yeah, time. a long time. Mm. Okay, he does play knight c8. Yep. He went knight c8, but I don't understand exactly why. Why Unless is you this said better? <laughs> I should watch what I'm saying. Sometimes it's just a coin toss, right? You have two tempting moves and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. hard to tell. Mm. Yeah, so now you mentioned king c3. Where, where does he see his victory? King b4. I did so twonky, you want to say? No. Black bishop has to move away eventually. Ah, knight, knight c8. c8. Yeah. Oh, I think that's why okay. the black bishop was stuck. So, in the square. oh, so what about knight e6? Okay, even now knight b5 check feels like it. Oh, unless there's some knight d4 hopping over the white king side pawns. No, but now a4. You no. have to go with the bishop. Can I not play knight d4? Then a5 was my plan. So with the tempi, uh, I would okay. go to b6. But how about a5, king c7? <coughs> a5, king c7. Trying to get to that white knight. <laughs> you really want to trap that. <laughs> Nasty Actually, idea. I played a blitz game a few days ago here at Norway Chess, and uh, the only game I was losing, I blundered a piece horribly uh, very early in the game, and then I trapped my opponent's knight on a7. So. Oh, <laughs> so memories. you know what you're talking about. <laughs> No, but so okay. this is what we have. a lot of help from the opponent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah knight knight a7. Seven. I mean, so Black bishop a6 only bishop move, a6. right? Uh, knight c8. If you allow it, so it's just... What about playing, well, replacing he, the bishop to d7 with white? Bishop a6 to go bishop h3. Okay. King d6. King d6 yeah. Bishop d7. But is the black knight free to roam now? You want to go with knight b5. Knight, oh, knight b5. Even knight b5. Ah, that one as well. Yeah. Looks like you eliminate the pawn that way, so... I don't know. I somehow I had a feeling that knight f5 was better, but maybe... The h6 pawn would be so weak. Yeah. <laughs> and if you create another pass pawn on that side, black forces would be stretched. Yeah, I must admit, I didn't even see nice here, so I would have gone and taken g7 and hoped for the best. Anyway. Sometimes it's better to see less. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about, can we visit uh, uh, Magnus' game? 
This knight is going back and forth, I see. Queen c5, this is where we left. h5, typical mm -hmm. Magnus. Now, just improve the position. I have one move. Yeah. Queen d3. Okay, so maybe hinting at d5. No, 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 no. no. That, that's, that's, that's not. not, not d5 <laughs> is kept for the knight. Yeah. Okay, it so seems. he's just saying to Magnus, you can't make progress, but... But he will make he will progress. Eventually. He will play queen f5 now. Yeah. And if back, then he's going to centralize his queen to e4 or f4. Okay. Do you give a check first on b1? Does it matter? Okay. Give a check and there and then play queen c4. Queen e4. Mm -hmm. Queen b3 looks also kind of... <laughs> though maybe queen b3. Queen b3, queen b4, you mean? Or? Yeah. Okay, that would be... Knight Very e4 is interesting. Queen e2. Mm, yeah, true. I nearly suggested queen a1 blundering after knight c2, but <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, there. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's. Okay, Magnus doesn't even move his queen, he plays knight c4. Oh. So, really trying to nice get this queen. Nice move, by off. the way. Queen d6 is a threat. Maybe he's okay. taking over uh, now. No, this a3 move. This a3 move is, is like when I saw a3, I mean, this is going to be taken. I heard your, I heard your reaction now, yeah. <laughs> On a3, and look what's happening to his pawn later. No, that's the type of move, I guess. It's, if you don't find anything else, you play a3, but... No, but it's a3, it's, it's just a weakness, suddenly. Yeah, well, maybe line. he did it because he didn't want him to play b4 and a5, which is also uh, has a point, yeah. serious point. But still, I mean, it's... But still, you have to know that that ha might fall off. Mm -hmm. So knight c4, if the queens come off, this looks like a pretty good version for black. Well, let's see, knight one. f6, knight d2, knight e8. Ah. What about this? But the a3 pawn still drops, right? So knight c4. Uh, knight a6, knight a3. Mm -hmm. But maybe it's not such a big deal, knight b4. Yeah. B4 is actually a really good square. Sorry? Point. Yeah, it somehow controls quite a bit, but of course mm. Black's plan is very simple. He's going king to go king d6, he's going to knight, to knight c4, yeah. yeah. And just uh, Magnus giving a lesson <laughs> how you should be playing. Of course, f3 probably was an awful move, I don't Ooh. know. Probably because won't want to <laughs> on h4, I mean, g3. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, f forgive me for playing this f3 or 4 move. But that's a demonstration of what Black's aiming yeah, for. Yeah, right? exactly. I mean, look at this. It's typical. Like, okay, <laughs> Black is huge advantage, and Black should be should be almost? winning, yeah. right? Yeah. Very difficult for White. Okay, so Tari. I mean, if he doesn't take the queens off, as you mentioned, Queen D6 next. Just does that just win a pawn? Hmm. Say Queen D3, Queen D6. So for the first time, we might have no Armageddon's. You never know. Wow. Definitely looks like a winner in Faruza's game. Hmm. And Queen C3 is played. Okay, Queen C3. So Which what actually what we looked, it looked like yeah. pretty dangerous for White to exchange the Queens. Yeah. But maybe some hopes to save that. Yeah, game. Queen D6, Knight B4 and after A5 to go Knight C2. C2. Okay. So for now White is on the, mm. well, on the safe side, I don't know. Still very, very difficult this position. Black eventually will create that outside pass pawn, ideally an A pawn, I guess. And then it's back to the wall defending. If the knights come off, do you think white can save that? Well, it depends where the black pawn uh, finds himself. Yeah, if it's already B4 yeah. and it pushes very quickly, then. Uh, black can, can even start coming. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so this position... I'm wondering if, if a4 is possible. For black? Yeah, but probably after that knight, knight b4. b4. Unless you can get the black queen in behind somehow now. But yeah, but somehow it seems like it's pretty stable for white. Yeah. So... Maybe you just start with... I mean, the reason I asked about a queen ex uh, knight exchange was because after a5, knight c2, just queen d5, for example, just... Yes, but I was wondering if after... Whether, yes, yeah. this is what I was wondering, that you're not reaching to b4 with mm -hmm. your pawn, right? Yeah, true. And when your queen moves away, d5 check also, so... 
I was wondering is, about I think a4, this is not queen b3, but... Yeah. Maybe queen b3, true. b4 to create a pass pawn. Yeah, no, true. Black is very quick. Yeah, I mean, maybe by force black might even win this type of position, so... Yeah. Those are the dangers. Actually, Napo's game is uh, over. Still fighting, but... Uh, because I think psychologically he just ah. cannot get over. Yeah, that's a clear night. <laughs> I mean, it's a clear mm. night after all. Maybe we should we should see how Ferruzia won that black knight. I guess he well, pushed his Well, it was after knight g8. It was queen d5, centralized the queen and just started to push his pawns. Ah, this is a nice, <laughs> nice that's trick. A nice finesse. I mean, yeah, it's queen not really a trick. Queen on the long diagonal as well. Stuck and then he went. Okay. E7. Interesting that Black is still fighting, trying to yeah. see. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's just inertia, right? It's just yeah. White will just push the pawn to h5. Yeah, it's quite an unexpected game that it's going on. Mm -hmm. So but maybe we, have we to can praise, just switch. We have to praise for Ruzio there. No, great he played play. absolutely great. Yep, so the knight is coming now. What's going on with uh, Rapport? Because black keeps himself extremely active. Interesting enough, after king d6, knight a7, black uh, did not play bishop a6, but okay. played king d6. Allowed white to go to c8, king c5, knight e7, knight e6. He must have been scared of your queen c3, queen, uh, king b4 idea for white. I mean, that's the only reason you would have allowed white's knight out of Yeah, the but this is the position and black really hopes to save this game. Is it difficult to hold the c6 pawn? Is that what he's arguing right now? Well, knight f5, king... What about uh, king b4? Okay. Um, we have seen a result. Ferruzia does take the win. Great game, great middle game yeah. from the youngster. And the pony actually maybe just trying to figure out where it went wrong because there were no clear mistakes. Obviously, c5 in that game. Well, that moves, was already even before that, that was, was that was already late. Yeah, I think he misplayed before. it uh, much before. But yeah. was that his problem that he got everything he wanted to, and then what's maybe. next? I mean, yeah. how can you? Yeah, just as soon as he started retreating his pieces, hmm. there was no way to fight back. Maybe there's a idea with g5 and trying to attack on the king's side yeah. was more promising maybe. At least it would have yeah, caused mm. more problems and played more into his style maybe, but we'll see whether we can get Ferruzia in for an interview at some point. Well, until then we still have some pretty much excitement in both games with uh, how Magnus can convert his very pleasant position or is he going to be able to convert his very pleasant position. Things are speeding up and actually they are standing exactly where we uh, stopped. And A5, A5 and A4. Wow, okay. So, um, Meanwhile, promising position mm -hmm. for Magnus and we do have a very special guest, Ala Rosa Ferruzia. So we'll be back very shortly. Mm -hmm.
And we are back and we are very happy that Ali Reza Ferruja has joined us, who has just won a very fine game against Jan Pomiachi. Welcome, Ali Reza. Thank that you. was quite a game. I mean, yeah, I think it was very interesting. Okay, Jan normally plays night off, but it's clear he wants to keep it for this <laughs> match. Or, okay, I don't know what is his plan, but okay, anyway, he's playing solid here, so it was clear that maybe some experience was lacking there in the middle game. So. In the opening that he played? In, yeah, in the middle game. Okay, opening mm. is of course equal. In mm. Jinj probably shows 0-0, zero, zero, but <laughs> yeah, the experience is also important here. So what do you think? Uh, it seemed for Black that he has a reasonable, I mean, pretty good position. What yeah, do you think? No, of course. Where is the turning point? It's completely equal here and it's very solid for Black, but yeah, after when I push D4 probably I am better when I push D4, I don't know it was... Then yeah, that's a later stage. Yeah, because it's okay, here but we made some normal moves. Yeah, but my question would be that after G3, sure. things started to... Yeah, yeah, this is why it's... Become very nice for you, right? Yes, because I made all this maneuver for this G3, yeah? Yes. Otherwise, uh, so, yeah. So how should Black play, you think? Uh, I think w how he plays... Because he went back and he started to become very passive, right? Yeah, I don't think he has an active plan here. I don't know, yeah. Queen G6 or something, probably. Yeah, but always Knight H4 isn't there. Okay, not here, but let's say D4 and then... I think You can go D4, yeah. right? I think he played kind of okay until some point. Like Queen G2, D4, take, take. Okay, I mean, it's Rook D2. I didn't like Knight E7, Knight G6 maybe. Maybe C5? Or no, no, I think just to keep the Knight on C6 and wait for my D4, then put the Knight on B4, right? Mm -hmm. Take a night before. Normally, this is the plan. And okay, this is slightly better for well white. Now, not maybe knight g5, rook f6. No, I mean, right? he will not play knight e7, right? Move yeah, 22. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just the loss of two tempis, right? Yeah. So, in this position, he would just wait b6 or. Yeah, b6 or knight f6, even back. Yeah, white just be getting ready against d4. Right. D4 always take knight B4. Okay, still white is maybe a little better, but... Maybe D5? No, that's too much knight E5. Yeah. No, he has to wait B6. And because if I go E5, then knight comes to D5, mm -hmm. and I cannot really break here, maybe. Mm -hmm. So this is how he should play, I think. So his uh, knight was completely misplaced. He went from C6 to yeah, first um, square. Uh, yeah. He was looking for some tricks, but there is never some tricks, because there is no bishops and... Well, okay, then, yeah, d5. Was e5 good? Or he didn't have other choice? I think, I think e5 was decent. Maybe rook e Like knight e7 going back still? But then e5 looks very dangerous. Knight d5? Okay, not... Oh, my, oh I saw knight e7, queen b3, I win a pawn, maybe. Okay, queen c8. Mm. Looks very shaky for black somehow. Yeah, here. so knight on g6 basically yeah, is completely yeah. misplaced. Yeah, okay, he pushed e5, take. Yes, and here I'm just better. It's very comfortable for white. Maybe in this position he had to go queen uh, e7, not yeah, to weaken c himself? Yeah, rook c5. Knight e4 I take, is not. Yeah, yeah this g6 seems, yeah, to it's, be, it's seems to be really misplaced. Yeah, of course, right? because my knight on f3 is always better than both knights on g6 and f6, so. He had to play more active, maybe. So, yeah, here I'm just better, I think, after c6, rook d6. Always some advantage. And you, yeah, me yeah. you mentioned, Alarez, said that maybe Jan's lack of experience in these types of middle games cost him, but do you have a lot of experience yourself in these types of positions? Oh, maybe slightly <laughs> before sure. this? <laughs> no, I, uh, okay, I have not lesson. many games even <laughs> in my life, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, maybe here, even in this line, Nepo has more experience, more games than me because he plays. 20 years more than me, so <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, anyway, nowadays maybe I am working more on these positions, he's working on other positions, I don't know, sure. so yeah. Mm -hmm. King knight h5, king h2, yeah, okay, here he has to wait, yeah, here is just, but okay, c5. very surprised on c5. Yeah, but there Of course, it's extremely difficult right. to make a move, but let's say, I don't know, b6 or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Playing knight d7, waiting somehow. Because knight d7, always knight c4. Knight c4. Yeah. And then I go queen d3, knight c4, I get my position. I think it's almost lost here, even for black. It's 
doesn't now look can't so they go you know b5 knight a5 yeah yeah b6 and then okay uh, any move, right? H4, maybe. H4, yeah. H4. Yeah, it's extremely difficult. Yeah. It was a, a very clear sign when you play C5. Then yeah, of really course. Going yeah. Wrong, right? Yeah, Queen D3. And okay, he missed Queen D6. Queen D6. He D6. told me after the game, but anyway, it's already gone. I think. Yeah. Well, you played a very convincing uh, game. Yeah, very good game against the challenger. So it was a thank you. Great game. How do you feel yourself? In the tournament, uh, ups and downs. Always ups and downs, yeah. <laughs> no, but okay, it's, I'm learning. The yesterday game was just a big lesson for me, so um, yeah, okay, I'm happy at this. I came back today. Well, you're very close to the leaders now. I mean, uh, no, I'm not, no. <laughs> you're making progress. Yeah. No, it's still, still everything possible. With sure, sure, three rounds to go, yeah. You're, su you're supporting Karyak in holding this game, so you maybe you have a chance <laughs> to catch up with Rapport. So. Yeah, sure. But okay, R R Rapport is playing so good in this tournament, so it's very difficult to catch him, I think. So, uh, yeah. Well, he seems to be extremely powerful winning the G6. What does him, does him make so good in this tournament, Ali Reza? Sorry? If you look at uh, Richard Rapport's games, w what is it that makes him so good in this tournament? Um, I think he's a little mystery maybe because <laughs> he doesn't have many games against the strong players. He's always playing these leagues and he's not playing really the strong tournaments. So, so okay, after this tournament it's more clear his style and everything. I think. Mm -hmm. But of course he's a very creative player. Yeah. And what will you do now to prepare for tomorrow? Just relax tonight or already start? Yeah, just thing? relax tonight. For one week I'm doing the same routine. And Prepare and we will <laughs> see what happens. Yeah. Sound like you're enjoying that routine right now. <laughs> <laughs> How long do you prepare? How much time do you allow yourself? Um, as much as I could. Yeah. Yeah. There's no limit where you think, okay, if I go past that, then it becomes too much and it will take too much energy. Ah, uh, I don't know. Normally, I just don't think about. It. I just work until the game starts, <laughs> basically. Okay. Yeah, but okay, Robert is just crashing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it seems so. And uh, Sergey has like 16 seconds on yeah, his clock. Yeah, over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, much. Alarisa. Thank, thank you. Good luck for tomorrow. Thank you. Welcome back to Norway Chess, where there are still two games going and a bit optimistically I uh, said some minutes ago that maybe for the first time we might not have any Armageddon games today and I think it's going to be true. I think we're very close to that moment because um, Richard Rapport, who has just been dubbed a mystery guest in this tournament by Ali Reza Firuja, he is on the verge of winning against uh, Sergei Kayakin, which is a fantastic uh, performance. And Magnus Carlsen. Just resigned. No, not Carlsen, sorry. <laughs> Sergei. No, I'm Sergei saying. Kayakin resigned, and the leader uh, improved his lead in the tournament by adding three more points to his total. Uh, Really remarkable, Judith. I mean, you know that Richard Rapport is a fantastic player, but this... I would love to have him playing like this when I was a captain <laughs> in the Olympics. What did you do wrong? <laughs> I don't know, I have to ask to him. <laughs> uh, so, that uh, game has ended and we'll be waiting for Richard to come here uh, and then 
Magnus seems to be totally winning against uh, Aryan Tari. So it looks like it's between Richard Rapport and the world champion. I mean, it's, uh, it's going to be a very tight finish with, um, with the game between uh, Magnus Carlsen and uh, Richard Rapport still, still on the program. That will be a big one. And uh, we just see Magnus trying to put the finishing touches to this position mm. against Tari. Both players extremely low on the clock. Yeah. That's why they're not even writing the moves down. They're just blitzing things out now. But yeah. Magnus is in control. And um, yeah, big day tomorrow, quite potentially. And with. Richard Rapport is uh, here. So we ask him to join. Richard, if you can just join. We, we stay on air. Yeah, yeah. Uh, things are heating up in yeah. every way. <laughs> yeah, I'm very bad with this mic usually. So. Yeah. And what we see until then, they are blitzing their moves. But unfortunately for Tari, well, mm. the queen on A1 is standing. Black has a pawn up. And the A pawn will queen most likely because yeah, nobody they're... can stop that pawn, I believe. Nor they're... Tari, nor... <laughs> There's Anybody no else would not be possible. There's no sensible queen check for white. Wow, Richard. What a game. Oh, uh, yeah. It was uh, okay, completely unexpected, of course, that I uh, converted this. Plus, the whole game was like, you know, uh, very concrete and was mm. always depending only on. Um, but the pressure, I mean, you had the pressure. Yeah, it felt like that, you know, but. Um, course I could be wrong yeah I mean um, it's really a concrete position and he has yeah. this um, threads basically just to go around there. so yeah I thought this bishop h2 was very clever Prevent yeah we were thinking that uh, I, I was also phrasing this move that wow bishop h3 e5 starts and then we found yeah. out that c5 was also a fantastic move yeah with I the idea b6 it's extremely concrete I mean like really yeah like a c6 mm. I mean I could of course just let him to equalize but um, in case I want to play Pravin, right? Yeah, Castles. this was extremely challenging for Red you. D4, Rook D8, I think, is the only move. And here, okay, I have a bit of a bad luck. In case I go... What happens if Rook A, D1? Yeah, with any Rook to D1. He goes Bishop A6 and Knight D3 kind of pre-move, yeah. And wow. Knight D3. Nice resource. Yeah. Wow. We didn't and, see this one. Um, yeah, E, D, Queen takes D4. It might be worse. Wow. And I, I, don't feel, I didn't feel like... Ah, yeah, and I calculated this line like Knight D3, Rook takes D3. Bishop, uh, I mean, yeah, trading queens. Bishop takes d3, knight takes e6. Yeah, yeah this was I uh, was calculating this and may maybe working. And then rook c6, rook d6. I felt like knight c7 is forced, and rook. And I didn't like it at the end because of rook d8. Yeah, like mm -hmm. he just ignores me and e d3, rook c6. Rook c6. And I felt like he has compensation, but like, yeah, maybe I'm just better with knight b5. But like I was like he goes a5, you know, and or he's like yeah. Like the question is whether he can win. Yeah, or yeah. It's like right. he actually uh, he even could be better here, right? Because okay, the rooks and so this on. was your decision to make uh, e3. Yeah, and after e3, you know, um, bishop a6 is kind of forced, I think. Uh, queen before, okay, he cannot take the exchange. I mean, it's funny because I was expecting him to take bishop takes f1 as well to sacrifice the queen. But even after okay. bishop takes f1, I would take back on f1. And then With bishop, yeah, right? Yeah, just bishop takes. Yeah, this is what we're looking at, bishop, bishop and bishop a6, a6 right? Yeah, and I feel like I'm very close to winning here. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I mean, I can never be worse. So maybe even if I miss something, and but yeah. I'm just, you know... Knight d6 doesn't work because of bishop b7, I think. And mm -hmm. uh, rook b8, c7, very, very funny tactic. Knight takes b7, knight c6. Yeah? Yeah, bishop, rook b8, c7, knight b7, knight c6. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think I'm winning, right? But maybe um, I miss. Maybe rook a8 works for him. And after this? Yeah, after I thought that knight d8, knight d8, rook a7, but he has rook c8. I missed that, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I am not, you know. Uh, maybe wins. you're not winning. Rook no, c8. rook c8 has yes, joy. Yeah. I mean, a bit better for me, but it should. Yeah, as you can see, I don't see these lines uh, so well. Okay, so how so was the game? Because this started to... Yeah, because F4 I was good, right? I'm not sure, stop. because I wanted to go rook b4 originally, but like, knight, he goes knight c3. And my plan was a4 to play a5, um, and then he has this knight to check counterplay, mm -hmm. which I wasn't sure about because this would be really bad for him if I did, had a pawn on a3. But of course he waits for a4, mm -hmm. and I wasn't sure if this is a fortress or you know, or I'm just much better. Like it's very hard for me to evaluate. And at the end I decided not to um, to.
to go So you for. went f4, knight yeah. c3, okay, this is knight d5. Yeah, it's, he could have had many setups, but he decided to go for it. Blockade to pass one. Yeah. But what, what, what is your assessment in this position? Well, it's very concrete, you know. I, I wasn't sure I could be even worse. I mean, uh, really, I could be much better. Because I want to develop on the d file, and rook d7, yeah, is winning. So he I felt like this is extremely um, sharp, yeah. Because if he's on time to, you know, play uh, what he did and f6 c5 at some point, I, mean, I might be just worse. When king comes, uh, so it's very forcing. I felt bishop c4 is forced, like knight d5 was just a pin. I just moved my knight, mm -hmm. knight f3 maybe mm -hmm. I thought, and that's unpleasant. And if I five knight d5 is you know much better for me. And um, yeah, I felt like knight b5 I could. Yeah, it was from now on yes. And e4, f6 I think is only move bishop g2, and here maybe I thought he could have gone rook f8. I wasn't sure what am I doing here. So with the, the idea, idea of e5 takes takes rook d5. d5, yes. Okay, of course I don't uh, have to blunder rook d5, yeah. But like, um, and I wasn't sure, but because you see he has no threat whatsoever. Like um, e5 is met with knight f5, yes. So he has like no threats at all. But um, uh, I didn't see uh, what I'm. What is my next move? Uh, maybe just a4. I thought he should go a6 and maybe try to open up the the. The B file like rook c1 takes takes rook e1, but then he can go back. Mm -hmm. I I'm, I'm not sure what's going on here. I, okay, he played the move by the time I was calculating this lines, so I I, I I could be much better. So you now. consider for this moment that e5 was dubious, right? No, it I was think e5 was very good. I mean, it was good, but just uh, but sorry. after that, it's it's just giving up the pawn and yeah, he wants he to go for Yeah, he has to give him draw. the pawn and he has to go for his blockade. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure. H4 about was very good, right? Yeah, I felt it. Uh, I thought it at first, uh, but I'm not sure now. Like maybe I could have played king e3. I, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. But like, uh, uh, and and was the idea after that? I just check again. Same. And after king uh, goes out? Yeah, king uh, king f7, right? Because king f6 is knight f4. Okay. Yeah, yeah, maybe you're right, h4 was good, yeah. I am just too critical of uh, myself. I okay, so h4, knight... Not all of my moves are blunders, yeah, so okay. Knight g6, king yeah, b6. It's also interesting if he goes to f6, but like... Uh, That's what we were expecting, Yeah, actually. but like, uh, I don't you know. You go h5? Yeah, I thought to go h5, actually, and king g5, and just he goes all, all the way, yeah. But like, I have counter play knight e7 now, probably. And I wasn't sure if he goes king g4 or king h5. Because the thing is that he can never trap my bishop. Yeah, I was worried that he would trap my bishop, <laughs> but I have bishop h1. So, like, <laughs> bishop h1 is so Not so yeah. easy to yeah. trap that one. But you have knight d5 and knight d5, or something, right, right? And I'm rolling the pawns. I mean, yeah. I, I don't think I'm risking anything. Yeah, I might just yeah. be completely winning. But, uh, because what he, it was interesting that he went to c5. Yeah, and here I had actually, uh, I mean... You were thinking knight f5. Yeah, here I had his choice, yeah. It was kind of a selfish choice, which one to, to pick up out of these two pawns. Yeah, and so I you went this one? I, maybe I could have gone Why not? What, how would you, what was your plan how to win after I wanted, bishop a6? Okay, I'm not sure if I'm winning at all, but I wanted to go king c3. Yeah, king d6. Yeah, and king b4. And I want to go, I want it to, you know, kind of a uh, mini to swung or something, but maybe it's something, yeah. Yeah, yes, yeah, so something. And I want something I don't know, like. Knight e6. Yeah, and I wanted to go something like. A4, knight c7. Yeah, and I wanted to enter this eventually. I mean, I was not, sh not like I wanted, but I felt like it's a good chance just to give check on b5, a b5, and try to come with the king from there. Ah, you think that this might, uh, I, I, might I, I, be. It might be, okay, it's not really a risk for me, you know. I, I will enter it, and okay, if it's a draw, it's a draw, but it might be a draw now, king e5, seems like. King yeah. e5 looks like a draw now. Because it like looks like you cannot yeah, this progress. Is okay, I don't have to go for knight b5 check anyway, but like... Um, yeah, you can go around here and there, but... I uh, can try to play bishop um, c4 maybe. Yeah, but it so. seemed that the way he played, that he allowed your yeah, knight to come out. Yeah, I think he just missed this, yeah. I mean, I'm not sure if, like I said, if he can maintain this blockade. Like, I have lots of ideas to kick his bishop, with my bishop at any point, basically. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, I was like, okay, we'll see what happens when we, are, we got there, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, he let my knight out, and after that I think it's just, okay, he was already very low on time. And I think here is just really unpleasant. Like so after king c5, knight e7, it should be a win, right? Uh, it's very uh, very much on the edge, but uh, I mean, uh, okay, like I said, with this time control, I feel like it's, you know, favors him. And this king c3 was kind of a, I mean, I'm not sure, I think it's a bad move probably, objectively. I felt like bishop h3 was better, but I... Bishop h3? Yeah, I wasn't sure about this knight. And replace it to d7, Yeah, and right? then he goes knight d5, it's kind of forced, I felt. Like he has to go knight d5, because, ah. okay, I go knight ah, d5. Ah, here knight d5. Yeah, yeah. yeah, this is... Uh, and then I go knight f5, and then what mm -hmm. is this, uh, and I didn't want to enter this, but like, because his knight on f6 and pawn is on h5, and I felt like this is good drawing chances, but I mean, like... Mm -hmm. Could be that I'm just completely winning, but it's also. And what was your problem with Queen King C3? I'm not sure. I was just, you know, didn't feel right here. Yeah. I mean, here I think he should have gone knight D4. 
I was a bit. Uh, I mean, after 94, I have actually a uh, few options, right? Because I can go for this knight f5 check, but I, don't, I didn't want it to red. I wanted to. I was considering to go here. Uh, but knight f5 check, what do you have? Takes and king c7. Yeah, like this. Okay, I'm trapping the knight. He cannot take on h4. Yeah. G4, I'm trapping the knight. So it's not like. Ah, but here he has the knight d4 check. Sorry, I calculated this actually. It's just draw by force. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. I wanted to play something, but I forgot what. One second. After knight d4. Um, no, I mean, like. No, not king here, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> now yeah. an ID for. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll just to recheck myself to um, check and. Uh, yeah, I, I also had this idea with. Um, no, but what happens here and here? Okay, it's the same as it was in the previous. Oh no, it's not. No, I don't know. So like ninety four, I maybe I just missed this. Yeah, I forgot uh, what I wanted here. Okay, like so uh, hmm. let's go quickly through the game. Yeah, and this is I think okay after I provoke the H five G six it's just over I think because. I will take on, uh, I will long term, I will take it. And he blundered the case on second, he blundered the bishop before. Yeah, so yeah. after this it was over, yeah? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. I collected the pawns and that was the Well, this was a very promising win. Now you have a huge lead. Uh, you scored three points again in the classical game. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks. And uh, I think we let you go because you have to relax yeah. and prepare for your next game. Thanks for joining thanks. us. Yeah. And we are right back with another very special guest. And welcome back to Norway Chess, where we have a very special guest world champion, Magnus Carlsen, who has just beaten Ayan Tari and moved into second place in the standings. Magnus, you had a very long think in the opening and we were wondering what the think was about. Did it pay off? Was it, did you get the, the right ideas during that think? <laughs> I wouldn't say so. because. I was. I played the same move that I was going to play after after one minute. So. <laughs> it, it w Actually, I did the same. I suggested rookie eight, and then uh, at the end, forty minutes later, we realised it was it, the best. Yeah, oh, it, it's a bit. It's a bit strange that this is a theoretical position with white to move, because people used to oh. play this line with the pawn on h three. Like, yes, they used to play this d six. Mm -hmm. Um, d6 c3, uh, sorry, d6 h3, and then knight a5 and yes. b5. Um, but yeah, I realized that even a tempo of my position is <laughs> probably not great. Um, what would white usually play with the extra tempo if you didn't have time for yeah, the eight? I, I mean, some queen e2 maybe. Okay, queen e2. Yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah, but the thing is, I mean, I don't have any even semi useful waiting moves there. So. Mm -hmm. what we else? were considering sorry, yeah. we were considering B four. Yeah, I just didn't see what why. Why? Yeah. Um, maybe. I, I just thought it weakened my position more than than his but maybe there are some concrete justifications there. So how, how Yeah was but, it? but this knight G four was a relief to me. because uh, I mean it's the move I expected him to to make because it forces great simplifications, but I thought DC5 was very, very good here. So I take with the bishop, he goes knight g4 still, and knight takes, h takes, um, bishop e3 maybe, or bishop, if you g I could go bishop d6 also, but then I think g5 is strong, stopping queen You H4. think white is better? Yeah, I think white is just comfortably better. So you, you would have taken right side more <laughs> yeah, in this position. With <laughs> without I mean, maybe hesitation, I without it seems. hesitation, yeah. Maybe I have some B four counterplay, but it looked very, very iffy. Uh, and if I trade everything on E three, 
then I probably have to go knight c4 in order not to lose a pawn, and that's just um, a sad position. So all of my time spent was just trying to find a, find a way to... Um, After dc5. Uh, yeah, to avoid these things, and then I, I finally I came up with I'm, I don't have anything better. Uh, let's hope that he goes knight g4 immediately, and then. <laughs> and he did. So after that, what the, what was actually? Yeah, now I think the position is just equal. Um, after after this, uh, yeah, takes takes knight c3. This is all pretty, pretty normal. Rook e2 is a nice move. Preparing queen e1 later. Um, here, I, I mean, I almost considered taking an e3 because I didn't think I was better at all. Mm -hmm. uh, but were you surprised that he was so eager to exchange rooks? Yeah, that was surprising to me. That I mean, that was the main reason that why I was hesitant to play knight d6 was that he could, yeah, he could op occupy the the c file in some way. Also, queen b4 looks decent. Oh, maybe not queen b4 because then I get a5 and. B four, but there I think that he had many good options. But knight d five is maybe d five somehow get something to c six. Yeah, that I thought about it too. Then I go, I go a five b four and try to. I mean, I'm always getting my knight to e four, so yeah. I feel like I, I felt like I was okay here. Uh, no, that's clear. You were no, 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 okay. but like okay in the sense like that it's not. It's not worse. Yeah. Because, I mean, uh, that's the only reason why you wouldn't play knight d6. But knight, after knight d5. Knight d5, then. There is no discussion that you can get worse. It's only you who can get better. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, but here I was. Uh, I thought knight b4 was like concretely. Because knight d3 is really, is really passive. And what's the idea after queen b6? Or? Yeah, queen b6, I think he's getting. I mean, there are several ideas. Queen b, uh, queen f3 is, is one. Queen e5 is also not. Queen e5, just a5. A5 here. Yes. Knight d5. Knight d5. Queen d8. Yeah, but I don't like that. Knight goes Knight back c3. to e3 or ah, something. Okay. I feel like better version of the game. For yeah, me. the the queen is really. The right it's really queen is very yeah, good. Yeah, it's huh? really strong on e5. Knight e3, for instance. Yeah. It's not even. It's not even close. Um, I mean, I, my intention was actually to go queen e7, just to try and spook him. But <laughs> I, I don't think to give the a6. Yeah, I mean, it takes, takes knight f5. I get it back, but um, yeah. yeah, I don't think it's it's close to be honest. No. So what was the turning point later on? Yeah, now here I feel like I'm I'm already happy that I can mm -hmm. play a little bit. What did you a3, think about a3? Mm, didn't love a3. Um, I thought when I saw a3 that that's going to be taken. <laughs> <laughs> but if I don't play a3, he has to reckon with a5, b4 yeah. at some point anyway, and the pawn could also be weak. So at this point, he already has to make some some small choices, and that's that's um, that's a very good thing for me. One thing that he should have done at some point is to put his pawns differently on the on the on the king side, but. Because I, I, I sort of got a lot of time here to, mm -hmm. uh, to improve your position. To improve, yeah. Queen d3, knight. Yeah, here I was. Uh, for some reason, after queen d3, I spent like eight minutes calculating queen c6. Wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> which is not probably the best way to spend your time. <laughs> um, so the thing is, if he doesn't play d5. Then I'm achieving something. I'm gaining a lot of space lot of sp here. Yeah. yeah. So he has to play d5, I think. Um, and then queen c1, uh, knight f1. So here I was thinking of, yeah, knight d6. I couldn't make that work because he goes, uh, he goes queen d4. Check and queen e5 or queen b6. Uh, queen b6 probably. And I thought he could just take on a6 because. Knight d2 is Check. protecting. Queen a3 protects both. Right? Yeah, protecting both of, both of them. Mm -hmm. So, oh, queen a3. Yeah, Another, queen yeah. Okay, that probably works. Oops. Oh, well, that it was. Uh, I told you the a3 pawn yeah. will be taken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see, it happens in the most unexpected situations. 
Wow. <laughs> yeah, I spent all, so, all of this so time calculating. So maybe you spent your time well. You just changed your yeah, mind. Yeah, I just changed my mind. Okay, then I should definitely have gone queen c6. <laughs> wow. Okay, so you, you went knight this. Yeah, you didn't ruin anything in the game, right? Bye. Um, yeah, I guess. Um, yeah, queen f6 was a really... I was really happy with that. That was, that was a tricky, mm -hmm. tricky move. Um, <coughs> this, yeah, but do you think forward. in this position we were looking Yeah, I thought he would take. Yeah, takes. I wasn't, sh I wasn't sure about this at all. Takes. Um, there was also knight b3, as a matter of yeah. fact. Which is not, I think, insane. Takes knight, knight b4. b4. Knight b4, but my king is coming really quickly. King e1, king d6. Oh, sorry, king f1, king d6, king e1. You can reach to c4. I yeah. go to c4. Maybe it's just lost. You think it's lost already? Yeah. Should be? Yeah, king b3. Don't think it's said. Yeah, it should be lost. Yeah, I, don't. I mean, yeah. these positions are usually lost. <coughs> yeah. Knight ending. So you think after knight c4 it's lost already? No, no, it, no, not it was not. Uh, not necessarily. Not necessarily. What about knight b4? What was your plan on that? Nine. <laughs> and the yeah. A3 Make one move at a time. <laughs> <coughs> no, I understand that the, you were already very optimistic. Yeah, you? I was very optimistic here. Uh, mm -hmm. I was also I was under five minutes, so I could stop writing the moves and just focus on <laughs> <laughs> making them. But yeah, ninety three. This was a blunder, right? It, it's a blunder, but I mean, it's it's dead lost. I think. Mm. <coughs> um, also, if it doesn't go ninety three. Um, She's already, I think d5 is, is really <coughs> weakening, so I can probably just go round up uh, the with pawn your with, king also, with, yeah? the, with the king. king yeah. D6. Yeah. I mean, I have such a big positional advantage at this point that I cannot imagine that he can hold. Well, <laughs> congratulations. I want to ask you one thing about yesterday's game. It was such a brilliant end game. Well, How it was it possible to win king e5? How did it come to your mind? Um, when did you point it out that this incredible opportunity uh, no I mean I, I uh, frankly I hadn't seen it before I went to h5 okay. but the h5 was my only chance anyway uh, I was just <coughs> hoping that you know I could but the thing is I have to be honest like I, I didn't see that he couldn't wait so all this talk mm -hmm. of brilliancy is like he was thinking for a very long time I didn't understand why <laughs> and then he played f4 you mean no, when... Before? Even uh, after h5, right? No, ah, even after okay. h5, because okay. I didn't okay. see that the pawn ending was winning. This ah, was, the, this ah, was ah. the point. And he evidently saw it because he was spending so much time. Uh, and so, I mean, in retrospect, I feel like a complete fool. Because um, I was sitting there, he was thinking so long, I didn't understand why. And I didn't understand why he gave me these winning chances. While, as a matter of fact, like he actually went for the only plan to, to make a draw and he just miscalculated later. Yeah. Did you feel that you have any chance to win the game? You just seem to be enjoying it a lot. I wouldn't say I was enjoying it too much, um, but um, I think from, from the opening, uh, if he plays this way, this bishop ending is my only, only yeah. chance. Um, but I didn't feel like there were great chances, because I thought like he could put this king, he could ch change the, um, the c pawns, um, mm -hmm. put the king on c7, and just wait like mm -hmm. on f6, h6. H6, yeah. No? Uh, f6, h6 now? Yeah, f6, h6, yeah. g7. I thought that was a fortress. Uh, but it, I mean, you don't, he, if he plays like this, he cannot <coughs> avoid the king coming to c5. So yeah. it looks very, yeah. very suspicious, but I think it was a fortress. Yeah. Okay. It was amazing for us to so. see. Sorry. It was amazing to us to see. Well, okay, it's draw. It's like going on. King e5. <laughs> yeah, like no, there's king, king, king e5. e5. But then. He, Things have already gone wrong for him. Like he has one, um, he has a few minutes left. Yes. He has one move that makes yeah. a draw, and it's not even obvious yeah. that it no, makes that a draw. No, that was awfully uh, yeah. difficult. Bishop yeah. H3, the draw, and yeah. then Bishop F1 and Bishop C. No, but I, I mean, I, I'd seen it because I you thought seen it, Bishop I H3 thought it was his only chance. Oh. I didn't, I didn't know for sure whether it was a draw, but I thought it was his only chance to. You saw to Bishop H3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. That was because Bishop G. Four doesn't work because I get because I get to temple with the king. Yeah, e three. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, but 
So by process of, of elimination, he has to go bishop h3. Because I don't know what he missed in the game. Maybe he missed bishop d5. He was hoping for some mm. bishop g2, king e6, bishop h3, king d5, king mm -hmm. c4. Uh, but like after bishop d5, it just resigns. So yeah. that was a bit weird. Yeah. But anyway, um, <laughs> tomorrow is what matters. <laughs> so. Yeah. So yeah, Magnus, two classical wins, two nice grinds in a row. How are you feeling mm. about tomorrow? Um, I, I mean, I, I'm never pessimistic about my chances to win with, uh, with White, um, but obviously considering the form he's in, mm -hmm. it's going to, be, going to be hard, but I'm going to, going to, to try, of course. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, just the fact that I, I, have, I have a chance, um, I'm very, very happy about. That was not obvious after the game against Kayak. Uh, sure. But let's say these two, uh, they got two grinds, I mean two games that you win by working very hard. Is that, is that gratifying or are you more troubled by nagging thoughts about things that you're unhappy about? Um, I, no, I wouldn't say it's particularly <laughs> gratifying. It's more, hmm. um, it feels more like, as you say, I'm working, I, I, I'm not like, able to outplay my opponent, so I, I, mm. this is the only way I can win by working very, very hard. So I wouldn't say it's... it's feel, it, I wouldn't say that it feels like a great mm. uh, accomplishment, but it, I mean, it's the thing you sometimes need to do to turn a um, bad tournament around. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you, you are still within striking distance, but so far the, the big star has been Richard Rapport. Uh, what are your thoughts about uh, about his performance so far? Are, are you impressed? Is it something that you are kind of surprised by in any manner? Or yeah, I mean, I didn't expect him to be mm. an unbeaten plus four. That's for sure. Um, mm. But what can you do? Yeah, he's played. Mm. He's played really. Um, he's played really well. And mm. frankly, he was also much better against Karyakin in, in his first game, so it's not like he's taken all his chances either. Yeah. And he was really pragmatic against me in the first first game, um, which I think speaks to to the fact that he came here to to win, <laughs> nothing yeah. nothing else. And yeah, um, I, yeah, I just have to, to play a good game tomorrow. That's, that's all I can But do you think that's it, that he came here to win or, I mean, it he suddenly got into this flow and things are Well, I mean, you, he cannot, he's not good enough to just come here to win and win on demand, obviously, but <laughs> no. um, he's a strong player, so yeah. he, um, he has a chance and yeah, if he can survive tomorrow, he'll win the tournament. We are very much good. looking forward to that fight. Congratulations for your win today and yesterday and good luck for you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. And so a fascinating round uh, comes to an end with three games decisive, no Armageddon games today, and Richard Rapport stays in the lead, even improves it in, in general, even if Magnus Carlsen uh, keeps up with him. Richard Rapport, the star of the tournament so far, who has won an amazing number of rating points and even moved into sixth place in the world rankings. He will be happy about that as well. Um, he is in first place with 15 and a half points, three and a half points ahead of Magnus Carlsen and an amazing six points ahead of number three, Jan Nepomiachi, that says a lot. And the big one is tomorrow. Tomorrow, Magnus Carlsen with the white pieces plays against uh, Richard Rapport. Uh, even if Richard loses, he will still be half a point ahead of Magnus. That is something 
but uh, what are your expectations about that game, uh, Julie and David? Well, uh, mm. obviously it seems to be that that will be the game mm. of the tournament, because mm. right now the rapport got such a lead, which was not expected from himself mm -hmm. and also from uh, everybody else, but he plays so strong and so stable. So uh, in all his games you see this tranquility. At least that's how it looks. Mm -hmm. Of course, he's always telling us that, uh, well, he's not happy with his move, he was not right calculation, mm -hmm. etc. But what we see in the games, you can see that he's in incredible good form and gives incredible, mm -hmm. uh, makes great decisions, goes on the safe side, but better positions, winning positions, he converts. At the same time, he had a winning position against Magnus, he didn't convert. So, so he's in fantastic form, but as we see Magnus Carlsen, he won his last two classical games. Not the game of his life, right? But yesterday it was, there were some very special moments. So I think he's kind of happy and unhappy at the same time that uh, well, he will try his best. But tomorrow definitely that will be the game everybody's going to be watching. And I think it's going to be a lot of nerves. Any bets? Tomorrow, before the <laughs> game, let's postpone that one. Yeah, I'm just amazed at how much Rapport sees. I mean, in these mm. press conferences, he's reeling off these incredible variations, some that we're missing as well, but um, the evaluations, he might be a bit negative about them in general, but um, the evaluations tend to be quite good and mm. quite accurate. And yeah, Carlson, he's got the momentum on his side as well, but he's going to be up against it in order to take down the leader. So it's that is... Yeah, yeah Rapport as well up to world number six right now. So all time it's high, he's going to be riding that wave. And yeah, it's incredible. So that's uh, definitely a game to look forward to. And we will see if Magnus Carlsen suddenly is the inspired mm -hmm. old Magnus Carlsen or if he has to fall back on hard labor chess as he did in the um, past rounds. In any case, I think he's going to give it his all. And, uh, and so will uh, Richard Rapport. So uh, definitely a round to look forward because there's more games there. There's Jan Nepomiachi who's playing against Arjen Tari and Sergei Kayakin against Ali Reza Feruja. Something to look forward to. Um, hope to see you tomorrow and um, thank you and good night. Thank you. Join us tomorrow too. Yeah. Bye. See you tomorrow.